for Kislev. No. Hey guys, welcome to the stream. How's it going today? So we're continuing the Katarin campaign from last week, which uh, it, it didn't go great. It didn't go great. We're not losing the campaign, but it's also not a no defeat campaign because we did suffer a stupid defeat at Essen. And the vampires are still at large. We're about to, I think, finish off the Brass Keep. I don't think he's got any... Or, Finish off Festus and Man. I don't think he's got any more settlements. This will also be the first battle that we utilize um, Katarin's sled, which is really powerful. I've had a lot of practice with it now. And uh, yeah, okay, so reviving Castalton, he doesn't actually revive from Zavastra, he revives from Erengrad. Apparently they changed it. So all the effort that we put into this, uh, no good. No good. We need for this settlement here. Let me see if I can sell it to... So God. If I sell it to him, I reckon I could... I'll have to sell him Alexandrinov as well. Or Joyshank. And then just declare war on him. Because, yeah, if I give this settlement to him, then he's not going to make very good use out of it. What do they got going on here? Yeah, it doesn't matter. Because, yeah, it would, it would be good to not lose Castalton in total. Also, let's have a look to see if... Boris is still alive. It's hard to tell, but let me just check. Sometimes you can find out with this. Mm, yeah, there's no way for me to tell right now. I you know, I was just watching that crazy Wood Elf vs. Dwarf battle. Nuts. <laughs> I don't even know what the battle that is. <laughs> okay. Demolish buildings to revive him. Well, why is demolishing... I mean, I can demolish the buildings just to make money, I guess. But yeah, okay. I'm going to be occupying Zavastra because it's not going to work. And then we need this one to come over over here, and um, it, it sucks that we got to do this to Erengrad, and then bring Castalton back here as opposed to anywhere else, because it's still a while before we confederate him. But if we want to revive him, that's what we got to do. He'll likely want a alliance with him, uh, pretty much straight away. All right, all right. Well, let's get on with this here first. Let me just make sure my equipment with yeah Anushka's finger bone. Yeah, okay, so with the Golden Knight, I think I want her on foot. I think she's actually stronger on foot. Ah, stupid thing. You as well. Hmm. Kislev never falters. Okay. Alright, let's do this. I'm pretty sure it said Valiant Defeat last time we looked at this. Hey Legend, glad to catch you on Twitch. No, he's dead. Yeah, Valiant Defeat. Alright. I'm not overly concerned because I've used Katarin Sled enough to know that the only things that are really a threat to her are the trolls and maybe the Gorby's Chariots. But what we want to be using is Death Frost, which I've only put one point into. I should put more into that, actually. Uh, which we'll use to get rid of the Gorby's Chariots, because I don't think... Oh, this guy's on horseback. Is that a wizard? Good, if, I was, if it was a death wizard, that'd be a problem. Should be fine. Let's go. If I want to play Boris, I will first need to finish Chaos Campaign. Yeah, I think so. I'm not entirely sure, because I unlocked Boris before Immortal Empires came out, so I don't know... I don't think you can unlock him in Immortal Empires. I did say I was going to provide a save file for people to unlock him, but I just keep forgetting to do it. Because what you can do 
Hmm? The most catastrophic battle of your career. I still don't remember it, dude. How is the Patriarch stronger on foot than on the bear? Because it's smaller, yeah. Because um, we're not going up against a... Uh, the army's got a fair bit of anti-large, or fair bit of infantry, so the bear is useful if you need mobility, which we don't, with those two. Less chance of being hit. Exactly. Exactly. Like, don't get me wrong, bears are good mounts. Bears are great. Just not in this situation here, that's all. So just keep them back for now. We want to be utilizing the heroes. Do you remember that Lordless Army when you were playing as a claw? Happened to me now in one of my campaigns, by the way. No, I don't remember, sorry. I fight so many battles, it's hard to remember them all. There's a mission to save her father? Yeah, on the Realms of Chaos campaign, yeah. So the Golden Knight, she's really strong on foot. I don't think she's great on horseback, which is pretty typical. The reason why you go on horseback is for mobility. Because you um, make a bigger target. How do you do global recruitment down to one turn for Ice Guard outside of Tech Tree? Prague. Prague has a um, a building in it that reduces global rec uh, recruit by two turns. You got to get Prague to tier four and then to tier five. To get, oh, actually tier three, you get one. Oh crap, I left the Ice Guard here. It's alright, it's fine. Actually, that could, that should, could work for us, because they put a bunch of units over there. Alright, so, Marauder Horsemen. They're actually not a threat at all to Katarin. But that Lord there is, so we need to Death Frost him. You have to constantly tell the Isolate to keep attacking the gate, or else it just keeps forgetting. We got an okay amount of magic. Oh, that's, that was pretty good for one cast. Pretty good. That weapon, that item sucks. Actually, it might be better to let them open the gate, because Katarin's is not good at doing this. Do you plan on playing Nakara in the future, or you don't enjoy them? I'm having trouble at the start, and I would love to see how you handle it. Um, I don't have any current plans to play Nakari. I've played him in the past. I do like playing Nakari. I just don't have any plans to do it again anytime soon. Yeah, Nakari's campaign is one of those ones where a lot of people can struggle. It's one where you kind of need to have good micro, um, which... I'm okay with micro, so it's not so bad for me. <laughs> okay. Apparently, killing that lord was enough to shift the balance of power in our favor. There's also this guy here, who I think we should focus on killing as well. Just because it's pretty easy to kill them with Death Frost, and it's not easy to kill them in melee. Is the sled better than the worm as a mount against infantry in your experience? Um, okay, if I was... Okay. If the... Oh, let's put things in perspective. 
Against infantry, I would put the Frostworm as like a 7 out of 10, and then the Sled as a 50 out of 10. <laughs> it's insane how good the Sled is. Hey Legion, do you think CA should try and incorporate the Chaos Realm maps into the IE map? I think they were great and it'd be a waste of opportunity to reuse them. Um, I do think so, yeah. Because it wasn't the actual Realms of Chaos themselves that I had a problem with. It was the fucking quests around them that was stupid. Um, but the actual Realms themselves could be interesting. Um, but if they do that, then what's the po then what's the point of the Realms of Chaos at all? I mean, there already is no point to it, but still, I don't know. Um, hang on a second. Uh, Odin the Allfather did a $10 super chat. I'm happy you're back with the live streams. Miss getting home from work and getting to watch your lives. Uh, keep up with the good work, brother, and congratulations on you and the missus. Alright, thanks, dude. Appreciate that. I do want to point out that I am not back permanently. Okay. I know I've been fairly frequent over the past few weeks. Um, but probably when I finish the Empire campaign one way or another, I'm probably going to take a few weeks break. Death Frost is actually so good. Uh, it's not really. I mean, it's if you got a lot of Winds of Magic, it's fine. It's, it's a very expensive spell. Um, it's just that we don't need any of the other spells in this battle. And these guys here are a problem, and this just gets rid of the problem. Everything else we can deal with. That's that's the big thing here. But what the what the biscuit shit? Um, where's my fifty extra forty extra health? Can Norska reduce the global recruitment time by building military and armory stuff? Because I'm doing it, but the turns don't go down at all. Oh, yeah, they definitely can. Yeah. Don't they have technologies that can reduce global recruit time? Remember, it's if a, if a unit has one turn to locally recruit, you need 10 of the military buildings. Um, if it takes two turns to recruit normally, then you need 15. Excuse me, 15 of them. All right, that's all I need to do, though. Cool. Alright, send these two in to go and have some fun, and Katarin to go and have some fun. Alright, you need to be pushing through Katarin. Alright, yeah, this guy here is not a great fighter. I like how she can actually charge right through Marauder Horsemen as well. Weird. She can't get to her max health again. get this one out of here. Golden Knight's fine to keep fighting, but the this one here, I gotta get him out. So yeah, we can already see we're dishing out major damage with Katarin. Okay, get that one out of there. Just gonna get this guy out of here. Okay, Gorby's chariot's definitely something worth death frosting. Because yeah, she's not good anti-large. Get you out of there. Okay, looks like he's getting out of that. Good. Okay, you can't fight trolls. Okay, the Golden Knight is fine to just keep fighting. She is super strong and she's immortal, so that's okay. And as long as he is back here, we can maybe use Fireball to try to hit the trolls a bit. Okay, 
champion of the motherland! Follow the priest! The queen marches! If you want Kateran max HP, you have to buy the full HP DLC. <laughs> no, I think he's just a bit bugged. Don't forget she does have Throt's defeat trait. I'm pretty sure she does. So that might be bugging her out a little bit. But yeah, on foot she'll be able to dish out loads of damage. No problem though. I like how much damage that this does to cavalry as well. You can plow right through them. They're gonna patch this. They're gonna... Look at this. <laughs> They're gonna patch this. Uh, Jester Crew did a ten dollars for once. Oh, I can watch live. Thanks for the content and congrats on the super be legend there. All right, no worries, dude. Appreciate that. Thank all. you for super chat. The golden knights. Okay, if I can get in there, I might be able to down the helm of Discord from over here. Okay, good. Yeah, I'm debuffing them a little bit. For the people. Greetings from Belgium. Thanks, dude. Appreciate that. Uh, can Patriarch Hero White ride War Bear? Yeah, yeah, the Patriarch can. We took him off the War Bear because I figured it was a weakness in this battle. You have to constantly keep telling it to attack or else it just won't. Come on. Alright, she's not going to be able to keep fighting for that much longer, but if she can take out these Chaos Trolls, that would be a really big help for me. Since that's one of the units that Katarin just can't deal with. Not easily, anyway. She seems to be ragdolling a lot here, though. It's not great. Getting stun locked. I'm gonna send the, uh, the this one in to come and help a bit. Actually, I'll send Katarin to go and help. It'll take her a bit longer to get there, but I'm a bit worried about it. Yeah, she's not going to last that much longer if this keeps up. She's not, not quite doing as well as I thought she would against the large creatures. Uh, Johnny Giannellis uh, became a new member. Thanks, dude. Appreciate that. Catherine can shoot the trolls. Oh, yeah, her missile attack is garbage. I, I, it's not even worth worrying about. We can just get rid of these trolls and the Gorbeast chariots. It'll make the rest of the battle pretty easy for us with the sled. Well, if I can get her up on the wall, I should have done that actually. But she's stuck. That's the problem. Yeah, she's probably going to get wounded if this keeps up. Okay, now the Patriarch's having problems. Get him out of there. Okay, 
All right, it's okay if she gets wounded, but it's not okay if he gets wounded because, oh God. Yeah, they are really being aggressive against this here. This is not great for our poor strongholder here. Not a great start to this battle, unfortunately. This guy here, I kind of want him to just route so that the trolls leave him alone. I don't want to bring the... I'm going to have to bring the archers around over this way. Come on, would you just break? I think he's going to die. Yeah, I just can't get him out. These trolls are being... I don't usually see them come out this far. Oh, come on. Okay, come on, come on. Get him out of there. Almost got these ones routed. I need to get rid of these ones here first. Come on. A little bit more. Okay, if she routed, hopefully they'll let her get off the battlefield. Otherwise, we just got to wait a few turns and she'll come back. Come on. Get this guy out of here. How's they going? Yeah, look, they once they break, they back off from it. Please don't hit that tree. And she did hit them. Okay, come on, you need to leave the battlefield. That would be great, not, not go further into it. Alright, so my heroes here didn't do anywhere near as well as I'd hoped, but Katarin's doing just fine. Alright, yeah, get rid of this... Oh god, 15 health. How much further does he have to go? He's got a long distance. Katarin's got to soak up those shots while... Gets it out of there. Okay, she's getting out, but if you could rally right there, that'd be great. Come on, you're almost out of there. Katarin's just got to block those shots just a little bit longer. Okay, looking at that, we're, we're okay. We're okay. Okay, the the uh, uh, the Patriarch is fine. But now we've got to worry about this one. Get her out of there. Saving Private Golden Knight. Come on, go, 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 go. So Katarin's fine, but I was really hoping these two here would clear out a lot more of their large units. Not that big of a deal. But hey, 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 hey. She can't take that much of this. Come on, rally. Okay, now, let's get you out of here. further we got to go. Got a little bit of distance. Alright, at least that troll unit is gone. Boy, oh boy, did we cut that one close. Holy crap, look at this guy. 15 health left. Both of these stay way back. They're done with this battle, that's for sure. I hope we don't end up with attrition after this. I don't think we will. Festus usually doesn't have that. I got the Gustavo's egg, but I think this is a pretty crappy item. Plus, it makes sure that they can't move, so that's that's pretty useless in this situation. This is a terrible item. I need to get rid of it. All right, they're both in the clear. All right, now it's all up to Katarin. Now there's still quite a few large creatures. I was hoping to get rid of them, but there's not that many.
Okay, resume destroying that. They didn't repair it. Come on. One more. Yeah, she's bad at destroying that stuff. So, so far she's got 40,000 damage. It's pretty good. Can you unbow be confederated without the DLC? No. Pretty sure, no. Alright, Katarin should be able to beat these Chaos Chariots, because they're anti-infantry as well, so they're not going to be good against her either. But this is definitely not her forte, that's for sure. Yeah, she's not, not landing any hits. Neither are they, really. Okay, now we're starting to land some good hits on it. We just don't want to fight these chariots in amongst other infantry. So now... Okay, this is actually not going so bad. It's actually going pretty well, though. That's good. Yeah, they can't land a hit on her. I don't want to fight two loads of chariots if I don't have to. Is the Lore of Ice any better now than it was at launch? Um, not really. Not really. It's not terrible. I think it's actually the better of the two Laws of Magic for um, Kislev. The, the the Ice Magic, that is. I oh, know. I've, I've grown to think that Tempest is actually a bit shit. Can't you just capture the main points? That doesn't really work so well in Warhammer 3 anymore because as soon as you capture... You have to capture this point in order to capture that one. By the time you get over there, they've recaptured this point. So you need a lot more characters in order to pull that off. Yeah, you just can't do that like you used to be able to. I mean, I can give it a shot, but we have to get rid of it at least all the fast units or else it's pointless to even attempt it. The whole point of capturing these points here is just to destroy the tower so they don't do out additional damage to us over time. Yeah, super derpy versus chariot units, that's for sure. I feel like I have to cycle charge against them because we go into melee and then just nothing happens. See? They just sit there staring at each other. But they're in my way. If I could just not fight them, that'd be great. But they're quick, so I can't just avoid them. And these ones here. They don't do much to us. We do way more to them. Good, that's a chariot down. Is the frost one better against single entities? Yeah, than the chariot, yeah. It's still pretty derpy though. Highlighter, do you know that the Hunts Martial Lords now buffing regular archers to 179 range plus 6 AP plus bonus versus large, and they're shooting with the sound of a crossbow? They are? Um, I didn't notice that in my uh, Empire campaign. Okay, there we go.
Clicking multiple times makes the unit hit harder. No, no, if you don't click on it. Okay, what, what happens is when you charge into the barricade, she just sits there and she stops attacking And after that. So if I just make one click, she won't destroy it. So it's a bit bugged with that kind of stuff. I don't think it's that big of a deal, but... Yeah, it's just extra clicks. Some people seem to have a version with clicks, like clicking somehow hurts their fingers. Um, that sucks if that's for you, but luckily my fingers don't have that issue. Yeah, luckily the Gore Beast Chariots can't do much against us either. Okay, look, watch what happens. If I just send it into melee here... Let's see how much damage she does. I'm not clicking. Um, could you just summon that damage, please? Chop, chop, literally. Any situations in how to make the unit roster more versatile, like Medieval 2, most units are never optimal to recruit, so if you are a fish, if you want efficient, you just have to spam one or two units types. Um, I think it's just inherently a problem with the game that they've they've introduced at the very beginning. Um, there's not, you'd have to change so much about the game in order to fix that issue. It really does come down to, um, like unit caps and limited recruitment so even with the the factions that do have limited recruitment you still end up spamming the same units over and over again the ones that don't require unit caps and then the ones that are particularly good so the the factions with unit caps like is a bit of a band-aid solution to it but doing it across all factions i just don't think it's going to work at the end of the day if you like variety in your armies you can just not spam one or two unit types. You can just recruit variety if that's what you enjoy. But it, it's not really optimal in most cases, largely due to the problems of limited build slots. That's the big crux of it, limited build slots. Because each of your settlements have so few uh, buildings that you can construct compared to the older Total War games, um, and there are so many different economy buildings a lot of the time, it's just not worth it to build a military building to recruit units that are side grades. It's just not worth it in most cases. But it doesn't seem to be a priority for them to sort of address this issue. And I don't really care that much about it, about it either. Usually the people that do care about it build variety in their armies anyway. It's as they want people that spam one unit type to also build variety. And I don't know. What, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Because obviously from a multiplayer point of view, yeah, you want to put variety in your armies. Because you're not relying on military buildings or upkeep or anything like that. But, and then there's also the asymmetry between unit upgrades. So let's just take um, uh, light war sleds, for example. Light war sleds have like six or seven technologies that boost them. And then you compare that with, say, armored cossars. It's got like two or three. Why would you go armored cossars over sleds if you were going to spam one unit? There's a lot of asymmetry in the game, that's all. And it's not necessarily a bad thing. Also, sometimes the the like, the like upgrades that are in the, the skill tree of a lord, they're just shit for a particular unit. It's like, 
Um, like, cavalry usually get the shit ones. So it's like, um, they get... Uh, plus 9 charge bonus and plus 1% weapon strength. And it's like, ah, that's okay, but it's not great. You know, it's much better to get higher melee attack or speed. And then on the other hand, you've got infantry units that get plus 8 melee defense, plus 8 melee attack, plus 12% weapon strength. And all of that is just way higher value than what some of the other, other things get. Come on, almost gone. Come on, Katarin, you can do it. Take it out. Good. That's a Gore Beast Chariot defeated. She's still in really good shape. You sure you want to put variety in MP armies? Oh, look, I don't know, man. I, I don't play multiplayer. I don't know. When I, when I do see, like, I stumble across somebody playing multiplayer on YouTube, they're not usually using one unit spams. Because they don't have the same limitations that you do on single player. Especially in the beginning of your campaign. That is the most critical point. And especially on Legendary difficulty, where there just isn't any room for fucking around. You know, a lot of people will say, well, that's why I don't play on Legendary difficulty. And that is totally fine. It's totally fine. Don't play on Legendary difficulty if you don't want to do that stuff. Who cares? You definitely can do it on legendary difficulty though, like have variety in your armies, it's just, it is going to slow you down a bit, that's all. Okay, we're almost done with these chariots. I think there's just like a damaged troll unit left, that's the only thing that she really needs to worry about, but you don't want to stay in prolonged combat against melee infantry. Either. Bit of a long winded battle. But the problem here is because I don't have any little groms, if I advance with my infantry, they're just gonna get shredded. And it's actually just gonna end up being a really awful result. And we're, I think we're getting pretty close to army lossing. I think this is the last chariot I need to deal with. Still got a little bit of Winds of Magic. How good has the Ice Sled been? It's really good against infantry, it's awful against large units and barricades. <laughs> but, you know. That's okay, that's forgivable. But yeah, probably one of the best anti-infantry mounts in the game. I think it's just due to its extreme mass. It's very good against cavalry as well. I even tested against Knights of the Bra Bla uh, Brazen Throne, I think it's called. The um, Skull Smashers. And it absolutely destroyed them. Like, they didn't have enough mass to stop her. Oh crap, we're nearly at our regen. Camp. Didn't realize we had taken this much damage throughout the battle. That's okay, we're almost dealt with the bloody Gorby's chariots, and then after that, infantry just can't land a hit on it. I got no more regen left. It's too bad Katarin doesn't have a melee line. That being said, she's got so many skills that maybe I wouldn't have any points to put in them anyway. You gotta get her melee skills up through Lord Defeat Trait. So getting Throg's Defeat Trait would be quite helpful for this. Same thing with Kolek. That'd be another good one for us. I don't think Wolfric the Wanderer really matters that much because we've got plenty of anti-infantry here. No, 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 no. See, th they act as a blocker for us, stop us from moving. This is why going into a large unit is a bad idea with Katarin. Unless it's isolated, which it's not right now.
Doesn't land good hits against the ghoul beasts. Yeah, I got no more regen left. She's really got to charge in them. When she charges in, she does about 200 damage per hit. That's not huge. Yeah, just escort off the battlefield so I don't have to deal with it anymore. That's great. Good. Alright. Now, the only thing that can stop us is a troll. Which, if we just don't fight it, we should be fine. But yeah, these infantry, no problem. Just lawn mower them. Because they just can't land a hit on her. Even the halberds don't seem to be able to, able to do much. It's really important to have the uh, the banner of swiftness on it as well. I think that makes a big difference. Yeah, choose through infantry way easier than large units. Way, way easier. So she's up to 85,000 damage now. Okay, that's shattered. Alright, let's resume the possible capture of the city. Because they got a lot of guys up on the walls. And doing this will at least get them off the wall so we can fight them. How'd you get regen on her? Oh, I've got Saint Anushka's finger bone. So that gives you regen. Golden Knight feels kind of whack, though, not going to lie. It just doesn't perform really well compared to the Chaos Counterparts in terms of being a legendary hero. Yeah, not, not an amazing fighter by any means. Kind of a bit of a mid-legendary hero, for sure. Pretty good at boosting your army if you're using Tsar Guard or Ice Guard. But outside of that, her combat abilities are a bit, a bit on the meh side. Nothing spectacular about it. Definitely better than a Patriarch. But yeah, if she, went, if she goes and fights Harold Hammerstorm, she's going to get smashed. Yeah, I got more of that. So this unit of Chaos Warriors here did absolutely... Hang on. Yeah, has done nothing to Katarin so far. Just can't land a hit on her. We've already had the notification saying victory is in our grasp. So if we just keep this up, we'll army lost them. I'm trying to cap the town square as well. But we have to hold on to this one to do it, which makes it a lot more difficult to do. In fact, since they have um, introduced this rule, which I don't disagree with as a rule, um, I haven't really been out of cheese sieges in the way that I used to. You know, just bring in some characters on horses, run straight over to here and win. Haven't been able to do it since. Make sure these units here shatter. Because they're still worth a little bit of balance of power. Alright, let's get moving. Let's get over here. Because it doesn't seem like anyone's making... Oh, no, no. These ones are still... Okay, the trolls are on their way. Okay, forget about it. Forget about it. Just make your way over here. Katarin might be able to beat those trolls. There's only seven of them left. But she's just really bad at fighting those units. Yeah, I'm not going to be able to get to it in time. But what I can do is just demolish these. Just forget it. We're not going to win this way. Uh, Blut Coet did a 20 euro super chat. Take my money and buy flowers for your wife. Only if she doesn't hate flowers. Oh, no, she doesn't hate flowers? Okay, thanks dude. Appreciate that. Be a bit weird if I said, Hey, I bought you some flowers from Blut Coet. <laughs> a viewer bought you flowers. But thanks for super chat. Did I fix it Warhammer 4? Warhammer 40k, yeah. Alright. They don't seem to want to bring these other units off the wall. And it's going to be very difficult to kill these trolls with 
Katarin. It's, it's definitely possible, which is difficult. Keep hoping they'll bring some of these guys here off the walls. Maybe if I capture enough... Oh, hang on, hang on. I don't think I'm going to be able to get away from this battle without taking out these trolls. She's still in pretty good shape, better shape than them. So maybe we'll manage. Maybe. I guess we'll find out. Here we go. Just kind of cycle charge these trolls a bit. And they seem more concerned with getting to those capping points than fighting. Yes. Problem is they regen faster than we can dish out damage to them. Us on. To actually kill them. She's, 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 oh no, she's, she's landing hits. Some big hits too. Should kill one of them. Okay, this this could work. And yeah, you don't have to kill them all because they're very close to breaking. They'll make Age of Sigmar Total War. I don't think they'll make Age of Sigmar until it's it's a bit more of an established IP. It's, it's still kind of in its younger years. Age of Sigmar. It's got a few more years before it's, it's ready for a Total War game, I think. Because Re uh, Realm of Ruin didn't do very well, I believe. That was Age of Sigmar. I heard mixed things about Realms of Ruin. Apparently the dev team is really nice. But that it just didn't really find its audience. Come on. Hit the damn trolls. Good, she landed a hit. One more troll dead. Because yeah, they can't revive the trolls. But they can just heal the existing ones. Okay, good, broke it. Alright, that's the that's the actual last of their fast units. So any units that come down off the walls now are easy for Katarin to get rid of. Just make sure that you shatter them or escort them off the battlefield or kill them, whichever comes first. Yeah, see, they're bringing new units off the walls. But legend, they're halberds! Okay, this halberd has so far done no damage. Let's see if we can beat it without it doing any damage to Katarin. So I just charged in there, right through them. Yeah, no damage done. Ah, oh, damn it, it rallied. Yeah, we're not going to cap this. It's, it's just not going to work. You need multiple characters to pull it off. One is not enough. Yeah, them keeping their trolls and their halberds together like the... Uh, sorry, trolls and... Yeah, that's what I meant. Trolls and have the halberds together is a good call because I don't want to charge at the trolls while the halberds are there and I don't want to charge at the halberds while the trolls are there. So if you have a look at the halberds, they have so far done no damage. Doesn't charge reflection damage her? No. Nah. Okay, so with charge reflection, they still need to do their animation to make the attack. It doesn't just automatically dish out damage. And because this prevents them from being able to actually do an attack animation, you can see here they have no, no, no damage. This is why I've said charge reflection is actually kind of shit. I think the unit has to be bracing as well, and they're too busy running around. If we have a look, it should say when... It doesn't... Okay, hang on. 
But yeah, when bracing. So they're not braced. You gotta be in, uh, you gotta stay still for a couple of seconds. But even then, see, they're not bracing. So Chaos Warriors with Hellbird, zero damage. What happened to those trolls? There they are. Sorry about this. Look at that, they've actually used up all their regen. Okay, good, it's shattered. Good enough. Alright, new units coming off the walls? Nope. Okay, if no new units are coming off the walls, then we can just cap the points. Despite of what you may know, would you prefer a fantasy, 40k or similar, or historical Total War game next? Um, I would prefer a historical to Yeah, I would prefer a good historical Total War game. Okay, so if I had the choice between a bad historical Total War game or a good fantasy Total War game, I'll choose good fantasy any, d any day of the week. Um, I don't want to see any more bad historical Total War games. We haven't had, like, a really good historical Total War game since Three Kingdoms, and even then, that was, like, kind of good. Um, I don't think that was as good as Shogun 2. And even then, my favorite historical Total War game remains Medieval 2, so... I keep hoping Creative Assembly is going to make a banger historical Total War game, but man, they're just not good at it anymore. And I think it's largely because they don't provide the resources they, they need to do it. They focus too much on spectacle and not enough on substance. What am I doing? Don't need that. Almost 90 minutes of the siege. Well, most of it has been on triple speed. And this this is a particularly important battle. And I can't really use my army without uh, it getting obliterated. You know, I tried to use these two and they didn't do very well. Katarin, unfortunately, the situation is that Katarin can just do really well on her own. Uh, Rav, Ravi Poodle did a five dollar super chat. Hope this five hundred cent super chat doesn't aggravate your ligma too much. Also, Yas Queen Slay. Okay, thank you, super chat. Um, no, five hundred, five hundred cents is not doesn't trigger the ligma. It's uh, usually about ten thousand cents that does it. Is that right? Yeah, ten thousand cents. Anything under 10,000 cents doesn't trigger my Ligma, so it's all good. Come on. Why does he keep clicking? You know you could just sit there. The only competent department at CA nowadays are the art department. The game looks awesome. Gameplay, on the other hand. Okay, um, I don't really agree with that. The art department is competent, for sure. Um, not going to deny that. Although, has got some pretty friggin' big skeletons in their closet right now. <laughs> some pretty friggin' big ones. Anyway, uh, I do... Having spoken to, or I've heard from, actual developers any problems within the game, it's not really their fault. <laughs> I know people don't want to hear that. It's not really their fault. Because these engines are fundamentally flawed and they are not given the tools that they need to fix them. So whenever they go in, it's just a fucking mess. And part of the problem as well is that when you've got a game that's got two decades worth of legacy code, 
and you have programmers and developers that have been at the company for like one year or even five years maximum, they go in and have a look at the legacy code and they don't know what to do with it. Part of the problem is that Creative Assembly does not have a veteran staff that is that has been with Total War for such a long time that they understand the source code. And so they're dealing with code that they don't understand anymore. From what I have heard, you know, I don't know the actual truth of it. I keep hearing mixed, mixed, um, rumors about all the stuff, but that is evident with what I'm seeing. They're clearly trying hard, but every time they fix one thing, another problem occurs. So I don't know. Technical debt. Yeah. Total War suffers from massive technical debt. Unfortunately, they really need to invest in improving that because these engines are not the 2020s standard it's 20 teens they're they're falling behind the time is there a good rule for dealing with dark elves as kislev auto resolve uh basically no Sounds like EA with Madden and Legacy Code. I imagine it's be it's it's actually better than than that situation. Madden Legacy Code seems like beyond fucked. It should be fine. Hey, Colin, I need some cash. Okay, lost replenishment rate's not that big of a deal. Alright, get back on your mount, it shouldn't kill you. Raised your health a bit. Same thing with you. Alright, good-ish. Alright, do we have any... No, we don't have any of the um, hedge knights. Alright, it's cool. We can wipe out um, Festus. Yeah, this turned out to be a fucking waste of time. What's this? Guardian of the land. Kislev's dominion. Okay, throws. there's the fecundite's gone. <sighs> okay, whatever. Drujina. Alright, so our finances are okay. It's not terrible, not the best. Alright, we need to put in... Yep. And just go with the money, because this is green territory. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. That'll help grow it. That's good. Alright, so we got some levels with... Or A level for Katarin. What do we need? We haven't got our arcane conduit yet. Death Frost. Yeah, putting another point into that would have been really helpful. Same thing with maybe reducing upkeep costs a little bit more. Maybe let's let's just finish up with um, her magic line. We'll get a point into Crystal Sanctuary. I never overcast her spells. And this one here definitely could use some more melee capabilities. She doesn't have melee defense in her line here. Which is kind of what she needs the most, I think. But it's fine. Uh, that's not really needed. That's... Actually, not too bad. Let's get that. Actually, hang on, hang on. That might not be as... No, no, let's get that. Because, yeah, helping Katarin to level up faster would be good. And you could... Yeah, do that. Okay. Andrew Matthews at 2-band Superj. Did you test for Castalton Revive location? Yes. He doesn't revive at, at Zavastra. He only revives at Erengrad. So we're going to have to give Erengrad to um, these guys here, the Ecstatic Legion. So I'm going to have to sell them Castle Alexandrinov and Erengrad. Actually, no, Joyshenk. Okay, let me just see Follow if... Me. Hang on, should I do this now? No time for insignificance. Ooh. I demand more important playthings. Aww. Go to war with Varg. How does that sound? No, they won't do that. What if I... Hmm. And these other ones matter that much. Hmm, this doesn't have any money.
Because, yeah, if I don't do this now, he might declare war on me, and then I won't be able to do it. I'll have to actually let him take the settlement, so I, I kind of need to do this now. It's just a shame I can't ask for more money. If we want to revive Castelton, this seems to be the only way. I don't want a trade agreement with them. I knew. You and then I need to sell him Erengrad. And for that, I shall extract a high price. And let's see if I can ask for Joy Shank back. Yeah, I could. Because I could just attack it. This seems better. I knew. Okay, so he's got Eren Gred. We'll see about reviving Castelton. Commander of the soldiers. So I've got to get this character over to here and start causing revolt. Luckily, the public order here is already bad for them, so it'll it'll start deteriorating straight away. It unfortunately lowers the settlement down to tier one. It is what it is. It is what it is. If we want if we want to revive him, that's what we got to do. Okay, then Crudenvold over here. I don't think we should send Katarin to go and do that. Why did we? Oh yeah, because wow, this was a lot of money. Um, I think we should. Uh, why is this an adamant decision? Must be made. Doesn't look like it. Don't know. Okay, so it doesn't make sense to send Katarin over this way. Katarin needs to get to the front line immediately. That must be him there. Yep. And I think the front line should be... It's time to fight them. I think we can hold back the Chaos Tide with just this army here. This guy is going to make his way up this way. In fact, it doesn't make sense to bring the whole army. Yeah, whatever. Hang on. Let's just get a Drizina Strongholder will do. And this will go Ruin 12 that before they get a chance to do it. Okay. So, that's good. Get some money going. Alright, what else can we construct? We made a fair bit of cash this turn. What was I doing? Oh, that's right. I was going to get fo Frostworms, but I've thought against doing that now. Um, probably just demolish that until I get Boris, which, that's another bloody mission. So, let's see. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Okay, if we get this, we can start working towards Ice Guard, which would be really good. And a little bit iffy on how much that's going to cost. Let's just see what else we got going on. This needs to grow. Then again, uh, hang on. Troll country. Yeah, I gotta rebuild Joy Shank up again. Alright, so Zavastra is a ruin. Okay, Fort Jack Hoover, that's good. Alright. But yeah, it's time to go back to war with Vlad. I just got to get into position before we launch the attack. Champion of the motherland. Hmm. How do the champions of Chaos DLC laws perform on the campaign map? Uh, they do okay. Varying degrees of, of success. They do okay. Alright, this is... This is alright. Definitely not my strongest Kiss the Vite campaign. Leader of Kislev's warriors. No, actually, just go with money. I'm going to switch some of these around. For the glory of Kislev. I need more money. Drugina. That's another I thing as well. I need to make sure I've got enough money to build that next turn. I can always just... Oh, that, that'll demolish and give us some money for that. All right, moving on. Hang on, let me just check my diplomacy. Uh, William Webb did a five dollar super chat. Hang on a sec, dude. Oh, I can get a confederation with the Ropsman clan. I don't see that as being high value, so I'll leave them be. Uh, Morning Ledge was gonna make a sitting on the toilet joke, but I like your economy. You s you go to squeeze and pinch da dumch. Yep. Thank you, super chat, dude. Appreciate it.
Did you figure out how to confed Boris? Plus 150 relations, he lost his main army, have one settlement and military alliance with me in a bunch of wars, but doesn't want to do it. I managed to confederate him in the campaign that I'm playing in my own time. Like this one here, I'm just playing it in my own time. I confederated him. This campaign went really well. Um, no defeat campaign as well. Um, that worked. And I didn't have to revive him. I met him. And then he was like one turn away from defeat. And he was like, confederate me, confederate me. It, worked, it actually worked. But he is a very prickly person to confederate. Are we, sorry, are we reviving Castelton or we don't care? We're reviving Castelton. Yeah. It's, it is a pain in the ass to do this, but we are going to do it. Add a rim, subscribe with Prime. Thanks, dude. Appreciate that. But yeah, I'm just curious because it does feel like CA is stuck in a rut. I wonder if there's a company willing to take the leap. Uh, Creative Assembly is definitely stuck in a rut. They they keep trying to play things too safe, and that's not that's actually in many ways um, costing them. They're just not innovating. Because they've basically they've had it too good for too long, and they've just been riding on their um, riding on their accolades for a really long time now, and that's run out. And so now now they need to get into high gear, start innovating, start improving their their actual technology, or else they will fall behind, and the total war scene will shrink. I, it won't disappear, but I don't think it'll ever disappear. I mean, there's people still playing Medieval Two, and I imagine they're going to be playing Medieval Two ten years from now, and Rome Rome Two. It's just that. They don't make money from people playing old games. Friends Most of the time. Kislev, we greet you. I will, just let me get into position. Um, okay. Chosen Drusina. I foresee destruction. Did Nordland get rid of those guys? Damn it. I have no idea where they are. Thanks, Nordland. Thanks. Thanks a bunch. Noble of the Oblast. Now I know where they are. <laughs> Got ambushed. Oh no, Legend, you suffered a defeat! We've already lost a battle in this campaign, so it's fine. Alright, if I order resolve this, this guy will probably die, so just fight him manually and die. At least at least I know where it is. Um I never saw the faction! How the fuck was I supposed to know it was there? <laughs> How many defeats is now? This will be number two. Uh, but it's fine, whatever. This doesn't really matter. How the fuck was I supposed to know that was there? You know? Look to our comrades! Trust in them, and trust in the glacial resolve of the motherland. You can escape. Oh, all we're gonna do is lose. He won't get wiped out if we lose. Ready for battle. All I need okay. to do is get scared. Onward. Unfortunately, the um, the buyer blood kind of makes it yes. difficult to um, to route. So what I have to do here is just. Keep running, so it makes it difficult from the hit. I gotta last 30 seconds. We would have lost the battle already. But just keep moving. See, they're not doing much damage to him. There we go. It's fine.
All right, Katarin should have no problem dealing with this army if she can reach it. That poor man, he's fine. He's, he, he got a few scratches, but he's alive. That's a lot of minnows. Yeah, but our anti-large infantry and our cossars will turn them into mincemeat. Because they're, you know, cows. It'll be fine. We need better ground. Oh, they stay hidden. Zarina Catherine of Well, at least I know where they are. See, if they weren't hidden, I could I could launch the attack on them. You can see they're right there. We gotta be careful. Oh, God, I need to move on to Vlad. This fucking beastman got in the way. Alright, you just stay right there. Because they're probably gonna attack Hergig. Can we force march down to Hergig? No. Guardian of the land. Hmm. It is what it is. Is it a microwave oven? No, yeah, I'm microwaving things while I live stream. No, it's uh, it's air conditioner. Drugina. All right. So reviving Castelton over here. We need to fight blood. Come, sing, dance, and drink. Okay, I've also figured out that these ones here, their first point doesn't actually um, reduce or increase the control in a province. So they actually need to get leveled up to do it. Right, if we want to speed this process up, what we want to be doing... Stand over here. Follow me to glory! Then, I want you to stand outside the settlement again. Since with Joy Shank, um, hang on. It's a tier one settlement. Which means it's not going to be lowered down in level by doing this. Uh, me doing this will upset Bretonia a bit, though. Let me just have a look at this. Let me have a look. King Luan Leonke. Yeah, the gi the gifts given to the Aesthetic Legion, I don't think they are going to... They're not a grudgeful field race, so they'll get over it really quickly. Especially if I go to war with them. I care not for the peons that live upon her. So, get the money, because I'm a bit low on cash. I knew. Then we'll go to Coron and say, hey, I'll join war against the Aesthetic Legion. I'll have your will and, and I'll score have a fair now. bit of cash. There we a go. Alright, cool, cool, cool. And then we just take it straight back. What are you going to do about it, bitch? A worthy it does destroy the building, but that building's only worth 930, so I easily rebuild that back. This army here is not going to attack us. No way in hell it would win. Commander of the soldiery. Noble of the Oblast. And now that we're in the region, just, just by our presence here, we are causing public order problems a little bit. Then we just need to start sacking it. Which will also increase their level up, I think, next time they, they fight a battle, which means more public order problems. I could recruit another lord, but we've got our hands full with our finances at the moment. Drugina. So over here... That's probably not a high priority right now. That would be a much higher priority. Empire. Approach us, friend. And yes. Yes. Keep. What?
for the glory of Kislev. All right. So we won. Why are you reviving Castelton? Because he's a legendary lord and he's not our enemy. Yeah, the, the game lets you think that he's your enemy, but he's not really. Do you think there should be a governor-like system in Warhammer 3? There is, in some with some factions. We've, we've got that with the Adamans. So. You gonna take Crudenwald? I, I would, but there's a friggin' Beastman army between me and there. <laughs> they must have sensed that, that I was gonna go and ruin Dweller. Alright, let's let's adjust some of this stuff. So let's go with allied factions, animation speed fastest. Heroes off. Off, but normal for that. And neutral factions, yeah, we got that off and off. There we go, that'll go a bit faster. How goes the new patch gameplay? Satisfactory so far? Yeah, satisfactory. He's your political rival, not your enemy. Yeah, and exactly, and he's fallen behind now, so even if we revive him, he's not he's not gonna catch up. Hey Legend, do you plan on just spamming Frostworm stacks when you can afford it? I have no intention of recruiting any Frostworms whatsoever. Damn it. I thought they might do that. Um, I can't... Oh, I might be able to win this. I can give it a shot. I might be able to win. I doubt it. Oh, this is not a good settlement for defense. This is actually one of the worst ones in the game. Uh... Yeah, we're outnumbered pretty badly. Probably will lose, but I'm going to take as many of them down as I can, especially the Minotaurs if I can. Uh, staying up on the walls is not the greatest idea when dealing with beastmen. Uh, with minotaurs at least. But maybe, because they're quick. But they can't climb up on the walls, alright. I do not like this. Okay, look. We don't have to hold this ground over here if we hold this. Oh, but that's a terrible defensive position. There's four ways into it. Yeah, because if we hold this position, it, it only has two barricades, that's it. One over here, and the other one is, for some reason, all the way over here. This is a really bad layout. Alright, the towers here are just going to be basic towers. Okay, the Kosovite Dervishers. The only thing I... Oh no, they'll get run down by them. So they're useless. <sighs> okay, how are we going to do this? This position here gives us a stat boost, but there's no towers. This position here gives us three towers. But what the, if I hold this position, they're just going to cap all the, the town square and stuff. They can't capture that position, this one here until they've captured this one. So I have to hold this one here. It's the only viable option. Okay, let's make sure nobody's on skirmish mode. Fucking little surprises that they do to you. <laughs> Two years and this shit's still in the game. Look, okay, this doesn't need to be built straight up. Hang on. Yeah, this is my, one of my least favorite places to fight. Okay, I'm going to put a blocker here, put barricades there. I might be able to hold this position as well. 
Because they won't be able to cap this at all. And that'll just act, act as a blocker. Problem is, though, if I don't have more units here, we, we really want to concentrate our troops. They definitely will send units around here, though. Alright, I'm going to put you up on the wall. We should try to shoot this, because this guy's fairly quick. We can maybe run back a little bit. Maybe. Mm. No, the beastmen are quick. Doing that will get him killed. I do not think I'm going to win this. With all of those minotaurs here, I do not think I'm going to win. I, I just think I can hurt them. That's that's the best I can do here. Yeah, alright. But like I said, I'll just do the best I can. Okay, good idea, good idea. I'm going to put you here. I am going to do this. And I'm going to put you here to try to delay them a little bit. Looks upon those that defend Kislev with honor. Do not give him cause to turn from us. Taking position. Moving. Wolf stop Kislevite. Whatever you're to that. On the march. March with pride. With honor. <laughs> They keep activating the skirmish mode. Alright, chase after me. Because yeah, this guy's got no combat value whatsoever, so if any of the Minotaurs chase after us, good. Alright, we gotta get moving now, or else... Or else he's not gonna get back. So the towers did a little bit of damage, but you know, not not a whole lot. It's just it's just about just poking at them a little bit. Just if I stay up there, he's gonna get wrecked. Let's get these minotaurs chasing after us, so that I don't have that much to deal with on the front. I feel like this tower position here should really be connected to this one. Same thing with that one, though. So it sucks they're connected to this one. Makes them useless! Right. Put a blocker there. Oh, shit. My bad. That's not a good start. Anyway, these guys here would have caught me anyway. So, whatever. At least a whole bunch of them are out here now, and they should, I think, mosey on in. I don't think that's going to rally. No. Rip calf. Yeah, it's okay. They were never going to be of much use. Okay, we can actually restore his ammunition. Seems a little bit harder to do with him. Alright, here we go. The 
defender of Kislev. Okay, now we can't let this be destroyed. If we want to keep it around, here's what we do. When it's just about destroyed, we switch it to a barricade trap. And then we can rebuild it back and it'll get all of its health. I need you over here. Need more guys over here. Get over here. He's getting smashed. Gotta get him out of there if we want him to survive, which not essential, but I do want him to survive. Make sure these guys here get destroyed so they don't come back. Rebuild this as a barricade. Get ready to restore that. Get over here. Taking point. Rusina. I don't see this working. Moving. <laughs> we don't have enough troops. We don't have enough. There's too many minotaurs. Yeah, and like I said, this settlement is not good to defend in. Come on, guys, get over here. Mm, don't count us out just yet. Oh, there's another barricade there, I should draw. At least their Minotaur's got wrecked. Move up, move up, move up. Because you got another one coming as well. Should have just put everyone over here. Oh, this guy's going to get killed. Advance! Yeah, he's dead. Very well. the did the best I could. It didn't go perfectly, but we did some damage to their Minotaurs. That's all I could really ask for, I guess. Katarin will finish the job. It's, just, it's pointless to do anything now. It's, it's over. They've overrun us. I think a couple of Kislevite warriors could have made a huge difference. Absolutely, but I didn't get any chance to recruit. It just, it is what it is. You know, these guys just popped up out of nowhere, declared war. It is what it is. It, we got a better defeat than what the Order Resolve said. And Katarun is right around the corner. Should just be able to finish them off. It's annoying, but it is what it is. Luckily, it was a, a low tier settlement. As in, it's um, only level 1. I did spend some money to upgrade it, though. Oh, well. The problem was just the Minotaurs. Just too strong for the garrison. What do you think is the best mod to play on Total War Attila? I don't play Total War Attila or any mods, so you're asking the wrong person. The fuck you're losing? No, we were very badly outpowered here. Very badly outpowered. Your previous Kislev campaign was no defeats? Yes, but this campaign didn't go that well. It just didn't go that well. Look, after we've lost one battle, um, doesn't really matter that much if it's no defeats. Alright, so they're right in front of us. Well, they're going to encamp stance. What are they doing?
That's okay. I should still be able to trigger them. Forgot about these guys here. <laughs> See, that was you. Sort them out. And they're gone now. Alright, it'd be better to take Krudenwald first because it's too close to other forces. My frozen kingdom expands. They're wiped out, right? They usually don't have more than one army. Yeah, they're gone. Okay. Die well, pigs, but die you must. No. Never. Drusina. So we're trying to revive Castelton here. So we got to keep sacking this with this army. Our loss is Kislev's gain. Okay, so. Defender of Kislev. Commander of the soldiery. Any chance that we can get out on the water? Yeah, we can. I lead, you follow. Okay, and then we recruit a lord here. Fight for Kislev. Good. That showed them. Leader of Kislev's warriors. All right. Respect what are we gonna do with my here? position. This gift is mine alone. So I need some time to recover there. Chosen Drusina. Glory be to the motherland. Claim it for the Ice Queen. So yeah, raiding will help speed that up process up a little bit. And also putting points into spread control. Yeah. Hang on. Yeah, characters minus six, that's working. So this one here should make it minus seven. Yep, okay, cool. That is at least doing something. Uh, this guy can't read Joyshank, but he might head over to Fort Straghoff. Because you know how much they love going after undefended targets. Ice Queen. Okay, let's grab that. And then we'll come over to her gig next turn and occupy that. Got Vargen coming. You know nothing. The don't bother taxing this for now. Yeah, definitely don't want to go towards Vlad right now. We're a bit preoccupied. Guardian of the land. Thoughts on the raw hags? Seems pretty good. Uh, do you think Dread Sorens will be fine against melee heavy factions? I think that you should avoid recruiting Dread Saurians, they're just not good units. But look, if you like Dread Saurians, then go ahead and recruit them. But I don't recommend them, I don't think they're good. I think they're super overpriced, and they're just janky. Their size, is, they just makes them too weak. But you know, if you like them, by all means, get them. Okay. Noble of the Oblast. Ruzina, ready. Okay, this guy's got Champion some levels to go. Land. Let's get that, because it would be good to get Man of the People. I need to reduce our keep costs. We're not rolling around in cash that much. Okay. 
Daz would be good for a bit of extra cash, but that would put me pretty low on devotion. I think I'll hold off for now. So I'm just wondering if maybe... I think this army here should force march to Joyshank until this guy gets back. Even though it's important that we keep sacking this every single turn. And this guy is causing a lot of uh, public order problems. Um, we can't let this guy here run rampant through our territory. Because if I stand here, and if he force marches over to here, we've got him. What this does, having an army here contains them. But... Yeah, just gotta wait till Katarin gets over there. Because the public order over here, it's it's still going down. It's just gonna take longer. Could recruit another lord to speed it up, but that means money. Send a hero to see if Astankia's alive. Pro possibly confederate her. I don't want Astankia. I don't want her. Yeah, upgrade that, because upgrading the portal will be good. Anyway, we can find out if she's still alive by doing this. If we just go and have a look over here, we have a look for Slanesh Corruption in this area here. See, Slanesh Corruption, Slanesh Corruption, she's dead. Yeah, she's dead. There's no way that uh, Astankia is still alive. She's a goner. Marathi, Marathi rolls over her in every campaign that I've seen with um, Kislev these days. It is what it is. Alright, what do we want from here? Heroic Resilience could help, because that pops in when they're at um, half health. Stand Your Ground is also good. Not going to get those units. I will eventually... I need more of them before I bother with that. Uh, let's get that. Is there a, a way to revive us, thank you, though? I'm not sure. Some people said there is, some people said there isn't. I haven't tested it out. Um, I, like, I'll be honest with you, I don't like her, thank you. So, uh, I don't really care about having her or not. I, she's one of my least favorite lords in the entire game. Drujina. Hmm. For the wisdom of Valea. I might borrow this army, but if they recruit more units, then I won't be able to borrow it. Because I do want to fight against Vlad. Because I feel like these two armies here should be able to contain this situation easily enough. Uh, yeah, it just is what it is with this. Looks like we might have to go to war with um, him soon. See if he'll go to war with the Static Legions. If I give him a region, he might. Hmm. That's interesting. I could give him Fort Stragov. Force him to come around this way. But Legend, that's one of your regions. Yeah, I could also get a shitload of money out of him for it. Way more than what this settlement's making. And then I could just attack... Uh, look, we're probably going to have to go to war with him anyway. Because, yeah, that will mean he'll go to war with the Sarl out here. It'll keep him distracted for the time being. Can I get more money than that? No. I could also get him to go to war with Varg. Yeah, yeah, because they're out. They're sending an army out this way. This would be interesting. What if I gave you Hell Pit instead? No, he doesn't want that. It's a, it's a shame. Fort Stragov's definitely a good settlement, but they're probably going to sucker punch me anyway. And like I said, I'll just go to war with them as soon as I'm done with everything else. And this could really relieve some pressure from me. Alright, I'm gonna do so that. Last time. A glorious day for Kislev. Okay. Alright, let's move on to the next turn.
Why not confederate the other and give him their settlement? Okay, so that other faction acts as a buffer. Uh... Hang on, you may be onto something there. Because he's he owns all of that territory. Maybe I should confederate them. Yeah, I usually don't like to get a non-aggression pact because I, I do want to attack him, just not right this turn. I got I got like a couple of things I got to deal with, and then I want to attack him. And if I get a non-aggression pact, that means twenty turns, unless he cancels it. Astrogoth gonna rush to Erengrad. Well, then I can just besiege the settlement and declare war on him. Because, yeah, if I, I like to leave these guys here as a buffer state. Because the territory they have, it, it's good, but it's not essential. Just go with um, public order will be fine here, so just go with uh, money. I know there's no money there at the moment, but there will be soon. So if we have a look at him, the relationship is because okay. another thing that I could have done. I mean, I'm assuming that Boris is still alive. Do you know how I can tell? There's no chaos corruption here. Champion of the motherland. I'm going to send this character to go and meet Boris. Send us because Boris will probably die soon and we've got an opportunity to confederate him. So... I have yeah, 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 yeah. Just stay, stay the way it is for now. Champion of Kislev. As is my right. Guardian nice. of the land. Rosina ready. For the glory of Kislev. Alright, need this guy here to just Was continue raiding in mind. here. Yep. Defender of Kislev. And I need this Fire guy to force Kislev. march back over here. To conquer. Yeah. Commander okay. of the soldiery. Okay, okay, okay. Katarin's making her way around, just gonna take some time. I kind of feel as though I'm gonna be getting the um, Ice Guard fairly soon, but we'll need to get rid of this, so I might want to respec her when the time comes. Maybe let's try to lower her upkeep costs for now. My rule grows absolute. Respect my position. Uh, I really want to attack them. Okay, the I can't do that anymore. Okay. So yeah. If we have a look. Yeah, look, the, he is still around because it says the motherland. But how big is he? I don't know. Why sending Katarin to colonize? Because she was just in the area. She was already here. It's not like I took her away from a long distance. She fought the Brass Keep, these settlements. That was a ruin, and then the Beastmen came and blew this up. They just spawned out of nowhere, declared war on Nordland and attacked. 
So the sucker punched me a bit, and um, luckily it was just a tier one settlement, so it sets us back only a little bit. Um, but now she's gonna. I wanted to move her down to start fighting Vlad because Vlad's getting out of control, which means we're fighting on two fronts. Except we're not really fighting over here. We're just keeping an eye on this. Yeah, we want access to little Groms. Chosen Drusina. Yeah. Might swing her around over this way and head towards the gr No, when we make an attack, we should really make sure we hit them hard in one of their armies. Maybe even Vertbad down here. That's where Vlad is. Since most of his army is likely to be just infantry, that would be a good place to hit him. If he stays there. And that way I can hit him from two fronts. Money's not terrible at the moment, so that's good. You know, income is improving, so that is also good. Hopefully Nordland repels Sertha Ek, but most likely he'll swing around here. If he goes and captures Nordland, uh, Nordland, that could be good, so I can get it back off him. And then, yeah, let's keep trying to revive Castelton over here. Okay, moving on. Let me see if there's any diplomacy. No evil doer. But yeah, we're not in any risk of, like, actually losing the campaign. It's just, this is not the healthiest Kislev campaign I've ever done. That's all. You could teleport to Quest Battle to discover him. Ah, good. Good thinking. Growth Edict in Hockland? There is no Growth Edict. Kislev doesn't have a growth edict. Can I buy the Tower of Crack? Well, considering it's a war with an enemy, I don't think so. Oh, hang on. They're going for it. Are they going to win? No, they just took out the vampires around it, but they didn't want to take the actual settlement out. Those armies are probably going to get wiped out. Why do you want Castelton to revive? Uh, because he's a good ally. Why? Why not? Didn't you say Castelton revived in a minor settlement? Apparently, they changed it. We we tried to revive him at, at Zavastra. It didn't work. It didn't work. So now we have to do it to Erengrad in order to bring him back. It sucks, but that's just, they changed it. So in hindsight, it would have been better to just not let Castelton get wiped out in the first place, but he died so early in this campaign. So I think this campaign, it's not like it's gone the worst thing ever, but I've definitely seen better campaigns. Seen things go better. Yeah, you know, our enemies got their shit together pretty quick in this. You know, Castelton was dead by, what, turn 14? Vlad was on our doorstep. Draka was being a birch. And you just don't have the resources to deal with everything. Not unless you want to cheese it really badly. Okay. The keys of midwinter is Why are they coming around here? Go, go somewhere else. <laughs> They're like, oh, since I'm in the area, I might as well declare war on you. Maybe I'll just declare on you while you're here. Yeah, because this army here should be able to beat this one, no problem. That's just trash. Oh, they've got that ability already. Which won't apply in this settlement, but yeah, Astrogoth will be difficult to deal with. So we can see here that Vlad... Okay. If we really play our cards right, we could end up with pretty much everything. All of Vlad's armies are pretty much over here. So if I go... I don't care about the Griffin Wood. Let him keep that for now. 
If I go Vitevo and then Nagenhoff with that one, swing around this way. I think Katarin should go... I think we should go to Tempelhof and sit there and get ready to declare war. Do not tarry. All right, so if, to do that, I got to get in fairly close. All right, let's go this way. Public order over here. Yeah, so showing the edicts, we've got the, uh, the anti-corruption one, local recruitment, public order, and money. There is no growth edict. Commander of the soldiery. Oh, I forgot to teleport. Oh, it seems like he's still alive. Alright. You come back... What's this one? Disciplined. Right, you come back over here. Strongholder would be good in this air, in this one here, because it would increase their melee defense by 5. Okay, then another thing that we could potentially do is actually just go into ambush stance here. Champion of Luring this army out, maybe. Noble and then we want to sack Olaf. this. Because one thing would be worth some good experience. You will fall. And another thing, it Big lowers their their stuff. Public order equals growth. Yeah, but we've already got really good public order, look. It's already going up. So we don't we don't need it. <sighs> We're not making any money anyway. You're not you're not wrong. You're not wrong. Alright, going to raid stance there. Alright, so looking at this, you know, it's still gonna take a fair few turns. Okay, do you are you getting Winds of Magic out here? Okay, do you want Yeah, Gustavo's egg is shit. Why don't you take the Book of Asher? It is mine by right. Probably gonna wanna strip corruption away when the time comes. So I really want to sucker punch Vlad really hard here. Really, really hard. Alright, this does not decrease their public order. I accept this tribute. This does, but we're not ready for that yet. So, which brew overcasted? Which one's that? That's the one that provides regen. Still learning that particular lore of magic. Quest battle to find Boris time. I went into Force March. I should have done that at the beginning of the turn. I just forgot. It's alright. I don't think we'll be able to confederate him straight away. I'll just do it next turn. If I remember. Okay, so technologies. We should be trying to work towards... Pirates' weapons. We've got a, we've got like two ports at the moment. Go with the quicker one, just so that we get to pirates' weapons quicker. With this, we stand against chaos. Okay, that's definitely what we want in order to recruit Ice Guard. It'll still take us a while to globally recruit them, though, because we need to get Prague to Tier 5. We get this building built, and it just takes time. We're out of cash. It's okay. Get there eventually. Or maybe maybe we should build something else, because I've only got one Ice Guard at the moment, so that's not really going to provide much value right this very second. It would be better to increase our income. And maybe even increase our growth here, since this is kind of a requirement. Yeah, more money though, that sounds good. Alright, let's go with Daz. Because that'll give us some more cash. Because that's what I need. 
Katarin's army should be good enough to deal with most of Vlad's stuff, especially if we take out Drakenhof here. Just sweep across all of this with these two armies. Because all of his armies are out over here, fighting the Empire. The Empire. So we'll snatch his... E e we'll sucker punch him, just like what he did to us. Need cash. Yep. Um, yeah, this would be good because we need um, growth here as well. Alright, and... I don't think there's much else we can do. I... Those who dis... The F... Yes! Okay, move on. I've never witnessed Molder destroying Castalsen like that before. Yeah, these things happen. Sometimes your campaign, you just get really unlucky with the start of it. It doesn't doesn't end your campaign, but, you know, you just don't have a good, strong start. And a, a good, strong start really sets you up well for the rest of the campaign. And unfortunately, because we didn't have a strong start due to at the AI just being super aggressive, it means that we're lagging behind where we would, we would otherwise be if we were in a strong position. I don't think the Empire is making good decisions there. Varg Norska will probably attack you when you move Katarin too far south. What do you want me to do? Okay, I'll just stand on my hands and do nothing. <laughs> we'll deal with it when that becomes a problem. But Vlad has to be dealt with. We can't just not attack Vlad. The sooner we do it, the better. Is there a good reason on the world map to set up a lot of Undercities for Skrulk? I want to try sending a lone army to sack Undercities in certain areas. Yes, Undercities can be really good for generating food. Alright, so Nordland might be able to repel Surtha Ek, maybe. <laughs> Bring it in. What's the deal with it? Foreign Trespasser? Oh, okay. Yeah, that's fine. Oh, I could totally beat that. But I'm out of range. Because it'll yes. just be infantry. But if I did that, then that would cause the a lot of relief for the Empire, for a settlement that's probably not worth that much. It'd be much better to go and take this rich territory and let the Empire deal with all this crap. Because they, they didn't help me out that much. <laughs> okay, so we need to teleport over to here. We definitely don't want to fight this battle. It'll wreck our army. There's, it's, this is one of the tougher quest battles. So that should have met Boris. It didn't. You were just out of range. Yeah, unfortunately, it didn't meet Boris. Okay, that means that this character... Back over there you go! Because <laughs> it just did, didn't meet him. Okay. This army here is slowly building up. We did go into ambush dance, but they just didn't care. Alright, so here's what we'll do. We'll start our war from Mordheim. We'll go Mordheim, Essen, Waldenhof, that direction. And this guy's going to go Vitevo, Nagenhof, um, Griffinwood. Because there's just no armies out this way. So we'll snatch up a whole bunch of territory by doing that. And that'll give us some good amount of assets. Having a look over here, we've almost brought back Castalton. It says three turns there. We've got to keep sacking it. Erengard is a good settlement legend. Indeed it is. Indeed it is. It sucks that we have to do this. It is a very good settlement. But you know what? This is the only way to bring back Castelton. And he's a good legendary lord. I know some people don't like him very much, but he is actually very good. Good. Lowering the public order a bit more. Too bad sacking just doesn't cause much instability. Just, it is what it is. Hmm. 
The keys of midwinter is upon us. He considers me his main threat, although relations are slightly improving. He does have a lot of enemies, so hopefully he focuses on that instead of me. But given the, the just the luck of this campaign, I got a feeling he's going to come for me, but we will, we'll just have to see how we go. Anyway, next turn we declare war on Vlad and start snatching some pretty good territory. A glorious day for Kislev. Your coming is ill-starred. Speak briefly, then... Warrior of Sigma. Well, I don't think Sertha X is going to get past Salzerman, but it's possible this army will run... This is actually a pretty good army. Possibly run away to Norden. If they do capture all this stuff over here, that means I can go and get it for myself. <laughs> Still not ideal. Praise Sigma. The nation calls. Oh, you know what I could do? For war. <laughs> I'll borrow this army, and I'll attack Waldenhof with it. Next turn. It's not a heap load of units. But I'll, I should be able to beat Waldenhof. And that way we can get a bit, a bit more started in this area here. Or even still, why don't we go one step further and go for Essen, Eschen. But that being said, they, this army's not going to be able to take on um, Drakenhof. That's not going to work. Yeah, I believe, I believe we had a military alliance with this guy, and he, um, we declared war on someone, and he didn't join it. Kislevites are pretty, pretty bad allies, actually. Alright. Still need more cash. There's so much stuff we need to construct. In Kislev, snow is a welcome ally. Fate eternal! Okay, moving on. Azazel himself sailing to Alexandrinov Castle. Okay, I'll just deal with it. Doesn't have a full stack, so I'll just deal with it. What was that trick for wounding borrowed heroes in allied armies? Well, they have to be immortal, and this, this isn't going to work in this case. He doesn't have any heroes, so it's not really worth discussing right now. The Frozen Kingdom welcomes all. It's good to know that we can get a lot of money through Vlad. Ah, uh, through um, joining war through the Empire. Three Astrogoth stack. I had no way he will attack you. <laughs> It's it's likely. I just uh, I don't know. Just got to risk it sometimes. I need to stay in that position. I'm not sitting inside the settlement, so he won't be able to destroy my army straight away if he does it. If he does do that, I'll immediately. Well, he didn't declare war. I'll immediately send Katarin up, and we'll just try to peace out with Vlad. Because if we launch the attack on him, we might be able to just sell back some of the territory. Because he's got a lot of wars going on. Yeah, look, Azazel's only got 14 units. It's not that big of a deal. Yeah, with three of Vlad's full stacks sitting in Vertbird. Vert, Vertberg? Um, that's really good for us. Absolute devotion. Okay, come on. Uh, I might be able to meet him if I just go here, so I don't have to go out on the water. Yeah, still a turn or two away. So, two turns until... He shows up. I could come down here with this army and ready. Since this one actually can't read Joyshank, 
And these guys here, if he does run over this way, we'll be able to stop him. So, yeah, you come over here and go into Raid Stance. This will speed things up a little bit. The wrath of Kislev. Uh, they must cower before Ursul. Okay, it says there's going to be a revolt, but you can see here that he's still collecting income, so we'll just turn that off. So it's not going to actually route, um, uh, break this turn. Okay, time to join war against Vlad. Alright, so let's do this. Greetings from Sigma. Pretty good. Indeed. That gives us some money to work with. Alright, time to get our revenge on Vlad. Ice Queen. Oh, there's another this army here. If we have a look at Vlad's... Vlad is considered me. weaker than us, so his armies must be filled with trash. The Tsarina. I decide. Kislev never falters. It is mine by right. Leader of Kislev's warriors. If I choose to keep military alliance with Castalto rather than Confederate, am I able to Confederate him later? I'm actually not sure about that. To battle. Kislev's I would assume cross. that you would be able to Confederate him later, just diplomatically. But he could be very difficult to confederate, so hard to say. I just don't know. Okay, so nice big sucker punch with Vlad, where he loses immediately three settlements. Who cares about the dwarf and casualties? Er, it goes in the book! <laughs> Is there a Kislevite landmark at Altdorf or Drakenhof? There isn't one at Drakenhof. I don't think there's one at Altdorf. Let me have a check. No, nothing at Altdorf. Okay. So, so far, the war has gone pretty well. The replenishment rate is pretty low. I mean, I can't recruit more units with that one. One leg. But it just, it gives us a little bit of extra cash. Then this army might come over here and decide to attack us, but I think Katarin will get over there before that happens. This army needs to get over to here. Now we can get there next turn by recruiting a lord here. So we'll, we'll take a little bit extra upkeep, but this will allow us to get there a bit quicker. Guardian of the land. And this one should probably recruit a few more. Do you have a veteran warrior? You should get a veteran warrior. A symbol of my power. Yep. Yep, 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 yep. Okay, that's good. In Kislev, snow is a welcome ally. Good. Able to reinvest that money. Champion of Kislev. Mine by yeah, right. Good. Chosen Drusina. So yeah, most of us, is, most of us, is just Stop fingers crossed that they don't eclipse us. Well. I mean, they do have a lot of enemies going on at the moment. The dripping fangs must have been destroyed. Yeah, kind of unfriendly. What if I have to go to war with Wintertooth? I don't think it's going to do anything. Wintertooth probably just has this settlement over here, and then that's it. Yeah. Castelton is up. No, he won't be coming back next turn. He'll be coming back the turn after. It, it says that he's going to revolt, but he won't. I can promise you he's not going to revolt. It's not going to revolt this turn. Okay, cool. We get another Adamant. That's good. Good. 10% extra tax rate. I really need more cash. So put that in our other richest region. 10% there would be awesome. Once we've secured this entire province here, we'll have another Adaman as well. My axe thirsts for war. Okay. The 
the keys of midwinter is upon us. Yep, all this is fine. Let's move on. Let me check Stop diplomacy though. Let's see what's available. Stop. No, if King Lu What? High ball, son. Hang on, there's a commandment. What did we just fix up? This province here. Defender of Kislev. Need more cash. Alright, let's move on. You don't have Ulrika? No, you're right, I don't have Ulrika. We'll focus on her a bit later. I, I don't consider Ulrika a very good legendary hero. She's like, she's like, she's okay. I don't consider her great. She's not something that you should rush to go and get. But yeah, in that extra spot that we've got over here at um, Fort Jakovar, I think that's where we'll start working on that. But yeah, thanks for reminding me because I forgot about Ulrika. Like the motherland, our friendship. Uh, uh, I'd rather. I mean, these guys don't usually bother me. They, they usually don't leave this area, so I guess I'll do that for money. Bit mid, but at least she gives movement. That's true, yeah. At least she does give movement. That is pretty good. Yeah, look at these guys coming in here, you parasites. They're like, oh, I'm going to come in and help now. <laughs> I need to get these two settlements. This is why it was really important to make that other recruit. Yeah, they're redirecting their efforts now. So we need to put someone at Castle Von Rukun. No, sorry, that's Castle Alexandrinov. He's probably going to lose. Oh, he actually won. Hmm. Interesting. All right, I don't need to, I don't need this one here to raid this turn. It still says collected income. That's interesting. Well, even if they turn that off, it'll still be at minus six. It should revolt. For the glory of so what we want to do here is actually go into ambush stance dial. because I want Azazel to land. Oh, but what he might do is bring this other army over here as well. A stiff drink will warm us, yes? You are not well, as depraved as I. That army will be on force march. I guess we'll see how that goes. Okay, we've just met Boris, and he doesn't want to confederate just yet. Just go with as friendly relations as possible. Uh, but yeah, he's not at the verge of defeat, so that makes sense. But at least we've got a new trade partner, so that's good. Alright, this guy needs to make his way back. Fight for Mother Kislev! Hmm, okay. So yeah, Castelton should just walk straight into the city, because there's no defenses there at all. Guardian of the land. Ice Queen. Never. Such insolence. Mm, I could strike them there, two full stacks. They'll probably attack more times. Since we've already suffered a defeat, I don't really care if we suffer more. Time for a reckoning. Maybe this army might be able to take Essen. They'll capture Waldenhof again. I don't think this one will be able to reach Essen. I don't care if this army gets wiped. That's not mine. Commander of the soldiers. I need to do this. Destroy them for Kislev. Fight for Kislev. Is the France campaign done? Um, interest is definitely dropping a lot on that campaign. 
but it's not over yet. I'm still willing to do at least one more, but if things keep dropping at this rate, I'm probably going to have to stop playing that campaign, because it is now reaching the point where it's starting to damage the channel. Really unfortunate. I'd love to keep going with it, but it is, it is really on that knife's edge right now. People are getting a bit bored by it. It's, uh, it's performing badly for the channel. It's, it's starting to. So we'll see. Sometimes, sometimes it reaches a botting me out point and then just keeps going. And that's fine if it does that. But if it keeps getting worse, and I'm not going to be able to justify continuing it. Um, hang on, are you not at war with Vlad? Friendship is more valuable than gold. Hmm. Such a thing is impossible. Problem here is that it's it's two armies and I don't know what they've got. And I'll be taking attrition afterwards. For the wisdom of Valaya. What if someone gives a hundred dollar super chat next stream? It's not really about the super chats. It's about um, people actually showing up to watch it. The viewership is dropping off very quickly now. It, it, it just this stuff happens, you know. Uh, as I've said before, my job is to make entertaining content for people, and when people are no longer being entertained by it, I have to make those judgment calls, and they're tough calls to make. It's just unfortunate, especially because some people still want to watch it. But what about all the other people that are clocking off? Then that's a problem. That's a problem, because it damages the channel long term. And I just can't justify doing that. But like I said, it's not happened just yet, but it's on a knife's edge at the moment. Okay. See, I could force march her to Waldenhof and then make my way into Drakenhof. Because if I destroy these two armies, ultimately, is that going to do anything? I'll tell you what it will do. It will give them an opportunity to go and grab this territory. By the comet. They are one people. How's this campaign doing? Uh, this is not my favorite campaign and how it's progressed. Not perfect. In terms of like, yes. uh, viewers, it's, it's dropped off huge. <laughs> Can't do much about that. It's got half the viewership it did on the day, first day. Don't know why. It is what it is. The motherland widens. More watched than the last episode of Friends that are here today. Yep, and I'm not particularly thrilled about how many people are here today either. So, look, let's not discuss this stuff because all it does is make people upset because they think they know how to run the channel and they don't. And it's, yeah, I gotta make tough calls sometimes. Um, it, just, it is what it is. Um, hmm. Do I go for his rich territory, or do I go for his army? I'm gonna go for his armies, let's do it. Unleash Gotta entertain people. Okay. Alright, well, we're gonna fight this manually, because Auto Resolve will yield too much damage. Although, I think that Auto Resolve is being a little bit generous to us here. There's mostly infantry in this army, which Katarin will destroy. Yeah, we should be fine. Maybe don't stream at 8 in the morning when three quarters of your viewers are from the US. You're just talking shit out your ass, dude. It's <laughs> just like, hey, I'm just going to make up garbage. Uh, three quarters of my viewers are not from the US. Uh, Cosmic Viking TV, subscribe with Prime. Appreciate that. Look, here's a... I always stream at this time. This is when I normally stream. This is what... Oh, my God. Just, just Look, let's just move on from the topic because you guys just... You don't get it, and that's fine. You don't have to get it. 
And there's just no point explaining it to you. Just don't worry about it. But I try to be transparent with you guys so that you understand when a campaign or series gets canned. Because it happens. I'm not going to dedicate every single campaign to being full map completions. And I get that you might have a favorite campaign, and sometimes I'll just stop it. And that's just the way it is. And you just have to, you're just going to have to learn to get over it. Or failure. Fight until your last breath. Is Vlad campaign easier in Warhammer 3? Yeah, I think so. I go. Uh, Dwayne Bowie did a three dollar super chat your channel, so do as you please. Yep, yep, sure. Thanks, what thanks, super chat. Appreciate it. I think we should save the death frosts for Vlad, because there's no other way to kill him. I mean, he's going to regen heaps, but he doesn't have that much health. He does have a lot of ward save, though. By doing this, we're going to save a lot on ammunition. Good, 115 wins of magic, that's heaps. Because, yeah, when Vlad starts coming in, he's going to be fairly slow. He's not on force march. This army's on force march. I don't think Vlad's is. But, yeah, this is where this mount really performs well. <laughs> Because, yeah, it, otherwise this will soak up way too much ammunition. It's tempting to kill this guy here, this one, because if I kill him, they'll have reduced morale. But, you know, Vlad is such... Okay, we need to head over to Vlad and start um, death frosting him, because I got a decent amount of wins. He'll regenerate all the damage that we do to him, but he'll eventually hit his regen cap. Isabella isn't with him. Sarp Pekun became a member for four months, just here for the quality legend content. And do most people... As do most people, keep up the good work. Alright, thanks, do appreciate that. Uh, Don Bui did an $8 super jet legend. Have you seen the new TV Shogun? TV show, show? No, I haven't seen it. Um, thanks for the chat. No, I haven't seen it at all. I watched uh, Blue Eye Samurai, but I haven't watched Shogun. Yeah, he's going to resist most of this. Yeah, his army is not on Force March. If I play my cards right, I might actually be able to kill Vlad before he uses up all of his regen. We're on 40,000 damage. Balance of power is not in our favor. <laughs> this should be called the, the Ice Court Lawnmower. They are so going to patch this. Damn it, they're advancing.
survive. The Golden Knights. March with pride. Okay, we should start preparing our army for basically getting wrecked. Vlad is not going to hang around here. Yeah, I need Vlad to try to chase after us. Hang on, wait over there, wait over there. Good, good, good. Okay, I want Vlad to attack us. Chase after me, Vlad. I don't want you to get into the front line because you're basically un unkillable. Whoops. Whoops. Blood. Damn it. Repositioning. Execute them. Strike them down. I'm not taking that much damage just right now. The ice queen. She's already got seven hundred kills. That's it, Vlad, come chase me. Now oh, he loses interest too quickly. For the motherland. Make case. Catherine moving. For the people. Sarina advancing. For Kislev. No, Vlad, come chase after me. I don't want you getting over here. You'll be bloody impossible to kill. Okay, they are really trying hard to hit us on this flank here. Good, Vlad's at his max healed already, so that's good. That is a good sign. We're actually dishing out a decent amount of damage to him. We got some units over again, absolutely shredded. I gotta pull this one here out before it gets completely wiped out. I'm probably in a little bit too tight of a formation, which isn't ideal. Don't worry about using the cav, that might be useful here. Uh, Sinister Plank did a 50 SEK super shit. Your content is a huge part of how I was able to go from struggling on hard to being legendary. Huge thanks for the good work and enjoy. All right, thanks, do appreciate that. Bad timing though, <laughs> but thanks for super chat. Not too much damage, but you know they are. They are definitely doing damage to us. We're not walking out of this without a few scratches. But Vlad is going down, so that is something to be grateful for. This one here is getting smashed. At least they're kind of coming at us in waves. Oh, I'm really low on magic. I'm not going to be out of Death Frost anymore. Okay, what we want to get rid of are the Mortis Engines. Things, things that are going to do loads of damage to us. Their units are not going to do much. She's done a hundred thousand damage. It may be better just try to inflict the army losses and kill these as quickly as possible, but I still think we should get rid of Vlad. Because what happens if we don't army loss them this way? Start bringing this one around. Start flanking. Okay, 
of Ursul! The Ice Queen! March with strength! Repositioning! Comrades of the Bear! Leading us on! Tarina Katarin! Come on, I need more wins and magic. I feel like my guys aren't shooting very well. Still got a lot of ammo. What's going on? I think we got that missile bug. Come on, a little bit more wins. Keep hitting Vlad. He's almost down. We got rid of the mortis engine at least. Katarin's kills. Come on, pull out a fight properly. Look at Vlad, he's almost gone. And too much of a tight formation here. It's not good. One more wins of magic. That's it. Mass friggin' route here, but yes. Vlad is almost gone. It is so. Go with honor. What happened to buy our blood? What's going on with that? Make haste. The Start playing our music, that's great. Come on, Vlad's almost gone. One more hit on Vlad, he's out of here. Okay, get out of here, Vlad, this will get him. Okay, that should definitely help. Execute them. Strike them down. One hundred thirty thousand damage. The queen marches. Choke on ice. I am risen. Catherine moving. There's the army losses. We won. Oof, that's an ugly fight. I think maybe one of our armored Cossars got wiped out, but everyone else left the battlefield before they took that much damage. I guess the big question here is, did we do better than what Auto Resolve would have done? Because it said we would have taken high damage. None of our units got wiped out. I think that's much better than order resolve because, look, we didn't lose half of our army. Order resolve was so in your favor there. No, I think we did better than order resolve. The bouncer power wasn't in our favor because as soon as Vlad's army came in, it started playing vampire music. But uh, we got it in the end.
Yeah, no units got wiped out. They just um they were just scared. Well, they can't reanimate this army, and Vlad remains wounded. Unfortunately, all of his monsters, well, a lot of his monsters came back. Uh, let's take replenishment. That was a good amount of loot money from that. I don't think I'll have enough movement to catch up to that. I'm not sure. Alright, I could sell Waldenhof to Karat Kadrin. But what's the point? We've already suffered a defeat. If they want to go and sack it or occupy it, let them. Time for a reckoning. Drusina. Test me at your peril. Um, I could force march back to here. That would allow me no. to get some replenishment. Because, yeah, we took a lot of damage in that battle. Okay, that looks pretty good. Good fight, that one. Uh, no. That'll be good for confederating what's-his-face. Papa Bear. Okay. I need another point in Death Frost, because that's actually proven to be really good. And... Yeah, keep going down the blue line a little a bit more. Gift from Kislev's great gods. Unfortunately, we're losing a little bit of Winds of Magic here. That sucks. What? Of but we've seen that uh, Death Frost can wreck Vlad, so that's good. Alright, now we need more of this. Good. So these guys will head over to the Griffin Wood. Uh, these guys will help. They're, they're not going to be strong enough to take that on. Oh, i got an idea. Why don't you defend Waldenhof for me? That might actually work. I would have loved to have borrowed this, but we didn't have enough... Um, Legion's points. Okay, so that's that done. In snow, he should be coming back next turn. That'll be good. Mine by right. Money's much better. Issues over here. Alright, let's construct. Yeah, get the wood going again. Don't need those. Shouldn't really need that anymore. Let's get money going. Okay, we said we were going to build this here so that we can get Ulrika. Waldenhof's probably going to get attacked. Joy Shank is not safe. None of these settlements are safe. Should have built a ghost building there. It's all good. Okay. Overall, the war against Vlad has gone well so far. Yeah, I can confederate them, but don't worry about it. Unless Azazel kills Castalton next turn. Do not frustrate me. Well, okay, so if he does, that's actually a good point. But if he does do that, he'll be standing in this region in Force March. No, no, he won't be able to, because Castelton won't show up until until after his turn. Not at the beginning of my turn, but at the end of his turn. So if he forces marches down here to defend this, then that's actually good. It'll prevent the revolt, but we'll kill him. Okay, let's move on to the next turn. Okay, I said there was going to be an imminent rebellion. 
Let me just see where that was. Ostermark. Oh, okay, because I haven't been capturing too much stuff. Okay, well, don't demolish that then. Because <laughs> there's going to be a revolt there. Uh, we should be able to handle it quite easily with this. Guardian of the land. Stand ready. It's been sitting on too much uh, vampire corruption for too long. So, right, moving on. This is not a no-defeat campaign, by the way, guys. We're just playing it. Just playing a Kislev campaign, that's all it is. Well, they didn't do what I asked them to. <laughs> I wasn't expecting them to. It's just... Just a waste of, um... Allegiance points if they don't do... Oh, Vlad's already back over here. Probably gonna occupy it. Yeah, it's fine. Okay. I need to get Katarin back over there to go and fight Vlad. Oh, he may actually do it. He's going to go and sit in Erengrad. That is a huge... Because he doesn't see this army. He thinks he can beat this. That's a huge mistake. Now, that'll prevent the revolt for one turn. But this is a godsend because this, this allows us to kill him. So, yeah, delays the revolt by one turn. But it's fine. Basic units, we don't have to worry about anything here. We'll just be able to auto-resolve that when they decide to besiege it. Just let it be. Okay, so... Alright, what we need to do here is firstly take out this one. I'll still have enough movement to come and help out over here, but probably by force march, but that's okay. God, look at that auto-resolve. <laughs> Jeez. Your fate lies with your master. So yeah, ambush dance was good for us there. And we can see here, yeah, he gained a fair bit of public order. Double pace. This land is ours. Respect. Oh, we should just be able to auto-resolve this now. That's fine. Time to die. Yeah, but don't occupy it, just sack it. Big bears is rotten carcass. Hmm, it says it's not gonna revolt. Drujina, seize it for Kislev. It might revolt, probably not, because it's still collected income. Commander of the soldiery. Chosen Drujina. Okay, so save us a fair bit of money, and that's good as well. I accept this tribute. Leader of Kislev's. Well, hang on, these ones here. If that could No, it's probably still not gonna make enough difference. I actually don't know which spells are good in, in this one. 
Uh, this guy here would be good to... Let's go down the blue line a bit. I shall cut it with honor. Our armies are starting to get a little bit worn out here. As is my right. Need to get to the Griffin Wood. Mr. Hamtastic became a member for 25 months. Morning Legend. Is an Ice Witch stack on Light War Sled strong enough to be worthwhile? Or is it just Katarin with a strong mount like this? Uh, no, the Ice... I switch stack on with light war sleds is one of my favorite stacks in this game to make. Uh, when I've got a little bit more money, I'll probably do that in this campaign. Let me just sort of get this a bit organized first. Alright, I do not think that Vlad will attack us at Essen if um, if Katarin is there. In fact, I reckon what he'll do is try to run back away. To war! Okay, we can actually reach the Griffin Wood from here. Do that. Will. Oh! I wasn't expecting this one to work. But legend, you lose all the units! That's okay, they're not my units. <laughs> Fine by me. I can just hand it back to um, Karat Kadrin. Go make me another one! Of course, I'm out of allegiance points. Let us uh, begin. Just stay there and maintain the public order for a bit. We'll see what we can do. There's... Yeah, it's, Actually, we might be getting more public order if we get rid of the um, the public order problems first. Maybe don't tax it. Okay, that's good. That's good. Defender of Kislev. The Tsarina. A pale shadow of my palace. Okay. Drusina, stand ready. Thou art unfit to govern me. All right, let's lure Vlad into a trap. So we can see here that he can reach all the way out this way. If I put this guy here, Vlad will probably try to attack him, and that will leave him so vulnerable to attack next turn. I need only the best. My axe thirsts for war. Yeah. Let's see how that goes. Rosina, ready. Money's looking much better. Could still be better. You got quite unlucky with Castalton in my very hard, very hard playthrough. He defeated Throt Azazel and is holding his line against Norska. Yeah, it's just random. These things happen. You just gotta deal with it. These things happen. Not worth starting the campaign over again. Like, we're okay. We're okay. We've suffered a few defeats, but we're okay. Everything's looking fine. Alright, so at Prague, we definitely want to be building this. But I need the province to grow faster, so keep working on that first. We've now got access to another Adamant. We can put a growth one in here, in the Cursed City, to help it grow a bit quicker. Okay, we were working towards this, which we won't be able to do it until um, Castelton is back, but that's okay. So let's get Grom's Telemetry. I tend to get those units. Great orthodoxy provides. Uh, Lime Juice is cool. Did an SGD20 super chat. Hi, Legend. Sorry I haven't been able to catch streams for some time. I hope you're well. I started a Kislev campaign myself. Confederated crazy man, but I feel he's meh without ward save mechanic. Am I missing something? Um, he's not amazing as a legendary lord, but he's got some good stuff in him. He's a good fighter. He's also got something that increases your, your income faction-wide by 10%. Highly recommend you get that. So he can actually make you with just a ton of money just by his mere existence. Uh, he doesn't really have a designated doom stack, um, but he's otherwise a, a pretty good fighter. He's, he's meh, but he's better to have than to not to have. But thanks to the chat. Your legend chat. And, sorry, Yo-Yo Chat and the best in the game, the legend, are we winning? <laughs> can you lose fights in this campaign? Yes, I've already suffered several defeats. So we can see here, I've already suffered several defeats. Um, 
So it's not a no defeat campaign. It's the Empire one that we're doing a no defeat with. Not all of them will be no defeat campaigns. But yeah, once I've lost one battle, don't worry about... Like, I could have sold off Wolvenhoff last turn to Karak Kadrin, but if I had done that, he wouldn't have captured it. He wouldn't have just sacked it. And then I wouldn't have been able to get it back. So I can get it back next turn. I don't imagine that Vlad is going to stay there. Okay, this is what we're probably going to do. He's Okay, if he's a bitch, he'll run away. If he's got balls, which he'll die, he'll um, attack Grigor Ungol. Guardian of the land. Oh damn it! Leadership is my I was duty. In the wrong spot. <laughs> All right, uh, we still got a fair bit of money. Let's see what we can construct. I think Mordheim is probably going to be taken because they'll come over here. So I'm not going to develop that one. Let's get, let's get that going and that going. And I think I'll recruit a few units over here to replace for these guys because they're, they're getting a bit worn out. They're getting a bit worn out, so they need reinforcements. A symbol of my power. Takes four turns to globally recruit that, so I'm not ready to get them just yet. Most of the damage is being done to them. Could globally recruit one as well. Or two. Okay, it's cool. Alright, so... I don't think Castelton is coming back next turn. But at least uh, Azazel army got wrecked. Alright, let's move on. Have you ever accidentally won a campaign with no defeats? Um, no. So, you really have to just try to do a no defeat campaign if you want to do it. Um, the AI is too prone to attacking your undefended settlements in this game. So, if you're just, if you're just playing the game, it is likely that you will suffer defeats in it, just because of how the AI behaves. Unless, of course, you're playing on easy. Um... So, doing a no-defeat campaign on Legendary is not something that you can just accidentally do. You really, you have to consciously do it, I, I believe. Um, Kai did a 5 super chat. Hey, Legend, I can understand that you don't like a Stankius faction, but why don't you like her as a Legendary Lord? Too much effort to go over there and get her. She's already dead. Um, she doesn't really synergize that well with what I'm doing. So, it's just not really convenient. I don't think she provides any global bonuses, so... Her, cam her campaign mechanics are really powerful, but I just don't need her in my faction, given how much effort it would take to go and get her. It's just not worth it. She's too far away. I was trying to say you are the best player I've seen play this game. It's all good. I kind of gathered that's what you were talking about. It's all good. Oh, freaking dwarfs took Eshin. And, of course, Vlad doesn't want to take it back. I remember in the beginning of Warhammer 3, you played like six campaigns in a row with no defeats. You definitely did it by accident. Okay, so, that's a good point. I think the AI is actually getting more aggressive in Warhammer 3, because... If I'm not mistaken, the AI is actually starting to produce more stacks than they used to. Like, when the game first came out, I'm pretty sure Vlad would only build, like, one or two armies and then that's it. Now he's now he's actually building, consolidating... Like, he's building a lot of stacks. Our common cause shall benefit the world. Uh, yep, this looks good. She gives immunity to Chaos Waste Attrition or reduce damage from it, I forgot. Yeah, I, look, I can't remember exactly what a Stankia does. All I remember is that when I was playing with her, I didn't like her. Who knows, I might change my opinion on her at some point, but it's just, in this particular campaign, not convenient whatsoever to go and get her. I'm not going to focus on it, because it's just not a feasible thing to ask to travel all the way to Nagaroth for an unknown location to revive her. I don't know where she where she revives from. 
This is, it's just not reasonable to ask that. Okay, he should be coming back next turn. Let me have a look here. It should say... Yeah, they're no longer taxing it, so they don't have any other way of dropping down the taxes there. Okay. Yeah, I really like how these guys, as soon as they go to war with someone we're at war with, how passive they are. They they wouldn't make any moves towards them. I had to do all the work. Alright, I need, I need you to go back over here to stop that. Champion of the motherland. Are they loyal to the motherland? Okay. And that doesn't look difficult to deal with, as long as they don't switch thingy in there. Hmm, they might actually be able to reach Castle Alexandrian off, I'm not sure. Champion of I've got 14 units versus their 16. Hmm. For the glory of Kislev. Because it says they've got a 25% campaign. If I can reach him, then he can probably reach me. No, he can't because, well, actually, it's just... Hmm. That's a big if. I'm not sure about that. Pride in Kislev keeps us warm. Guardian of the I wonder if I should bring this guy back. Thing is, if I do that, I don't think this is going to revolt. Kislevites feel not the cold. If I bring my guy over to here, Go with caution. it seems as though it'll be less likely for them to come over here because even if they sack this, they'll be dead meat. Noble of the Oblast. We'll see how we go with that. So public order over here is not so bad. Okay. And Vlad, of course, was being a big old no. bitch. They are one people. Champion of but yeah, we're bringing two armies into Sylvania now. Very well. Still got loads of armies over here. I don't think that even if um, Vlad had two armies in this area, there's no military presence there, that he'll be able to do anything about um, Waldenhof. Let that Alexandrinov Lord raid Eringrad instead. That's a, that's a good point. That won't work though, Vlad. because the Lord that's raiding Eringrad right now... Um, he's got an additional 5 public order penalty, so if we switch, I'll only have a minus 3 public order penalty, and they will find some way to, um, to not cause a revolt. So it has to be him. I guess what I could do, this might work. Defender of Kislev. I might be able to Leader grab... Of Kislev's no, 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 no. I don't want to grab those units. Oh, maybe the I do. Because, yeah, that... They don't need to be in the... the thing. In Kislev, snow is a welcome ally. Light the heart fire! Yeah, because that's all I need. I'm still causing the same amount of public order penalty. He's not going to be able to reach this guy. Commander I could just run back if he does. My okay, that actually works. And that way we're actually replenishing. Good. <laughs> Excuse me. Good, good, good. Okay, we need more money. How are we going over here? They're mostly contained for now. If we want to get Eshin from them, I'm going to have to make a trade. Because that's better than Waldenhof. But let me just see if we'll make that trade. So Eschen for Waldenhof. No, that won't do it. Okay. Summon me if you dare. 
Uh, I still think Mordheim is going to get attacked. So let's just save up the growth for now. This over here doesn't seem dangerous. We've got 17 units in here. We should be able to just order to resolve that because the units in here are pretty good. Yep, get that money coming in. Nice. Okay, that'll have to do this turn. Alright, what do we got going on here? Well, he's actually gaining ground, so that's interesting. Hey, look, Wintertooth actually made their way over here. Alright, let's move on. One left. My rule grows absolute. Yeah. You're not taxing Cockland, is there a reason for that? Uh yeah, I turned it off when I first ru uh, when it was first ruined dwelled it because it wasn't making any tax money, and then I forgot about it. So thanks for reminding me, I need to turn the taxes back on. What's the hardest campaign in the game right now? Mm, I don't know. Chat, what do you think is the hardest campaign in the game right now? I just don't play every single campaign, so I don't know which is the hardest. Vampires 1. Ho I hope they keep pushing east. Uh, sorry, west, not east. Scrag? No, definitely not Scrag. Most people are saying Kugath. Kugath is the hardest. Most people are saying that. I'd probably agree with that, Kugath. Kugath isn't hard, just slow. Well, what what campaign would you say then is hard? If not Kugath. Alright, they should have revolted, but I didn't see anything. Scarbrand? No. Hey, lazy boy gamer, how's it going, dude? Whack has Daniel, lol, and boring. Okay, he's back, and we're raiding him. Okay, we've brought back Castalton. Great success. Noble of the Oblast. What do you ask of the Supreme Patriarch? They will be... Alright, he's back. Alright, if I gave him a settlement, what let's say Castle Alexandrinov. The Supreme Patriarch. I mean, that's, that's a good settlement, but I'll just get it back later. It's making Guardian us a fair bit of money. God, these guys here did not do anything against them. I wanted them to bring their armies around over here. Uh, we could send these armies up to attack the Tower of Crack before they start building up more forces. That could be good. Defender of Kislev. Let us advance. If I've seen any more than this, they'll probably run away. Fight for Mother Kislev! Yeah, it's fine. You will fall. I find that with these guys here, when they die, just just place them. Cause so easy. What are your miserable life's worth? Alright, I don't have a siege attacker. So could I globally recruit a frost what no, I got rid of the frost one thing, didn't I? Champion of the motherland. Rosina, ready. Could get that. 
The noble choice. All right, let's get commander of the soldiers. Let's get you over to here. Guardian of the land. Transfer the units the there. Onwards. Then tell him to go. Thank you very much for your assistance. Chosen Drusina. Follow me into the wild. Alright, transfer. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Transfer three units into this army, so. Doesn't really matter. Three Glory units. Be to the then I'll recruit two Glory units this turn of, of those. Leave one unit available for. Actually, make it, make it one. Because this guy's going to attach. And then I'll um I'll get the regiment of renown so we've got siege attacker because they don't have any other way of doing that. Um, Castle Alexandrinov, I think I'll build a military building here and I'll sell it to him in exchange for a military alliance and make him go to war with these guys out here so that he can actually start invading this area and we'll start feeding him territory in Norska. Uh, Fernando did a five year super chat. Any chance for a Helmand Gorse campaign to learn the techniques for a zombie horde full cheese? It can be amazing techniques. That you can pull out. Um, it's not on my to-do list, to be honest. But thanks for the super chat. Rosina, ready. Okay, Katarin can actually reach Drakenhof. But it looks like Vlad has already chickened out. Yeah, Vlad's in full retreat, which... This is pretty common from the AI. Common the levels of being a bitch. Me. I don't think we're going to get Eshin out of them unless I sell them. I'm not selling them Karakongo for that. Forget that. Alright, well, do that. They'll probably have to fight this manually. Oh, hang on. Hang on. What if, because like if we do, this would be very easy for Katarin to destroy, but we're looking at like a 40 minute battle. I think Vlad has only got his one army, so I think we can justify ordering that, because it'll save time. Because no, nobody likes sieges. Especially watching me cheese it for 20 odd minutes. Or 40 minutes. Kislev Unite is pretty good, let's work towards that. Strike them down! Kislev endures! Yeah, that's fine, I can just replace them straight away. My frozen kingdom expands. Elegy, on the last stream you mentioned Eltharion was the easiest to hit the gold limit stack. Overflow by turn 60. What makes it so easy for him? Um, basically compound interest. Um, all night mong. Uh, subscribe with Prime. Thanks dude. I feel like that's a slur. Um, I'm not going to get in trouble for reading out somebody's uh, subscription, right? <laughs> ah, did you hear Legend of Total War? He called someone um, the M-word. Everything's a bloody slur these days. Alright, we have really got Vlad on the run here now. Hmm. Don't forget Hockland taxes. Thank you, dude. You're right. Missing out on 444 gold. It's unacceptable. Have you noticed that Auto Resolve always nukes Patriarch's HP? Oh no, okay, so what it does is it is it takes out units' health that are considered melee troops. So these guys are both considered melee, but these are considered missiles, so it prioritizes hitting them first. Uh, this is sometimes why it's best to go, like, if, you, if you're going to make an Auto Resolve stack, to just make all melee infantry, or all archers, so that it just bypasses that phase in the Auto Resolve. So yeah, it's just, uh, it's just how the Auto Resolve calculates things. 
Sorry, Ostermark, you're not coming back. You failed. That's your fault. Okay, we shouldn't need that now. I don't imagine that'll have another revolt. So yeah, if I bring this guy over here, he can besiege Castle Templehof, but without a siege attacker, it's kind of pointless. He could come over here and defend Mordheim, but if they send enough force up this way, he won't be able to do much. For the wisdom of the land. Oh, I know. I am the greatest ally! <laughs> Oh, I'm the greatest ally. Uh, don't bother. I don't know if I'm going to hold that. Alright. Money's looking much better. That's good to see. It is mine by right. Good. This let's is triumphant. Yeah, it's pretty good. Might as well, why not? The keys of midwinter is upon us. Alright, we'll try to hold on to Mordheim now. See how that goes. And I'm out of cash. Alright, let's have a look here. So this one we want... That could be useful. This is good territory for us because of the iron, and it's green territory. We're going to deal with Vlad first. Vlad is pretty close to wanting peace. Mistress of ice. And then we go straight to Templehof. What's going on with this? Oh, I'd love to borrow it. Okay, where's Vlad? Alright, so Vlad is currently... He's... Okay, he's near Templehof. Okay. Alright, let's move on. To war. Those who hit keys, true keys, lives slaughter. Yeah, consider it them. Is Chaos Warrior's technology tree fixed already? Uh, no. Nice, he came in there and smashed up. Vlad got wrecked. Hopefully Vlad takes him out. Fuck the dwarfs. Oh, he got to move again? Nah. No. Oh, well. <laughs> Legend, why not confederate Ropsman clan? Uh, because if I did that, I would gain a little bit of money and then immediately get declared war on by the disciples of Hashut. Immediately. And then I would just end up losing it all. So creating a buffer zone over there reduces the likelihood of them declaring war on us. Just because we don't share that much of a border. Or as much of a border. Also, they're better as an ally. That way, if they declare war on me, I drag those guys into it. So it's kind of like a... Um... Um, it is less incentive for Astrogoth to declare war on me. Because... 
all of that territory would not sustain a single army. It just wouldn't be worth it. Basically, confederating them would weaken our campaign. We can confederate them whenever we want. So wait until the right time. Wait until we're on the attack on Astrogoth, which is not right now. Alright, they are coming at us hot here. Alright, he could... He could attack Waldenhof, but who cares? Who cares if he does that? Alright, so I want you to get this one, because we need a siege attacker, and I'm pretty sure it's the only one here that is a siege attacker, yeah. I need only the best! Does your country... I must! Alright, so... Hang on, hang on, hang on. As is my right. Transfer one unit into this one. Defender of Kislev. To battle! Looks like we'll be able to auto resolve this easily enough. Bring it in two full stacks. Champion of the Motherland. Victory Arc! Come help me! Kislevites! Good. Good. Okay. Let's loot and occupy it because we need money. Now, I think this would be good territory to feed over to the um, Orthodoxy. I can't just sell him straight to that region, I think. No, I can't. So I think I can sell him Castle Alexandrinov and then this settlement, but I have to sell him Joyshenk as well. That's not a big deal. And that way it allows us to feed territory over to him. So, or, or just get him to pri- Hang on, he's not even at war with that stuff yet. Let's have a look. So if I, if I give him Castle Alexandrinov, we can get that military lance back. Can I also get him to go to war with the Ecstatic Legion? Yeah, no military lance with that. But yeah, he'll quickly build up an army and start invading this area. And that way, when we confederate him, he's essentially conquering for us. Because we're not too far off from doing that. So we've re-established him, yeah. I mean, we're not even half the number of supporters, but it sort of builds up quickly over time as you build more, um... Just do more stuff. Okay, and then we've got the Tower of Crack. It's not that bad to hold on to it. I can give it to him. Let me just check. It's not worth anything at the moment. So, if I build a military building, and that, I should be able to sell it to him, and that way, just let him deal with it, not my problem anymore. And that way we can take these guys, and now it's time to fight against Astrogoth, because we're probably going to have to. Did you see Mercy's eight settlements in five turns as Katarin? No, I haven't seen that. Respect my position. Okay, then... Then... Champion of the Motherland. Could you buy Fort Stronghold back? Unlikely. Like, what am I gonna... I'm gonna have to trade him another settlement for it. I mean, we don't have any other enemies on the north here. We, we've sort of dealt with the um, with Azazel and his vassal. Conquering up this way is not that valuable. However, conquering down this way is pretty damn valuable. And as someone was saying before, if we conquer all this stuff down this way, then we can confederate these guys because it's no longer a buffer state. Leader of Kislev's warriors. Just uh, seems to make more sense. Okay, get rid of that now. Your destiny rests on the axe edge. Okay, now over here. It suits my purposes. We need to be marching on Tempelhof. Champion of Kislev. 
If I force march this guy to Waldenhof, what they could probably do is besiege with this army and maybe even force march with Vlad all the way over here. Because they'll just ignore this dude. So what I want to do is just march up here in encamp stance. And instead what they might do is attack Katarin. Seems unlikely, but we'll see. If I just stand right here, I'll be able to reinforce at Tempelhof. And it will deter them from attacking Waldenhof, because I won't be able to get away. Um, Aja IV did a $5 super chat. Hey Legion, been a while since I played. Notice that you're not recruiting boyars in favor of new generic lord. Is there any reason to build them now? Boyars? No. There's, there's no reason to get them. Apart from, they have a bear. That's about it. But these other lords are superior in pretty much every way. Yeah, Boyarza just have a little bit extra melee capabilities. And I really do mean a little bit. It's, it is not worth getting them. The Druzina is a far more interesting lord. Way more tactical. Way more strategic as well. A lot more that you can do with them. Alright, let's switch that over to money. Because I need more money. If we want to get those Ice Guard stacks, we need money. Andrew... Andrew Matthews did a two pound super chat. Recruit a lord to recruit. Recruit a lord to recruit a siege attacker. I can't recruit a, a siege attacker in one turn yet. We're not at that stage. So that wouldn't work. Yeah, we need to get this to tier five. Then we can recruit little groms in one turn. Oh, if we also research orthodoxy blessed, which I should probably prioritize as well. Maybe she do that first. Uh, we'll see. When I switch Lord? Mm, not yet. Soon. Not yet. Yeah, don't upgrade oh, uh, that one. It's not going to... Probably, possibly going to get sacked. Alright, we'll go with gold and more money. So what I think we'll do is occupy Templehof, then bring this one over here to hold the settlement, then bring Katarin around to Schwarzhafen. Hit them around this way. Equipment check. I'll be able to borrow this army next turn. Mm. Best go for Vlad, he's the one we're most likely to fight, even though it's not as much allegiance points. Okay, and let's move on. Oh, hang on. Um. Yes. No evil. Nothing. Hey, let's turn to war. Recruiting a lord increases your upkeep, but does disbanding the lord remove the penalty? Yes. Yes, it does. <laughs> uh, I wonder if they'd make the changes to boyars in the future to keep them viable. Would what would it take though? From your strategic point of view, what would make them recruitable now? Okay. So, when you think about Druzinas, they decrease the upkeep cost of, of Kossars. They have extra replenishment. They've got extra ammunition replenishment. They can provide regeneration for the entire army, which, again, I think that's going to get nerfed. Um, you know, they're a hybrid lord that is able to shoot as well as go into melee. And on horseback, they fire while moving. On foot, they don't, but on horseback, they do. Um, so in order for boyars to be considered as good as Druzinas, I think they need to either give them another mount, something higher tier than... Um, higher tier than a bear, something... Not, not a... Not a... Um, an ice drake thing, frost worm, something else. They would also need to put in their skill line a boost to some type of unit. Maybe armored cossars, be like reduced reduced upkeep cost or extra melee defense for armored cossars. Something like that. Because right now, they are just a strong melee character. So there's no reason to get them. Creative Assembly does this thing where they they don't balance all the lords equally throughout a faction it's like there's a clear and obvious choice that's better in every single scenario so why would you ever get the other one 
it's like with Empire uh, Lords now. Why would you? The only advantage they have is that they get a Griffin mount. Pff, whatever, who cares? Yeah, Elemental Bear mount, mm, maybe. Uh, Jacob Erickson did a twenty dollars super chat. Love you, Legend. Sweet beard. Hope you are well. I'm well, thanks. Thank you for the super chat. Um, Hocus Malocus is raiding with a party of four. Thanks, dude. Appreciate appreciate you guys showing up. Welcome. Boyars on little Grom's mounts, yeah, it's something, something. But there's there's no incentive to recruit any of them at the moment. I am they don't have any advantage at all. All right, time to go to war with Astrogoth. Two armies here should be able to handle it. Uh, we want to make sure that when we do attack him, we hit him as hard as possible. So hitting this one right now, not a big deal. Especially considering they'll counter-attack us. Okay, I wanted to give him the Tower of Crack. And get that military alliance. And I can get him to go to war with... That doesn't matter. Just have him focus on one enemy at a time. Basically, Castalton is now my vassal. And you can see here, he's recruiting yes, dog said. shit. <laughs> That's fine, whatever. Since he's a major faction, he should outpace these guys. Alright, so what we want to do is... Follow me to glory. Oh, this is more forces. Why? Oh my god, why are they hanging around here? I, I got them to go to war over there, and then they just hang around at my border, these fucking bastards. Pride in Kislev keeps us warm. Hapru! Guardian of the land. Chosen Drusina. Alright, maybe just come back over here and we'll wait for a good opportunity. Actually, no, no, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't stand Noble inside the settlement. Wait for a good opportunity to strike, because if I do it right now, that's I don't think that's gonna be good. A stiff drink will warm us, yes? Okay, Tower of Crack. The greater good must be served. And military alliance, and you know, not a small amount of money. We are what? Do you think you could confed Castalton if you brought him back after winning the supporter race? I don't know. I've never tried that. Sorry. What I could do is confederate these guys and use their shit armies to go and attack out this way. Boyars are right. Looks like they've got trashy units. I'll be able to afford it. Leave now if you are prone to time wasting. Yeah, alright. Alright, since we're gonna go to war now, here we go. Alright, hold on. Yeah, I got the money. Okay. Ooh, where'd you get those from? Ooh. I switch. Ooh, what are you? Mm, you crap. Ooh. Garbage. That can stay. That can go. Uh, yeah, actually, that can stay. That can go and never build that building. That would normally, I would not want to recruit that. However, now might actually be a good time for light war sleds. So what I want to do, what I want to do is get a saved character. Let me see here. We got, yeah, there we go. Let's get you in there. And we're going to chuck Overcome your exhaustion. this one in there. All right, what do we got in here? Mm, probably not. I've got some saved. This is my mm, Nope. Got anything good? Strongholder is good for fighting in your own territory. Vanguard, you fired. Do they hunger for undeserved? Determined, you fired. 
Only the most refined may serve. I see. All right, transfer the other sleds in there. And transfer these Sister units in here. Ice. Never hmm, She's been good at growing the province. Ice witch. Alright. So with the frost maidens, I'm over my limit, so I gotta get rid of some of them. So this frost maiden device, hang on, let me try the other ones. So this one here, I don't need her, she can go. And this one here, I think this one was better swords. Yeah. Kind of don't want to get rid of her right now. I usually like to put a few in. Okay, how many units can we recruit? Okay, we also need to switch up the... Yep, gonna get that going so that we can recruit these quicker. All right, all right, all right, all right. So, 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 so. This guy's also a boyar. Yuck. Get rid of him. Yeah, so looking at the boyar skill tree, he's just like, he's got a melee line. Um, doesn't have anything to boost any units. He's got basically generic, generic, generic. There's just nothing great about him. He does get heroic resilience, which the other guy doesn't have, but I just don't see these guys as being anything other than basic now. The keys of Midway. The ice so we're goes. making all right money from here. Frost Weaver. All right, well, this one needs to be taken out of the settlement, and this one, just get rid of her for now. So that saves on a bit of money, so that's good. Uh, can't get artillery from here. He's not a siege attacker. But that doesn't mean we can't just... Uh, actually, he's going to have a hard time besieging that. It's a tier 5. And these units are not good at it. I might just be able to order us over, though. Alright, get rid of this one. And let's get two of my saved... I know I've got two saved ones in here somewhere. That have, yeah, reduced upkeep for sleds. Of the I think I can get two. Yeah, there's another one here. Yep. Frost so those will reduce it by an additional 60%. Frost good, good, good. By blood. Because, yeah, getting Uzkalak, really good settlement for us because it's got iron. Alright. Well, if we're going to go to war with Astrogoth, we need to make sure that we've uh, we've got enough money to handle it. So, let's finish up conquering Vlad. I could declare war on Sterland because I don't have any treaties with them. It's good territory for us. Champion of the motherland, if it honors Ursul. Mm. I know there's two armies here, so if I order resolve this, I'm doing myself a disservice. Leadership is my duty. What I hang on, what level is the settlement? Okay, it's current level three, which means I'll occupy at level two. If I sack an occupier, oh, I won't be able to do that. Take my way. Um, hmm, how can I get you? So what are you doing? You, you're gonna come over here, raise a whole bunch of dead and attack that? Probably. We are the land, and the land is ours. Thou shalt treat me! I'll turn your blood to ice. Other thing I could do is swing around this way and go to Schwarzhafen, but then again, I'm just delaying the inevitable over here. Why is iron good? Oh, okay, so every iron resource can reduce your global upkeep cost by 3%. It might not seem like much, but it's all stacks, so it can save you quite a lot of money in the long run. Hmm. 
Because, yeah, I know that there's another army in here. How strong is Vlad compared to me? Not very strong at all. I also want to smash Zafbar up. Hmm. All in due time. Are they at war with Vlad? Let me see if I can get them to go to with Vlad. If I give them 10 grand, no thanks. Mistress of Ice. I guess if I occupy this, uh, fight it manually and occupy it, it should be fine. And I'll bring this one down to Drakenhof. Because I won't need it to help out here. It's be an easy fight, but I probably will need to fight it manually. Then again, it says decisive victory with low casualties, so... <laughs> Whatever. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. I'm sure it'll be fine, right? Let Vlad take action. He won't, though. He won't. Now he'll prioritize my settlements over them. There's massive anti-player bias. He won't go after them. So that might bite me in the ass. Maybe. I guess we'll see. Champion of Kislev. That being said, Vlad is full of shit. And if he did launch the attack here, I would death frost the crap out of him with a decent amount of wins. I don't think he would succeed. So what we could also do is get some of these followers that we that we grabbed. So a hedge wizard. You know, that might be an extra death frost that we can use. Because he's actually quite vulnerable to it. So even if he does besiege it, I reckon we'll we'll still whoop his ass. And now Waldenhof is reasonably safe. This army here is concerning me, so what I'm going to do is recruit a small army here to counter it. Come, sing, dance, and drink. This gift is mine alone. That should be enough, depending on where, of course, he decides to go after. Okay. But here, if Vlad stays around over here, I'll attack him. But we have to keep an eye on that over the end turn, because this army might remain in ambush tents. Actually, upgrade Essen. I don't think we're going to lose that. Yep, that should be fine. Joy Shink's a bit safer than that. Alright, so I think in the next turn or so we'll be declaring war on Astrogoth. We just need to make sure that everybody's in position so that we can really hit him hard. With these kind of aggressive wars, you want to sucker punch them as hard as possible. Not just a capture a minor settlement, but destroy all their armies in the very beginning of the war. Um, one, might call it, one might call it lightning warfare. Hey, if it works. <laughs> Champion of the Motherland. Guardian of the land. I accept this tribute. Okay, and... So this, this army here is really good for field battles, but it's absolute dog shit at dealing with sieges. We don't want it dealing with that. But it should be pretty good coming up this way, fighting all of these ones. Even minor settlement battles is fine, but walls can't handle it. So that's what this guy here needs to deal with. Alright, let's move on. No money left.
Second World War reference much these days? Well, the problem is, is that the the mindset of the Blitzkrieg is kind of what I go with with this, because the, the, the thought of it is to knock the enemy out so quickly that they, they basically have no chance to counterattack, and that they're... Basically, you hit them so hard, so fast, that they that they're just falling back straight away and that all they can do is run back to their capital. Um, and that's basically what I do when I go up against a big faction. Um, you want to hit them, like catch catch them with their pants down and just punch right through their friggin' center, right through their lines. <laughs> okay, they're gonna hold their ground there, that's good. Good, they've started attacking the Golden Order, or the Golden Order attacked them. It would be nice if they would actually... See, this is what the AI does. It doesn't occupy other AI settlements, they just sack it. This is why I didn't think they were ever going to take Eshin away. Is early Prague occupation via wall and Robsman worth the devotion penalty? Absolutely not. No, don't do that. No, I intend to attack you as soon as I'm done with them. Is Boris relatively safe? He's not going to die. He's, he seems to be hanging on. Because, yeah, if they're, like, hanging around here, just not sure what's going on, and then you, let's just say you find some way to just smash these guys straight away. And just just get them on the run immediately. Because this looks like pretty much all of their forces. The only problem is I'm not sure if my guys can handle that. It is a lot. Subjugators! How much do they hate me at the moment? They considered me their main threat and they're getting really unfriendly. The thing is, if I had this army over here, that'd be really handy. Also, I haven't researched any of the techs that benefit them. There's so many techs that benefit them. You got Siege Mentality over here, and then I think they've got Arabian Fire over here. So you can end up getting them 30% extra ammunition that way. And then in the skill line over here, you've got an additional 20%, so 50% ammo, and then over here, you've got another 20%. So you can get them 70% extra ammo, which is kind of ridiculous. And then, of course, on top of that, you can make them pretty much free upkeep. So look at that, 85 upkeep. I just need one more of them, which I'll naturally need to, the ice court for for that. Unless I've got another one left over. I don't think so. I think I had two saved. Oh, okay, it's really high level. Yeah, most of this is just Patriarchs. The Alright, they got two armies over here. They probably just don't think I'm going to launch the attack. There's nothing at Schwarzhafen, so we should go for that. Make sure we're... Respect my okay, good. We've stripped Follow away enough of the corruption now that I don't need to go in in camp stance. We've got 130 wins of magic out of 133. That's pretty good. We should be able to knock Vlad out really quickly with that. He'll probably wait for his reinforcements if I strike there. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. <laughs> I'm gonna do it. Yeah, we can't do that. Uh, oh shit! Oh, oh shit! That's a lot of units. That's okay. He'll be dead before they all come in. What's the cooldown on Death Frost now? It should be like next to none. Five second cooldown. Yeah, because last time we only had one point put into this, and it was like a fifteen second cooldown. So that means I'll be able to spam the spell quicker, and it'll be cheaper, and I've got more wounds of magic. Fuck Vlad, I got this. Uh, Kornsberg, subscribe with Prime. Thanks, dude. Appreciate that. 
It's a good strat. Works every, almost every time. Yeah, the, the downside to being that aggressive is sometimes you can overextend yourself. So you got to make sure you're ready for it as soon as you do it. But if you spend too much time preparing on the front line, they kind of catch wind of it and declare war on you first. Almost a Pyrrhic victory. Well, the problem with this, is if I had auto-resolved it, they will recover enough force to make it so that I probably won't win the next fight. Now, that's a pretty damn long distance. I reckon. This is actually one of the bigger maps, I think. Because his army is pretty slow, that we'll be able to kill Vlad before he arrives at our front line. That's what I think. Nice high ground over here. Uh, corner camping. Yes, for the people. We have to get started on this immediately. Oh fuck, he used the Von Karstein ring. That's okay, luckily the cooldown's really quick. That being said, we also don't have that much Winds of Magic generation. Just keep doing it, because he's going to use up all of his regen anyway. He just, just has too much. So we've already done 12,000 damage, yep. Smash them as quickly as possible. It's going to start playing vampire music yes. real bloody soon. But if we can keep Vlad back, I think that's a big deal. Come on, keep pushing through. You are just ripping them to shreds over here. It's actually good that he's casting Winds of Magic on himself. Because like I said, he will always use up his regen. Just regens too quickly. Can't dish out damage quickly enough. But he doesn't have Isabella in the army, so he doesn't get unlimited regen. We are wrecking his freaking army. Now it'll start playing Vampire Count music, I think. Lord. Keep focusing on Vlad. Probably seeing that line saying he's reached his regen cap soon. You guys need to get back a little bit. Hmm, it's not playing vampire cap music. That's a good sign. Katarin's damage output so far, really good. Keep smashing blood. Is Katarin one woman doomstack? Uh, yes, as long as the army is entirely <laughs> uh, melee infantry. Or entirely infantry. If she goes up against monsters, she's not good at it. Luckily, most of this army here is infantry. But yeah, she's not good at dealing with uh, single entities or monsters.
Yep, even charges through cavalry, no problem. But yeah, big monsters, not so good. Just nine wins of magic. Good, 50,000 in damage. So I got plenty of wins reserved, but need to access them now. It's good to see that he's miscasting. We don't want to go into melee with him because that will even like go near him me melee. Because that will trigger him to use the Von Karstein ring. That's what he's programmed to do. 50,000 in damage and climbing. Alright, I reckon this one here we'll see his Regen camp reached. Now, if I can manage to wipe out a unit, there's a possibility that they'll actually go back and wait for their reinforcements to come in, because there's still more to come in. Okay, we didn't see his regen cap yet. Definitely want Vlad to hang around the back here. Seventy thousand in climbing. They've still got a long way to go. Where'd Vlad go? There he is. Maybe this one here will be the one. Also got this. Let's use it. Still not seeing his regen cap. He doesn't have Isabella. Oh, there, there it is. There's his regen cap. Okay, that's good. Maybe even move back a little bit more. I don't like this position that much. Okay, charging down the hill here should be awesome for Katarin. Oh man, look at all this. You may think that it'd be good to use Heart of Winter, but Vlad's the one we need to focus on. Oh my god. Come on, keep charging. Good. Enemy reinforcements approaching. How are we going? Okay, Vlad is starting to look a bit damaged. That's good. Okay, they're not waiting around for their reinforcements. Sometimes they'll go back to regroup with them, but not this time. Okay, 
They're focusing just all on that one flank there. Which is good. Makes it easier to destroy them. Wanted to hold back as many of them as possible. But this is going pretty well so far. Pretty well. There's just so many of them, that's all. Don't bother about fireball, it's not going to use it properly. We've got plenty of wins. Definitely enough to kill him, I think. Let's keep them hidden for now. Alright, these ones here, they are not shooting very well. Bit. Okay, they discovered him. He's back. Try to shoot the back line over here because they they seem to be obstructed. They're just not shooting very well. I'll use the snow leopard to try to take out the black coach. Yeah, they're much better at shooting over this way. Can't really do much with that unit right now. It's not good in this situation. We're good at taking out those civilian cross... Uh, yeah, sorry, civilian. Uh, Sylvanian crossbowmen. What are you doing? Uh, C. Carlot did a five pounds of chat. So grateful for the, for the stream to distract me as I recover from an operation of my ankle ligaments. Uh, keep up the good work, Legend. It's appreciated. No, is it? I appreciate that super chat. Thank you very much. Sorry to hear that you're recovering from a um, injury. Okay, they're starting to break through our front a little bit. something. But Vlad is almost gone. And you can see how good these Cossars are at holding... Oh, sorry, the uh, Kistelite Warriors are at holding the bloody line. I mean, it's just skeletons and stuff, but they're doing a good job. So close to death. Alright, looks like he's actually. Is he crumbling? Right, one more hit. Vlad's out of here. Don't worry about the death frost. Use this now. Come on, one more hit. You got him. One more hit. Get him. Yeah, yeah, you can fight that, that's fine. 
Alright, good. Vlad going is gonna cause them all to start crumbling now. against trash units. These are trash units though. And what are these elite units? Yes! It is my freaking 170,000 damage done with with Katarin. Freaking lawnmower back and forth. Meanwhile, this guy here can't even beat a bunch of bats. Okay, there we go. There's the army losses. Nice early army losses there. Not too much damage. Way better than auto resolve. Way, way, way better. Yeah, I don't like this one here. Get away. Alex Brockmain became a member for 22 months. So many, so sorry. So any bets on how many units will be revived? Um, I'd say maybe about 15. Full health Katarin. Yeah, it says it says her max health is eight eight four two, but nope. Legend, why are Cossars with Spears C tier? Um, I did not do that. I didn't put Cossars with Spears. Oh, right, 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 right. Sorry, Cossars, um, what? Did you not listen to the video? I explained it. <laughs> They're redundant units now. What's the point of the Cossars with Spears? They've been made completely redundant. It's not like they're bad units, but they're completely redundant. They don't have any convenience. Like, why would you get a Kossar with Spear that has 90 models when you can get, and also requires a military building, when you can get a Kislevite Warrior, which has better anti-large, better holding power, without a military building? There's just no, there's no real point to them anymore. Like, get them if you want, but like, what for? So one, two, three, four, five, six. At least that's gone. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. 15 units! Ah! Who guessed correctly? Uh, that's worth a few super chats, I think. No, I'm just kidding. Um, the next battle should be easy. Since Vlad is not back. Good. We attack this. This one reinforces. And we got the mission with them. That's great. Let's see if there's more missions. Reichland wants me to attack... Okay, let's do that. I refuse. I could probably order resolve this. Yep. Victory by blade and frost. All right, that is the effective end of Vlad. He is finished. He doesn't have any more territory except for Sylvania. Sorry, except for Schwarzhafen. And I'm going to get that Rotate next turn. If I don't get that, they will. They'll probably get that before I get there. Van Horseman Speculum, that's a good item. Really good item, I should put that on you. Oh, but you've... No, wait, wait, that's a... um, That's a... Enchanted item, isn't it? Where is it? There it is. I reckon that should be a blue item. Because that is a good item. That is really good. I like that one. Yeah, he's got a lot of debuffing stuff there. That's good. 
Yeah, so Vlad only has this settlement left. And then what we do with Katarin is... They might occupy Nidling. Oh, no, there's no way. Can now borrow this army. Is there Zinch corruption here? Yeah, okay, the changeling is still at large. <laughs> so... Oh my god, look how many armies they've got. Yeah, I definitely want to go after Zafbard, because this is just good territory. They don't have any allies, do they? Could you break your trade agreements with them? No, if they don't hate me enough. I reckon we send Katarin to Zofbar, because that'll be... Oh, there's minus some of the battles there. This guy should go to Karak Dramar. Alright, well that's good. That's good. This one just needs to make sure that army doesn't come over this way. But Vlad is... out of here. Okay. Hmm, what are we going to do about this stuff here? Oh yeah. This cements my power. Frost Maiden. Okay, we get another Adaman. Money ones. Alright, go with the growth one for... Ostmark. Yep. Lord of all. Problem here is no artillery. And if I wanted to recruit it, it would take four turns. Three turns now. Okay. Because, yeah, otherwise that's going to be very difficult to win. Mm. I'm going to need to do it. Can maybe launch the attack before then, but we're still not quite ready. Seek out Kislev's foes. That's a good settlement. And that'll be a minus settlement battle. Okay, that's fine. Frozen glory. Time to march. Yeah, that shouldn't be there, but just keep it there for the time being. It's fine. I uh, usually don't put those there. Then again, we can, can stay for now. Stand ready. Really want to sucker punch them right here. Leader of Kislev's warriors. How do you rank ice and tempest magic? I think ice magic is better than tempest. Tempest magic is shit. It's really quite terrible. Um, ice magic, I've warmed up a little bit to it. Warmed up to it. But it is still... They're not great laws of magic. They do synergize quite well with Kislev. But that's about it. I, I don't think that they're great laws of magic. It's also a minor settlement battle. The noble choice. Drujina. Commander of the soldiery. Okay, let's make a little switchy poo. No sense in having like that. Defender of Kislev. Orson bring us strength. Wins. Yeah, still just Thank waiting for a good opportunity. Chosen a good opportunity here, because um, leader of Kislev's warriors. Not seeing a good good opportunity to attack Come them right this very second. Yeah. I think that they're being quite reluctant to attack us as well. That's okay. Preparations are being made. Finances went downhill a little bit. That's okay. We're gaining assets at a pretty quick rate. And with Vlad out of the picture, that will allow us to redirect our forces. I could grab this army. And... Could grab this army. I don't want to be anywhere near the bloody changeling. Because, yeah, I got 100 influence. 
allegiance, whatever. I'm gonna grab it. Oh, damn it! Is where it is. Sent me in the wrong direction and with no movement. Oh well. But yeah, I want to bring these guys over here so we can smash Zafbar. Noble of the Oblast. This guy will be disbanded soon. All right. Let's see what else we can do. Probably not much. Still, life wizard from Empire Faction, maybe. Uh, good luck on finding one. They very rarely recruit a life wizard. Anad. All right, Carrick Hearn has also got iron, so maybe I'll hold off on that. Sterland, I was going to attack as well, so no. <laughs> Urson Revivalists, okay, let's get that. Who knows, we might actually get that confederation by the end of the day. We keep this up. Okay, Vlad wants peace, I don't see any reason to give him any. Yeah, I think we'll get there before him. Alright, we're definitely in a good swing of things now. Okay, let's move on. The Boca Palace's doors are open to you. <laughs> no. <laughs> Hell no. Karakirn settled in the forest. Well, that just means that their homeland is not defended very well. Now, if we do want to take out Karakirn, we got to hurry, because usually they get confederated by Clan Angrind. Although Clan Angrind doesn't seem to have progressed out this way just yet, so I wouldn't worry about that so much. Is Warhammer 3 worth getting now, or should I just play Warhammer 2? Got all Warhammer 2 DLCs. It's really a decision that you have to make for yourself. Um, Warhammer 3 is in an... It, it is improving. It's definitely improving. It's not perfect. It's got issues. Um, Warhammer 2 is probably still more challenging of a game than Warhammer 3. The AI is frustrating to play against, but not necessarily difficult to fight. They love going after your minor settlements, and that's about it. They won't fight you. consolidated armies against your, your full stacks. Um, very cowardly AI. So... I'd say there's definitely enjoyment to be had. But it's something that you have to make up your own mind about it. I can neither recommend nor not recommend this game in its current state. It's just, you gotta decide these things for yourself. See, look what I'm talking about. The AI just loves to go after undefended minor settlements, sack them, so they don't build massive empires. With some exceptions, it's getting better. It is getting better. I gotta give it some credit there. It is getting better. I bet if you don't kill Vlad now, he would recover and kill AI. Seems unlikely. I mean, he's really out of it. Did they peace out with Varg? Well, shit. Nordland pieced out with Varg, the bastards. Well, I'm going to have to deal with that. Well, it's a good thing I raised, uh, borrowed this army. I'm probably not going to be able to make it... Yeah, what happened here? They did, they fucking pieced out... Oh, hang on, hang on, hang on, I can piece out with them too. By Sigma's will, come in peace. Alright, I'm not interested in Winter dealing with Varg right now, so just go away. That'll give me a few turns to deal with it. Okay, I think we're getting... Oh, we need to get 15 grand and then we'll have access to thingy. So, Vlad has a full stack, of course.
Alright, just move in and camp stance down this way. Because I think next turn I'm going to strike at the moot. Or maybe even this turn. Maybe. Um, it's that right guy did a photo subject. So this has been asked before, but tips on what to do when overcast spells and what to do, what not to do. <sighs> the whole point of it being a strategy game is that you have to make decisions based on the situation. So you have to look at the effects of every overcasted spell and judge, is it worth doing? Most of the time, most overcasted spells are not worth doing. There is a rare, rare number of situations where it's always good to overcast, and then each time it's just situational. I, I can't possibly go through over all and list every time that it is worth doing it, with every single spell. It's just, it's just not possible. It's just, there's too many scenarios to go through. Um, just look at the effects and decide whether or not it's worth it for you. Because you have to take into con consideration that you might miscast as well. It's not like always overcast is better. It's not. It's there's always a risk involved with it. But you have to you have to make these decisions for yourself. For the glory of Kislev. Like what am I supposed to say in that situation? With that question. I can't I can't possibly answer that. I appreciate the super chat, but I, it's just I feel bad for you because I can't answer it. Drusina stand ready. Fight for Kislev. Where can I review the effects of a spell? Is there an online page? Kislev's dominion grows. Um, my my recommendation is just okay. Okay, look. Here's what you can do. I'll show you what you can do. Alright, you can go into your wizard. You go into the wizard, and then you have a look here, and it shows you what the overcasted spell does. See how it says Ice Maiden's Kiss upgraded? And you have a look at the various effects. So you got 35% chance of miscast. What does the and it's cost seven winds of magic, does 36 damage. What does the regular cast do? So the regular cast is four winds of magic, 18 damage, right? Now you also need to consider that the overcasted spells will have longer cooldowns as well. So sometimes your actual DPS is significantly lower when overcasting. But it's just like it's just like a huge amount of information and that you have to look at it and assess it in every single scenario. There is no way I can go in through every single oops, every single spell and tell you when it's okay to overcast and when not to. Because honestly, most of the time I just don't overcast. Uh, Matey did a five dollar super chat. Hey, Legend, who's the best bear back rider in Kislev? Uh, probably Boris. Thanks, super chat. Noble of the yeah, what would be what's a better question is to ask it about specific spells. Otherwise, I just you just do my head in. There's like, there's like thousands of different combinations that could show up. It's like, you've always got to assess what it could be like. Alright, so let's get pirate's weapons. That'll be really good for our missile units. With this, we stand against chaos. Alright, if the... I strike at them... Okay, Vlad is way more likely to occupy one of these settlements now that he is without any territory. They are one people. Yeah, he's quite likely to occupy Krugenheim. That being said, it's likely that this army is just going to finish him off and then that'll just be the end of Vlad. I think he's done for. Uh, Philippe Silva did an R5 super chat. Hey, Legend. How, how are your thoughts on the new Kislev stuff? and Katarin campaign off the DLC update. I think it's pretty good for, for Kislev. I haven't looked at any of the other things. I haven't looked at Cathay, I haven't looked at Zinch. I don't think the Zinch stuff is very interesting. Um, the Cathay stuff does seem interesting. I just haven't looked at it yet. All right, let's 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 get rid of Sterling here. Don't declare war on them with allies. Never good. Falters. It's a good region. Might as well grab it. 
since they didn't have any ties to like allies with anyone else, that all just works out just fine. All right, I think I've got a fair few students and a few heroes that don't have them attached. Oh, this is the first student I've had. Okay, never mind. Do you get frontline units with every missile faction in Worm 3? What? Sorry, would you get frontline with Dark Elves or High Elves? Uh, with Dark Elves and High Elves, no, I don't bother with frontline units. They don't need it. Their missile output is high enough to not require their shit melee infantry. But if you want to do that, you totally can. Uh, I'm not saying that you shouldn't do it. I was going to put that in there because... I don't know. People always give me shit. But no, for high elves and dark elves, I don't bother with frontline infantry. Because their archers are high enough in morale that they'll hold the line pretty well. And they've got good DPS. Whereas these guys are low DPS, relatively, they're sort of medium range. And these are really high quality uh, frontline trashy infantry. <laughs> they're high quality trash. Alright, so this guy here will go and take care of Dramar, that should be easy. And then this army will go for Oakenhammer, hopefully... Should we go for... Hmm, should we go Zofbar first? I feel like Karat Kadrin will confederate them if we don't move quickly. Good, we want to save money because with this I got spending a bit much at the moment. This all looks pretty good. Did you just get student with tech already on? Is that how it works now? They changed how it works. You get you get you, you've got a chance of getting student every time you level up after you finish a technology, so no longer do you turn off your technologies and get them anymore. So you can't cheese it. Which I prefer, because I hated that cheese. It was so boring. And people were always like, take off your technology! And I was like, shut up! <laughs> so, I, I, this is actually one area where I'm glad that they nerfed the cheese. I'm actually really glad for it. For it. Alright, so these guys kind of need to hurry up, but... They're going to take attrition. Because, yeah, I only get them for nine turns. Could be good to have... Oh, no, they're recruiting. How do these guys afford so many friggin' units? If... <laughs> okay, whatever. Um, I can stand over here. That way I won't take attrition. And I'll get replenishment because it's an ally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's good. Alright, so Vlad is dead. Kind of. He could still strike at Mordheim. But his army's in really bad shape. We'll just keep that there and we'll see how we go with that. Now with this, they're not moving at all. Which is bothering me. Elegantly, I go. We'll be ready to strike here as of next turn. Look how cheap that is. Okay, I think I should get rid of these two here because they are trash. These ones are, you know what, they're also trash. Get rid of them. Yeah, get rid of them because I've still got two turns. I might as well recruit some more stuff. Actually, let me just see here. I think you could use a... Veteran warrior. Also, this uh, this is a boyar. Boyar is a crap. Do I have a good Druzina available? Uh, this guy's level thirteen. I'll keep him for now. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. He doesn't have Celiac's lullaby. I demand absolute loyalty. Let's see, for a siege, we're probably going to want more missile units over melee infantry. Alright, that works out. That'll, that'll finish in two turns. 
I'll be outnumbering them by one unit. Okay. The bluest of blood. And then over here, these guys just standing around doing nothing. I don't like that at all. In Kislev, snow is a welcome ally. I guess what I could do is sack this settlement, go into ambush stance, and see if these guys will come in a bit closer, because they're not in range to strike any of these settlements. Alright, let's do that. Let's go up real close here. And next turn we strike. Like the huntsman of the Oblast. So we'll sack the settlement here. Should be an easy order resolve. And then see what these guys here do. And then we'll rip them apart over this way. I did want to destroy them on the initial attack, but I can't. If I get in too close, I'm going to be sandwiched between their armies. Did you uh, revive Castalton? Yes, we did revive Castalton and Erin Grove. Yeah. Alright, cool. Alright, we need to increase our income. So the reason why I went to ambush stance is in the hope that they don't notice us. Otherwise, they might move their armies away. Because there's no point capturing their minor settlement. This is the big failing of the AI. You got to go after their army, hit, you know, destroy their ability to counterattack at the very beginning. I shall carry it with honor. Matey did a five dollar budget. Hey, legend. Boris is a sweet boy. He's a good boy. Good be bead rider. <laughs> yeah, he rides a bead pretty well. Thanks for super chat. Appreciate it. All right. So Katarin, she'll make her way over to Zafbar. We'll strike that first because that's the most important settlement. This one will just stay at Drakenhof and wait there so they don't counterattack us because I don't think I'd be able to launch the attack with that one. And then this one here will strike. Uh, that's not going to be able to handle it. What do you want? Alright, I'll, I'll figure that out as we go. Alright. It is time. An ad. Hmm. So it looks like he took out Crooked Moon. Rich territory here for us. But we should really be focusing on factions that are our actual enemies. These guys here, we can just trade with them. And they keep they keep a lot of really nasty shit out of our border. So that's fine. The more. Will you fight Astrogoth? We are preparing for a war against Astrogoth, yes. Uh, this one here could use still the money. Griffinwood's not being taxed. Yeah, that can wait. Until we get rid of the vampire corruption, which will take a couple of turns. But it is it is kind of under control. Alright. Let's see what happens here with Vlad this turn. Oh, of course, they come after me. Of course. I'm pretty sure most of our army is super badly damaged. Yeah, that's fine. 
to battle. Now watch as he like raises the dead again and attacks again. So let's let's go with replenishment. No, he should have used up all of his movement. No, okay, he's finished. We'll be able to finish him off. Done. Uh, that's if the golden order doesn't finish him off. Vlad is done. Uh, can you still have chaos waste settlements and convert them with the commandment? Uh, you don't convert them. You rep you get rid of the penalties that they cause. But it costs devotion, five devotion per turn to do that. So yes, you can do that. Yep. Okay, cool, let's take it out. And that will be the end of the Von Karsteins. Good stuff. Alright, really good there. If it honors I reckon Sylvania is one of the toughest opponents in the early game at the moment in this general area. Awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. That is really good. Here to serve. Defy chaos. March All right, we need to get over here. I will go. By my command, we march. Okay. And we're going to get ready to strike at Karadramar with these two here. That shouldn't be a problem. The okay, there's no siege attacker here, so we're fine to go and occupy Zafbar without any yeah, real counterattack from them. If they go and besiege the settlement, Katarun will finish them off. They'll probably just sit there and go, Alright, well, Katarun's not going to be able to beat me, but we'll smash her. Smash them. Because she's good against dwarfs. Alright, then over here. Okay, their army's moved in a different direction than what I was expecting. I'm going to use this one to scout ahead. Throg's coming in to help. <laughs> He's not coming to help, but whatever. Alright, their armies... Well, it's not really a, a bit of a blitz, but you can get Fort Stragoff back and push up, I guess. Right, so... Yeah, Wintertooth is reclaiming some territory out here, and so they've gone back to deal with it. Yeah, some more money would be good. All right, time to declare war. All right, let's speak with Wintertooth. See if he wants money for it. Okay, we'll try and Varg, see if they offer more. A timely arrival. My warhounds cool. have not eaten in days. <laughs> I always find that funny. Hang on. With you, because you hate me, I want you to cancel your trade agreement with them. Yep. Cancel that. Yep. And that. Ew. <laughs> okay, then, get back to Wintertooth. Alright, we're now at war with Astrogoth. Alright, this army here. This one, it's it's good at the moment, but it, it gets a lot better as we level it up. A lot better. So, just anywhere where we can level it up is good. Just basic fights. And every single battle pretty much has to be fought manually. Wait, is this a minor center battle? I think it is based on that garrison. Why does it take so long to load this stuff? Yeah, it has to be fought manually, otherwise you end up taking way too much. This is not a good auto-resolve army. 
Is this a low, no loss campaign? No. How likely do you think the new Dwarf Lord, Legendary Lord, will, will start in Zuffbar? Mmm... 30% chance? I have no idea. I haven't heard any information coming from CA, so I don't know. Can you steal the Green Knight? If so, is it worth it? You actually can't steal the Green Knight, because when the Green Knight gets wounded, he disappears. So... Yeah, you can't steal him. Alright. So what do they got there? Hobgoblin archers? Should be fine. Problem is these choke points make it difficult to use all of your guns all at once. That's all. Yeah, no big deal. What happened there? How'd that happen? Hmm. Because, yeah, when you recruit this completely fresh, it's not that good. This is where some people, I think, they recruit this army, throw it into a tough fight and go, Eh, what's Legend talking about? This army is shit. But when it's fully leveled up, fully... Like, you got a level 30 Lord, it's got all the red line skills, got all your magic sorted, got your blue line sorted as well, and you've done the technologies for these, you end up with more than... I think you end up with like 200 ammunition. And that is a lot. For these guys. Plus, when you finish the supporter race, you end up with, I think, about 80 speed. And you can take damage in the battle. As long as none of the actual sleds get destroyed, you end up taking no casualties. Plus, they're actually pretty good in melee. <laughs> See? They're actually pretty friggin' good. Alright, let's bring them all in. Let's go. You absolutely don't have to use these guys just in as missile units. Taking a bit of damage here. We're going to try to walk out of this with no casualties. Because you can put a Patriarch in it, but that's just for replenishment. That's it. Or maybe even a little bit of regen. Okay, maybe, maybe don't shoot. If we're just going to use it as a mobile chariot. No, 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 no. Stay over there. Okay, these three here, I want them out of the settlement because they're taking a fair bit of damage. I want some of these to go back. And you definitely want to go with the light war sleds, not the heavy ones. In my opinion. But yeah, the biggest downside to them is that you will have to fight most battles manually. Technology Siege Mentality says 15% more ammo. Do you know if it just means... If it's just mislabel and it should read 15% when defending? No, it actually does what it says it, it says. It does what it says it, it's going to do. It just gives you 15% extra ammunition, faction-wide. All units. Not when you're under siege. They probably meant it to be when under siege, but it's one of those situations where they probably should have put a tag in and they forgot to do it, and it actually benefits the player. So, I'm not going to argue. Hag Hero can complement this army with healing as well. Yeah, but you don't really need healing. That's, that's what I'm trying to say. You don't need it. Thing is, with every hero you put in, that gives you less firepower. 
and just like putting in shitloads of wizards. You've already got heaps of wizards. You just want to use the, the ice magic. You can you can do it if you want, but I don't. Yeah. It is Kislev's now. Decent amount of sack money, but I want to keep this at higher level because it's got iron, which we want to make use of straight away. I switch. Storm sun. Oh yeah. So is this Throg here? Yeah. I'm pretty confident this army can beat Throg's army without too much damage. Alright, we gained a level up. Uh, I usually like to go for skilled craftsmen first. I know a lot of people want to go root march straight away. 5% extra campaign movement range, not essential right now. What we need is ammunition. Uh, Swift wing is actually a pretty good one to get. Gives us extra speed. They don't both need it though. Okay, we don't need this here anymore. We can build that elsewhere. Drujina. Drujina. All right, looks as though we could occupy this because it doesn't seem like. You will die for insulting. It just doesn't seem like they're going to counterattack us. They're too far away. Have you ever accidentally said thanks for the super chat? Yeah, I say it all the time. Some people ask a question and they didn't super chat, and I go, "Thanks for the super chat." I'm, it just, it just becomes instinct after a while. Fight for Kislev. Happens all the time. Uh, you would love playing Yuan Bo for stealing legendary mortal heroes with his matter of state ability. Yeah, yeah, I do like playing as Yuan Bo. Um, no, okay, we want to recruit Ulrika. Alright, if we were to put her in Katarin's army, instead of... Yeah, I rarely use this unit anymore, get rid of it. It's okay at the beginning of the campaign, but right now it's just kind of crap. Is she free of upkeep? It bothers me when legendary heroes are not free of upkeep. Lowers their value. It's not that big of a deal, though. Alright, cool. What else have we got going on? Guardian of the land, defender of Kislev. As is my right, I lead. All right, stay there, because they're probably going to force march an army down over here to lower the troll king, or if not, bring all of their armies down this way. So we might want to send a scout to go and check what's going on here. But all of his armies are north of this position, which means south of this position is just ours for the taking. Because they just got nothing. And if we continue to capture his territory, he's not going to have finances to recruit new armies to deal with it. Which is what I'm counting on. Did you get Charioteer on all those characters? I don't seem to get that lucky early on. Luck had nothing to do with it. I loaded saved characters. <laughs> A symbol of my I don't think I've used the Ice Court once yet in this campaign. But legend is it's cheese. Champion of Kislev. Can you one save load Yuan Bo special heroes? Uh yes. Yes you can. Yes, you can save his special Astromancer and then load it into a another campaign. Yes, you Champion can do that. Of the motherland. I accept this tribute. Do you still prioritize ice witches at all when the hags are easier to recruit with better laws? Long has um, sacrifice gone unappreciated. I only really use that the ice witches now for boosting these kind of armies. So I definitely don't prioritize them for that. Like if I'm going, I need a law of magic, I don't think to myself ice or tempest magic. I, I definitely go hag witch instead. Drujina. So yeah, you're right. Okay, the moot we want growth, which also gives us money. And I believe it also provides a global bonus. Yep, income from farms, plus 2%, which is nice, because I always get farms. This is all looking good over here, making big monies. Don't need this anymore, ship building. Yeah, get that, need more cash. Mm. 
Alright, we can see there, there's this army. It's in force march. Yeah, so yeah, it can't possibly attack us, unless there's a bunch of other armies in this area. But, oh, hang on, could we maybe go into, let's go into ambush dance, because what they'll do then is only see this army and be like, oh, that's not that much. We can beat that. But against two armies, they won't be able to beat. Actually, I'm not sure if they can. That's pretty shit. Kelsdorfs do perform fairly well in auto resolve, though. Alright. But you can see now that the campaign is really starting to come under control. Alright. We are not in any serious risk now. Short of like a catastrophic defeat, which those are rare in my campaigns. Like I'll get sucker punched every now and again. That'll happen. But rare will I have my entire armies decimated. That just, this just isn't going to happen. What makes the Law of Hags better in your opinion? Um, better than what? Oh, okay, so, okay, Lore of Hags has just got some really versatile spells. The overcasting doesn't seem to cause a a mist cast, which is good. And it's got a lot of versatility. You've got healing, you've got damage dealing, you've got debuffs. What more could you want? Ooh. That's okay. But legend all of the Kislevite warriors. Good money. What are your miserable life's worth? Better to use Overseer or Sorcerer Command Chaos Wolf Armies. Depends on the army that you're going to build. I mean, have a look at what they do. Sometimes overseers are better. Have you seen that they are releasing new DLC for Pharaoh? The DLC is out now. Um, really? Let me look at that. My Pharaoh. Um. I don't, I don't know why. Like, what's the point in saying that? What a waste of time. <laughs> it's the blood pack. Oh, it's not on the it's not on the steam thing late. yet though. Okay. Is it did they release like a trailer or something? Legend, did you see? Blood's coming to Pharaoh! Wow! I'd better buy the game then. You know how much I love Blood Pack. Uh let's have a look. Oh yeah, Total War Pharaoh Blood and Sand launch trailer. Blood and Sand DLC is now available. I'm not going to react to it. But... Just to give me a sec here. Do you have to pay for it, or is it free? Yeah, it says, Blood and Sand now available, but when we had a look here, it didn't say any DLC. Except for soundtrack. Maybe I need to refresh? My Pharaoh, you're humble. Um, okay. Cool. I like, I don't know. You gotta click on the blog post. Ugh, I don't fucking care about Pharaoh, but okay. <laughs> I 
Legend, you know that game that you're not interested in? Is it just released the, the its stupid DLC? Okay, um... Yeah, look, I just, I just don't care, guys. Like, this is a, a nothing game. I just don't care about it. Sorry if that upsets you, but I just don't care about it. Alright, looks like we can strike a Zuff bar. I think there's a full stack sitting in there, so it's a fairly big battle, but Katarin should be able to do the whole thing by herself, pretty much. Morbid curiosity. Well, you guys know where I stand about blood packs. I think it's stupid. I think it's not industry standard. And that Creative Assembly gets away with it every single time. Um, yeah, that is just... It's just... Witch of the ice. What's your problem? I, I just think it's a shit thing that they do. Commander of the but at the same time, I also just don't care enough to fight about it because it's a lost cause. It appears in the Steam search, $3. Oh, okay, hang on. Yeah, you're right, there it is. Um, I'm not going to react to this stuff, because Crow Assembly might DMCA strike me. It's the same thing as Troy. Okay, whatever. It's just like you're paying if you already got Troy in Blood Pack, you're just paying for the same thing again. I mean this is just this is kinda like their um standard thing that they do. I'm not I'm not ever impressed with it, but it's just it's kind of a lost cause, that's all. The bluest of blood. I will permit rest. Alright. I think that Throg will actually try to attack us. And if we ever look at his army here, it doesn't seem that impressive. If it's full of infantry, I mean we can only see a small portion of it. I'm fairly sure I can beat it. Frost guide me. Tsarina. Go with pride. And what can the Dowie do for you on this fine day? Okay, let me speak to him. See if he wants me to join war against Zuffbar for money. Yeah, we can't do that. I, I thought I was going to have to fight this manually. But Katarin is just going to have a field day with this. Okay, so while we're fighting this battle here, this is actually a good time to talk with, with you guys about stuff. But yeah, like, like I think that blood in the Total War games, it does add... It, it is like an important effect, and you do want to see it. But I just find it so weird that they do this. And the only reason that it becomes standard is because the community, by and large, have allowed it to happen. I'm not blaming people for it. Definitely not. It's not your fault. Um, but it really just, just goes to show that if you let Creative Assembly get away with something, it'll just become the, the standard, right? Industry standard, as far as they're concerned. Um, I think the whole, oh, we sell it so that we can lower the age rating of our games is the biggest pile of shit. I don't buy it. I just don't buy it at all. Because these games, the vast majority of people that buy them are fucking middle-aged men. That's just the demographic. You know, I'm sure that there are a, a few kids that play it. But another thing is that I think that... Um, That kids would buy it anyway, even if it was M15+, plus, considering that a lot of kids fucking play Grand Theft Auto. You know, I don't think that... Oh no, it's M15+, plus. my mummy won't let me play it! I, I just don't think that kids are going to give a shit these days. Um, that excuse doesn't buy it, buy it with me. And I know then, immediately the Germans will be like, Oh, but we need to, because otherwise the, the Germans, they can't sell it in Germany. Then do it separately in Germany. Why do you have to do it globally for this? I don't. I don't get it. Like it. 
it doesn't make sense to me. It just doesn't make sense. And maybe it's because I'm ignorant. I don't know. But if it was, if it was other, if it was like, let's just say Call of Duty was doing this kind of shit, and it, all the games company were doing it, then maybe I'd be like, okay, maybe there's some truth to it. But it's just Creative Assembly. They're the only ones that do it for some reason. I, I, I don't get it. It's not industry standard. It's just Creative Assembly that does it. You know, you get Warhammer games come out, like Space Marine. Blood is in the game. This, I just, I just don't fucking get it. <laughs> I, the thing is, I don't have to get it. Because, um... Yeah, if it works for them, then they'll keep doing it. But I just, I just don't get it. Execute them. The thing is, they've been doing it for over a decade, and it's such a shitty business practice that other companies still don't do it. Like you'd think, you'd think. Ele imagine this: Electronic Art gives blood pack for Madden or something like that. They still, they don't do it. Or, I don't know, maybe there was a WoW expansion. Blizzard, there's another scumbag company. Imagine Diablo 4, no blood in the in the initial release. And then, uh, pay 120 bucks and we'll introduce blood and animations in Blizzard. No, they don't, they don't even do that. It's just creative assembly. Now, Diablo is definitely played by kids. I know this because when I was fucking 10 years old, me and my brothers, who are younger than me, we all played friggin' Diablo 1 and 2. Them down. So, it just doesn't make sense to me. <laughs> you know? Them. It's probably the same as Ubisoft epilepsy warning, liability reduction due to complaint of government, and greed of course. Well, there, there is actually an epilepsy warning at the beginning of, of the uh, of the load up for Warhammer 3, and I think that that's fair enough. You know, I don't give them shit about that. Like I said, Blood Pack is definitely a lost cause as far as I'm concerned. Um, you'll, the only way... Like, I, I'm, I think that if people stopped buying Blood, they would just stop making it. So I think this is a lost cause. But it's, it's just one of those things that I just find really weird about Total War in general. Really bloody weird. It just doesn't make sense to me, because this is not a kid's game. It's not that kids can't play it. It's just that the vast majority of people that play it are friggin' my age. <laughs> Hello. Retribution! Legend started Gamer Revolution. We already did a revolution last year. I don't think many people realize it, but we actually revolted against Creative Assembly and we won. We, we, we already revolted against Creative Assembly. We, we've already won. Sort of. We did. It wasn't a great victory, but the fact that we did win. I mean, the... I, I didn't boycott Pharaoh. I just wasn't interested in it. Um... But the overall lack of interest in what Creative Assembly was doing last year forced them to change their directions. Which is what I wanted to see. That's all I wanted, because I knew that the direction they were taking was just not acceptable. It was just dog shit. And I think that the direction they're going now is pretty good, you know? But, you know, in terms of Pharaoh, I don't know, like, just give up. You know? <laughs> Except that it's a lost cause. We got that nice apology letter. No, okay, the apology letter means nothing because that's just words. In Creative Assembly, okay, you don't understand how Creative Assembly work. They think that words mean everything. So if they say nice words and they're fully respectful, they think that's all that matters. But their actions don't match what they say. But if they actually start doing what they say they're going to do, then that's a good thing. Because that was that was the big thing. They said they were going to do stuff, and then they didn't do it. Their words mean nothing. They're a very untrustworthy company. I don't understand why everyone just like us. We say nice words and stuff. 
<laughs> it's like being respectful in tone is great and everything, but it means nothing if you're disrespectful in action. And they're very disrespectful in action. At least they were last year. And in 2022, but you know. I'm pretty hopeful that things are gonna get better now. I think that with this Pharaoh blood pack, it's just they have to do it to obviously do their obligations with Pharaoh. It was probably done before launch sort of thing. Um, so it probably wasn't any additional. And it's probably a copy paste jobs from Troy. So I doubt it cost them a whole lot to make it. I, again, when it comes to the blood pack, I just don't get it. I just don't get how it's a bloody thing. Alright, let's kill some dwarfs. <laughs> Oh yeah, Katarin is really good against dwarfs. Oh yeah. It's gonna take a little while. Anyway, I should really answer some questions. Uh, I still feel like they stopped developing Three Kingdoms. Sorry, I still feel... Sorry, I feel sad that they stopped developing Three Kingdoms. It's so fucking fun. I do not understand why they keep developing Pharaoh Why Three Kingdoms was a success. Yeah, okay. Well, I can explain that a bit. The, the DLC for Three Kingdoms didn't sell. That's that's all it really came down to it. Um, they're not developing Pharaoh anymore. What they're doing is the bare minimum that they basically had already planned. But I can promise you that a lot of stuff got cancelled with Pharaoh. You know, if you have a look at how much DLC is in Three Kingdoms compared to Pharaoh, well, what it will eventually be, Three Kingdoms will have more. Another thing to keep in mind is that Creative Assembly somewhat have learnt from what happened with Three Kingdoms, and they probably kind of regret what they did with Three Kingdoms. Because we all just expect them to abandon a game as soon as it doesn't sell very well. Even though it's their fault if it doesn't sell well. It's not like it's the consumer's fault. Um, because it isn't. But I think that they learnt a little bit of a lesson from Three Kingdoms. Uh, the cancelling of Three Kingdoms. I think that if they were to go back in time, they would have given an, Three Kingdoms another crack. But I think if you're thinking... I say think a lot, but yeah, if you're thinking, oh, but why don't they just go back to Three Kingdoms now? It was only two years, three years since they quit development of it. I think the thing to consider is that a lot of the people who are working on Three Kingdom have probably left the company, and them picking that game back up, they probably don't understand the code. Because... Uh, Creative Assembly, a lot of the staff, it has a high t staff turnaround. Which means that you don't end up with expert staff. I, I explained this in the uh, beginning of the stream. You don't end up with expert staff at Creative Assembly. And so they basically have developers that work on one game. They have that game under their belt. Then they quit the company for greener pastures because Creative Assembly doesn't pay very well. And so they go and get a, a basically a, com a job at a better company. Or a higher paid company, I should say. And so you end up with this sort of problem where Creative Assembly can't go back to their legacy games. They can go back and remove features, like uh, chat. They can remove uh, multiplayer chat. But they can't go in and actually really fix things because their games are a fucking mess. And the people who worked on them don't work there anymore. Like, if you told them to go and make a Medieval 2 DLC, they, they wouldn't know what to do. Because I could, Here's the thing, Medieval 2 was uh, made by CA Australia. Long gone. More than 10 years they got sacked. Good luck trying to find them. Have you seen the Mandalore's trailer? It looks very fun, but it's only a trailer. <laughs> uh, yes, I have seen the trailer. Uh, that is the case with pretty much all trailers. Um, that it is only a trailer, but yeah. It's very interesting to see what's going on with um, with uh, Mandalore's. I don't think it's going to be a Total War killer, but uh, it's it's going to be interesting to see what they're going to do with it. Especially considering it's made by one person. That is insane. I mean, they've been working on it for a really long time, though. How do I skip ahead in this video? Okay, you hold down ALT, then you type in S-K-I-P, and then while still holding ALT, tap F4. Okay? <laughs> I freaking lose a bunch of viewers doing that. Have you seen Kingsmaker? I haven't seen Kingsmaker, no. It's 
So the damage is done. Yeah, if I keep this up, it's going to take a while. We need to start dishing out more damage. I could use Heart of Winter if there was a big enough blob. Or, or we could use Death Frost on this dude. I know they've got spell resistance. Careful about getting shot. If we get rid of their barricades, they'll probably stop shooting at us. Because, yeah, we need our army to be in good shape, or else the other army will come over and attack us, and that won't be good for us at all. Does Katarin Sled work like Grom's Chariot, where she keeps attacking when pulling out? No, not really. Well, actually, I'm not sure. But she it's all about the charge damage. Look, if you see, straight away, just does shitloads of damage on the charge. It's also got really good acceleration and really good speed. So just all of that stuff combined. But I don't think it's like Grom's Chariot. When will you voice a character in Total War? Yeah, look, I don't think that's ever going to happen. There was definitely talks about it with Creative Assembly, but I think it was all bullshit. I don't think they ever intended to um, actually have me voice a character because they lied to me about it. So I'll tell you what the lie was. Um, when I was when I was asking about voicing a role, I don't know why they just couldn't tell me the truth. Like, I wouldn't have cared. I don't. I just don't understand why they have to lie about it. But anyway. So when we were in discussions, it was it was several discussions over a period of months, and I was talking about you know voicing characters for Warhammer Three, and they said yeah we're keen to do it, but obviously COVID's going on and there's restrictions, and they told me that they've got an in-house um, they do do everything in-house right, all the uh, the voice acting, so that means you have to go to Creative Assembly, which is halfway around the world for me and do the voice acting there. Now, during COVID, that's pretty much impossible. However, <laughs> when I spoke to Voice Snacks, he was like, no, I did it remotely. I did it at my um, home office. And I was like, hmm, hmm. And the funny thing is, is that you can go to that live stream. It's the, I can't remember what the date is. It's probably 2020, probably 2020. If you look at it, the live stream, the, the Realms of Chaos, not Realms of Chaos, Vortex Campaign, Throt Campaign, when I had a uh, interview with Voice Snacks, who was the voice of um, uh, Throt the Unclean, you'll notice that when he told me that, I went, oh, really? Well, I've been lied to. And I just don't know why they did that. I guess they thought I would never find out. Why didn't they just say, we don't want you to voice someone? I wouldn't have cared. But no, they lied. And so I'm so much more offended by that. <laughs> because because the, the thing is, it wasn't just one conversation. If they, if I had said, hey, I'd like to voice a character, and they said, look, we don't want YouTubers voicing characters, I would have been like, cool. I would have never asked again. But there was multiple conversations about it. What a fucking waste of my time. Oh, we better tell him yes, or else he'll get upset with us. Well, I fucking got upset with you anyway, so... <laughs> this just goes to show you that you should just tell people the truth, because if they end up finding out, they're going to be so much more mad than if you had just been honest with them in the, in the thread. I wouldn't have been pissed off. But you, you understand, we're trying to protect your feelings. Fuck my feelings. Tell me the fucking truth. I don't care about feelings. Tell me the freaking truth. Lying to me hurts my feelings. <laughs> anyway, moving on.
Uh, you should have pretended like you have a serious connection with both governments and you made it work. Um, why would I lie about that? Like, I, like here's the thing, guys. I offered to voice a character free of charge. Them not taking me up on that offer, I lose out on nothing. You know? Oh, damn it. Creative Assembly didn't allow me to voice a character without getting bit. Excuse me, without getting paid. <laughs> oh no, I've missed out on such a great opportunity. I don't care. This kind of battle shows how bad the AI is. There's nothing they can do about it though. It's not how bad the AI is. It's it's this it's this unit. They can't do anything about it. Anyway, like I said, it's a good opportunity to talk, talk to you guys while uh, I steamroll these guys very slowly. Uh, that was the problem. You should have charged them. What? Okay. By the way, any tactical reasons for attacking dwarves after wiping vampires? Well, I was in the area and they've got iron and it's green territory and it's like, it's resources. Iron is one of the best resources for Kislev because it reduces your global upkeep cost. And it's easy. And like, I, like I said, I was in the area, otherwise I had to move Kataran all the way to the north. A legend would have been cool though, Scaven Legendary Law with the signature eh, 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 uh, would have been sold out even though... Yeah, look, that would have been cool, but, you know, for whatever reason, they didn't want to do it. I, I don't know. Like I said, they weren't honest with me about it, so I, I never found out the real reason why not. Uh, I was only ever told bullshit. And I don't understand why. Like, I'm not a baby. I know, I, I, look, I know I sound like a baby a lot of the time, but I'm actually not a baby. I'm a big boy. I can handle being told no. Would you recommend Shadows to change after the update? Um, I wouldn't recommend it, but I wouldn't necessarily not recommend it. So it's something that you have to decide for yourself about Shadows of Change. It's like... It's not bad, it's not great, it's just, if you're gonna play... Let me put it this way, I think that the Kislev content and the Cathay content is pretty good. Not as good as what we've seen in Wyma 2, with their Lord packs. So it's, it's a solid 5 out of 10, I think. Like, it's, it passes. If, if, if this was a school test, I'd say they pass. If previously it was like a 4 out of 10. Um, maybe even a 6 out of 10, I'll be generous, I'll give them a 6 out of 10. Um, but there's definitely better DLC, so get that better DLC first. When Shogun 2 Legend? Um, Shogun 2's popularity, or, um, it dropped off way too much. I, I can't justify covering it again for a while. Gotta wait for another opportunity where, um, it's, uh, uh popular again. You know, we had a pretty good run with Shogun 2, but there there isn't enough variety of situation that occurs in Shogun 2 for it to be that regular on the channel. Um, I definitely would have liked to have done a few more videos on Shogun 2, but all the videos that are in my inbox, I'm sorry, all the save files, it's all the same situations. It's mostly just siege defenses and, you know, um, for the samurai, me taking the high ground and obliterating with artillery. You know, people's, people were getting sick of it, like, oh yeah, I've already seen this before. I can't do much about it. Why isn't he recruiting any monster units in Shogun 2? <laughs> um, if you can find Shadows of Change on a discount, I think it'd be good. I'm talking like maybe $15. I think that's reasonable. Because it's been out now for six months. There's no reason why you should have to buy something that's been out for six months at full price. You can look around and find a good deal. You know, there's instant gaming, there's um, uh, Games Planet. There's loads of places where you can get a discount. Don't, don't ever pay full price for something that didn't come out straight away. 
Why isn't this army a Doomstack already? Because I've I had a bit of a struggle in this campaign, and building a Doomstack would not have helped our situation at all. Because it would have cost us a lot of money, and it would have kept Katarin out of the fight for a while. Sometimes rushing a Doomstack actually really stifles your campaign, and you can make it work. Like, Katarin has never lost a battle. She just hasn't been there in every location in order to prevent the defeats that we have suffered. Which is why I haven't gone around, um, like, sitting around recruiting. This is why I say that two-turn recruitment is uh, really bad. Especially Legendary, because you want to be um, moving around, especially with your Legendary Lord. Uh, hang on. Warren Maroney did a $10 super chat. Fell asleep with you sledding through Brass Creep and woke up sledding through Vlad's army. P.S. If you want results, you got to go down units, not across. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know, but um, I I'm not really tryharding this that much. See? There we go. Oh, whew. Thanks for super chat. Appreciate it, dude. God damn, a third of its health gone in one charge. The problem is with these sort of battles, sometimes you don't have the opportunity to charge through the flanks because their flanks are protected by the actual structure. Oh, yeah, that's pretty good. You know that this super chat was a reference to suicide? What? Was it? How? Well, if it is a reference to it, it went over my head. If they ask something... If they ask you to voice something right now, would you do it? Or nah, based on how they trade you? No, I definitely wouldn't do it. No. Offers off the table. Not interested. Anyway, they wouldn't They wouldn't offer me. Did, <laughs> do you really think that they would offer me something now when they hate me compared to when they actually kind of liked me? Kind of? I don't think they ever really liked me, uh, when they tolerated me, let's just put it that way. <laughs> they would, you, you don't get more opportunities when somebody dislikes you than when they, than when they did like you. I don't blame you, buddy. Yeah, I don't get it. Sorry. Uh, what could they have done better with Shadows of Change update? What should they keep doing? What shouldn't they do? Obviously, they should never roll out DLC like that again. Okay. Yep, that's, that's a good question. So, I think if you're going to charge $25, it's got to be worth $25. And you also have to... As I've said many times before, you can't go backwards. Right? And that's what Shadows of Change did. It went backwards. Because this isn't the first Lord Pack for Total War Warhammer. We had a load of Lord Packs for Warhammer 2, and they really started to get into a good motion of things. So what they were doing with Warhammer 2, Lord Packs came out, I think they were like $8 or $12. You got two Legendary Lords, one FLC Lord, you got a major race rework with it. So, and it, these were always really substantial updates. And so what they did in Shadows of Change is they basically matched the amount of content that you would normally get for a DLC. Because that's what it was. It matched it, pretty much. It wasn't more. You got less on the FLC. 
They just put that, they put the FL Steve stuff as paid content. You didn't get a, a racial rework. And it's uh, a significantly increased price. Now, for someone like myself, and there's a lot of whales out there. What I mean by whales, people with money where they, it doesn't matter to them how much it costs. Like, if it costs $100 for a DLC, you know, I'll, I'll get that back by just playing it a couple of times, you know, sort of thing. Um, it's not a big deal for me. But what what it does do is it 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 increases the barrier of entry for the the casual players the people who aren't not everybody is going to play a hundred hours out of the dlc some people might play five hours a week and so a 25 dollar dlc doesn't make sense it didn't offer an, enough to um you gotta think as well the game is 60 dollars that's a full game. And then $25, nearly half of the full game price for basically breadcrumbs. It just didn't make sense. So it's not like you can't charge $25 for a DLC, but it should have a bit of substance to it. And the, the DLC didn't have substance. Now, it's got a bit more substance now, but it's still... It didn't match what they've done in the past. It hasn't matched what they've done in the past. Because there's no race reworks. The updates were pathetic. Um, you know, a lot of the stuff is just reskinned. Like, you look at a Frostworm. A Frostworm is a Salamander. You know, the the uh, Moonbird, it is a Phoenix. It, it's even got the same voice line as a Phoenix. Um, you know, the, the lion is a griffin. Melee infantry are all the same. Same, it's, you know, it's not like they haven't got a two-handed uh, polearm infantry. Same animation, that's, that's fine. Um, centigors, you already had centigors in the game. You know, made them blue, essentially. Um, and there was the other unit for Zinch. What did I get? Oh yeah, change bringers. Um, they've already got three units of flamers, so they just added a flying one, which they, you already had a flying unit and disc and stuff like that. So, you know, the the amount of actual work done, it's, you can tell it's not that much. You know, and everyone's gotten a whole bunch of, of melee characters. Melee character, melee heroes, it is. Pretty easy to make those, I think. See, so yeah, like, HP with their printers. Hers, a dirt cheap printer. Game, but take out mortgage for ink DLC. Yeah, of course. Yeah, 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 of course. Well, it, like, as it has been said, these games are a DLC pipeline, which I don't have a problem with it, but the DLC should be substantial. Should have some substance to it. Random question, what is the highest number of turns you have seen Nakari survive? I'm on turn 144, and he's on the donut. Definitely haven't seen him that long. He almost always dies by, like, turn 30 for me. So I'm pretty sure he's dead in this campaign. So what are we up to? Yeah, we're getting there. So we got disconnected on YouTube, but we're still fine on Twitch. Thanks for the Fs, guys. I wouldn't notice if you guys didn't press F in the chat. No, no, it wasn't my internet. It wasn't my internet because I didn't get disconnected on Twitch. I only got disconnected on YouTube. It's not my internet. It's not my fault! Hundred and twenty-four thousand damage shouldn't be too much longer. I know there's like a stack and a half. So each of these guys have eight thousand health roughly. So for eighty thousand means we've wiped out completely ten units. 
And there's a few shattered units that got away. What the? What the? What the? What the? Did you see that? <laughs> Katarin disconnected from her sled. I'll try and do that again. <laughs> That's the kind of jank that I can accept though, it's fine. So we're now up to yeah, 126,000 damage. Just having a look, I can't really see that many units remaining. Alright, I'm going to pop this down here, just because it's sitting on there and I don't think it's going to move. I can still cast two more of these. Might as well pop this down as well. Probably a waste of magic, but whatever. Rock Paladin did a fire door subject. Do you feel like CA has been doing better lately? Yes, I do feel like they've been doing better. But I think it's also important to note that if we, if we just relax on them and be like, oh, leg uh, oh, creative assembly, everything is forgiven, that they'll just go right back to old habits. Like I, here's his, his way I think of it. I don't think that they're actually sorry for what happened last year. I don't think they're sorry one bit. Based on, based on what I'm hearing, it's like. We're not sorry that we did the wrong thing. We're sorry that our plan didn't work. So we're changing tactics because if we don't change tactics, we're going to go out of business. Um, the, the reason why you can tell they're not really sorry is because they didn't go into specifics. All right? They did very specific things wrong and they left it vague on purpose. And then another thing that they did was they tried to put some of the fault on you guys by going, we're so heartbroken by by the mistrust that you have from us. What they didn't say is, um, we're sorry that we weren't 100% transparent with how we do business, and we'll endeavor to do better. No, they said they had to, they put some of that pressure on you, like you now have to forgive them. Um, so, I, like, they're doing better, for sure, and I want to give them credit for that. But I know that if we just suddenly go, it's okay, Creative Assembly, here, shut up and take my money, that they'll just go right back to doing what they were doing before. This is why I think that Creative Assembly goes through these five-year cycles where they spend a few years building up community goodwill, and then they're like, okay, cool, we've generated heaps of goodwill, let's fuck them over, and let's re release some absolute dog shit that cost us nothing to make, and let's make a fortune. And then everyone gets angry, and then the, the cycle repeats again. I'm not, I'm not sure if they do that consciously, but they definitely they definitely try shrinkflation. They did it with Rome 2. They did it with um, Thrones of Britannia. They did it with Warhammer 3, and they did it with Total War Pharaoh. And another thing with Creative Assembly, and, and how you can really tell they're not a trustworthy company, was if you want the perfect example of just their degree of untrustworthiness is go and watch the original video, um, The Future of Three Kingdoms, which they renamed it to uh, the, the the end of Three Kingdoms, right? And listen to what they're, being, what they're saying throughout that video. 
it's some of the biggest pile of bullshit I've ever heard from a company where they're like, we have now completed our schedule projects for Rob for Three Kingdoms, which just wasn't true. They can do because they, in a previous blog post, they had plans to do more DLC, but they're so afraid of people getting angry that they treat you like children and lie to you. They just, they, well, they don't outright lie. They bend the truth. They tell you these half truths. They're like, well, we kind of finished our plan because our plans changed and they manipulate language. You know, they're very good at that. Well, actually, actually, I go so far as to say they do it a lot, but they're actually not good at it because they get called out on it all the time. Um, and they did it again with the apology video. So you just have to, you just have to be like, look, buy their products if they do a good job. Don't buy their products if they don't do a good job. But make no mistake, they're a fucking toy company, and you don't need to be friends with the toy companies. You know, you don't need to be friends. You don't need to trust the people that make your products because they're not inherently trustworthy. They're out for their own interests. That's fair enough. You know, you don't even need to trust me if you really don't want to. Like, I'm out for my own interests as well. <laughs> it's just I feel like I'm also a consumer of Total War and I feel like we have interests that are aligned. Like, I just want the best product for Total War because, for one thing, I'm a fan of the franchise. Big fan. But also, it benefits my channel greatly when uh, the content is just good, when people are enjoying the game. Do you know what doesn't benefit the channel at all? Sucking up to corporate fuckfaces. Doesn't do anything for me. Never has. Remember when Sia was like, please don't threaten individual devs when nobody's threatening individual, de individual devs? Yeah. Yeah, look, I, I gotta question that kind of stuff because well, you, you never know. I mean, people definitely do death threats to the devs. That definitely does happen. But I don't know what the frequency is, and I don't know if that happened during Shadows of Change. You gotta keep in mind as well is that the Total War fan base gets really enraged um, very quickly. So they're, they're very, very... Um, Mm. There's a lot of mob mentality within within Total War franchise. It's largely, I think, because as a community, we put up with a lot of bullshit. And we're still very much dedicated to this franchise. And so we go from 0 to 100 pretty quick. And so it's, it, I can definitely believe that some people sent death threats to Creative Assembly. And I hope that that, that that didn't happen. But I also know that Creative Assembly will play the victim immediately, even if they're not actually the victim. Because, like, I remember I remember ages ago when Warhammer 3 first came out. There we go, we won. There's the army losses. I remember when Warhammer 3 first came out. I remember being in the official partner Discord. And all the partners, like, even partners that you would think would be, like, you know, shills. Uh, all the partners were like, this is ridiculous. You guys need to do something. This is the worst we've ever seen it. And Creative Assembly's response was like, look, guys, this is hurting us too. Like, trying to make them the victim of the situation that they created. You know. Don't criticize us. We're hurting too. You fucking caused it, bitch. <laughs> I, I oftentimes like to use an analogy. Imagine you're in a car, right? And you got in the car. And then somebody got in the driver's seat and they started driving. And then you're driving down the freeway. And then you turn to the driver and you'd be like, are you, are you drunk? And they're like, you know, they, they're, they're drinking. And you're like, hey, stop. We're going to crash. And the, the drunk driver's like, nah, fuck you, man. I've got this. I'm not going to crash. And then you crash, right? You crash and nobody dies, though. Nobody dies. Everyone gets hurt. And especially the, the driver. And everyone later, you know, with it in their slings and they, they get out and they meet up again. And they go, fucking driver, this is your fault. Why the hell were you drinking? We were all in the car. We told you to stop. Why? Yeah, why am I charged to test the enemy down? We told you to stop. And <laughs> you crashed. You crashed a burn and we all got injured. 
And then the driver who was drunk goes, Hey, don't criticize me. I got hurt too. Shut up. Shut the fuck up. If you're the driver in that situation, shut the fuck up. And that's basically what it was like dealing with Creative Assembly. <laughs> it's like, you caused this situation. You don't get to play the victim. Does Legend read our chat? I do, yeah. You gotta at me, though. Do you always stream on YouTube and Twitch? Um, a bit. No, I have been doing it lately, yeah. You're not done with the other campaign, are you? No, 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 we're still gonna play the Empire campaign. We're not done with that. So yeah, the whole battle was done by Katarin. Not sure you don't have to add him. Well, on Twitch it does help. It does help if you're at me. Nice to see it. Legend was streaming on Twitch. Honestly, was the last channel I actively live watch on YouTube often. Okay, fair enough. Cool. So yeah, I again in summary with Creative Assembly, you know, you got to give them a chance. That's really important. You got to give them a chance. You can't be like you guys are scum and we'll never buy anything from you again. Like if you want to buy their products, buy their products. If you don't want to buy their products, don't buy it. Uh, you, there's no need to make a moral stance on it, but at the same time, you have to know what you're dealing with with Creative Assembly, and they're not trustworthy. They're not. They're just not a trustworthy company. Because another thing to keep in mind is that all the people that did all the lying, they're all still there. They didn't get ramifications. They're just like, we're so sorry, so so sorry, we're so sorry. We'll do better. Okay, whatever. Do better. I don't need to trust the company in order to buy their products. Time to die. Kislev's dominion grows. So, yeah, I, I do hope that the the content coming in for the, the next year or so is pretty good. But I imagine that about five years down the track, twenty twenty. 8, 2029, something like that. We'll probably be right back where we started because it just it just loops around constantly. Seize the means of reproduction. No, you don't need to no none of that. You won't be able to do that. It's just a case if you've got to keep them on their toes. Like, here's one thing that you should do or not do. Don't pre-order any Total War product ever. Ever. For no reason should you ever pre-order anything to do with Total War. Really, just anything within the game's community. But Total War specifically, let's just keep it the, like, Total War specific because otherwise it confuse people. Alright, don't pre-order anything. Because for one thing, you don't get any benefit from pre-ordering six months in advance, right? It benefits the developer. Um, remember that these are not some uwu indie developer. They're super rich. Well, they were. So there's no need to pre-order anything ever. If you want to buy something on day one, buy it on day one because there's no difference between buying it six months in advance for you at least than buying it on day one except for the fact that what it does with pre-ordering is that they get a shitload of money of purchases really early before you've had a chance to look at reviews before you've been able to critically assess whether or not you're going to actually enjoy it And yeah, uh, I don't know. It's it's not a good system. It's it's anti-consumer. And there's no there's no pressure for you to do it. So just don't pre-order anything that they do. And that that should just be across the board for every games company. You know, if you're gonna pre-order it, do it like the day before when you can actually preload it. Um, otherwise, why why pre preload preorder it? Unless, of course, you live in a country where your currency is so hyperinflated that if you buy it today, it's worth 100 billion Zimbabwe dollars. And if you buy it tomorrow, it's then worth 100 trillion. Yeah, then you know what? Fair enough. But I'm mostly speaking to like dollar, pound, euros, those sort of situation. But obviously, if you live in a country with hyperinflation, maybe there's some incentive to pre-order. <laughs> Uh, 
All right, so we got this here as well, which... Ah, oh, damn, I can't reach them. And that means they're going to recruit more units. All right, what I'll do, because I'm probably going to need more than this in order to overcome Karak lag. We're going to... I've got the money for it, especially because we just took all that cash from them. Do we have magic? Never a little bit. Can't really rely that much on magic, so I'm not going to bother. Get a Druzina. And just recruit as much... Okay, what are we dealing with here? We're g I th you know what? I think Kiss the Fight Warriors are the way to go here. Because... Armor piercing... Not anti-large, but armor piercing is going to be useful against the dwarves. Because they have armor. And we need to pierce them. And it's cheap. It's very cheap. Oh, there's also armored Cossars. Uh, yeah, but they're twice the price. Well, I don't need that many units. I just need enough I to need only the best. get through this bit. Mind by your I'm right. done. Be able to force march over there to assist. I switch. What about my rubles? Look, I don't know every single currency. Just do do what you think is Rosina. best. It's only a matter of time before they start collecting and selling our data because costs are off. Well, yeah, well, that's they definitely collect data, but they usually just use it for their own research purposes. So, you know, they can see how many people are playing a, um, a Reichland campaign. So there's definitely information that gets sent from your computer to Creative Assembly. I don't know if that's Denuvo that does that. I, this, is, this is way out of my expertise. Um, but pretty much that's just part of being on the internet in 2024 we companies collecting here. your data so I don't know how to go around it I don't really care that much do you have any problems with Zimbabwe no I don't I just use it as an example um, AU throw subscribe with Prime thanks do appreciate that I use that as an example because it's when I think about hyperinflation that's the first thing I think about that's all there might be something more relevant. I don't know. Like I said, it's not my area of expertise. The keys of midwinter is upon us. Okay, this will be a field battle, and there's two full stacks here. I think we can manage it. I think we can manage. Thing to keep in mind though, if we don't absolutely oh, obliterate this army, what they can do is besiege and then have Astrogoth Iron Hand come over here. So we either need to auto resolve and wipe them out, or we need to fight this battle manually and do a really fucking good job. So well we'll see here we go! Defend the motherland! To battle! Bitcoin. Um, what about Bitcoin? By my command, we march. So let's see what happens here. Okay, auto resolve allows us to win. Because, yeah, if we fight this battle manually, I'm pretty confident we'll win. But, like, recovering these guys here would be pretty quick for us. Feel my wrath. Mm. Uh, going back to what you said about CEA working in cycles of good, you bad, do you think fall. the next couple of years are going to be good, or are we still stuck in the bad times? Okay. Based on what we've just been through, we should have passed the bad part right now, and we should have we should be now onto the good part. So, if I hang on, just let's get a um, hang on, let me just get a graph up. People love graphs. Just give me a sec here. Oh no, never mind. It sucks using this when um, when I've got OBS open. It doesn't work very well. Yeah, we should be past the bad part. We should be on to the good years now. But if you want the good years to last longer, 
then you need to scrutinize Creative Assembly every step of the way. And they, they will hate me for saying that, because they don't want they don't want you to scrutinize them. You know, they want you to just be mindless consumers. Cause they want to get back to, you know, making Total War Pharaohs, essentially. And people actually buying them. But yeah, just basically scrutinize them every step of the way. And hopefully it'll be good. Which is which is the spell that's like um Just trying to find out which one is it. Vengeance and Spirit? Yeah, it's this one here. Omen of Spirits. Um, I, Bobby, the car, subscribe with Prime. Thanks, dude. Appreciate that. So, yeah, we were once again only kicked off from YouTube, not from Twitch. Destroy them for Kislev! It's shit compared to beast magic. Defend the motherland! Hmm. Guardian of the land. Champion of the motherland. By our blood is Kislev kept safe. Hmm. I like I wanna auto resolve it, but my army's gonna get bloody wrecked. See if I auto resolve it, they're not gonna counterattack. Yeah, I think we'll auto resolve it. It'll save a lot of time. We just went and did like a 40 minute battle. Time to die! Yeah, the reason why we had to auto resolve it was because we wanted to wipe out that army. Otherwise, what they do is they stand over here, damaged, then they besiege the settlement and bring in Astrogoth. Now, Astrogoth cannot launch the attack on us next turn. He just can't do it. But what he might be able to do is hit Yetchit. Probably not from that distance. We should probably recruit an army over here. Can't really globally recruit or locally recruit for that matter. Frost Weaver. Hmm. Chosen well, I can locally recruit here Noble again. Of the Oblast. Um, transfer all of these. Hang on. Yeah, transfer all of these here. Glory be to the motherland, then. Of Kislev. Just banned you, just for now. We can locally recruit here. And then also re-recruit over here. Drugina. I accept this tribute. So, so far we've hit the Chaos Dwarfs pretty hard, I think. This gift is mine alone. Okay. Drugina, ready. If it honors Orson. Any particular reason you chose to play as Katarin? I, I like Katarin, that's why. I shall carry it with all. Everyone's got their favorite uh, factions that they like to play, and Katarin's one of my favorites. And I tell you who's not one of my favorites, Astankia. I do not like Astankia at all. Don't want to play her campaign again. I don't like her curses. I find it really boring. Just don't want to play it. Alright, cool. So if we have a look here, this war has so far gone pretty well, but we've taken a lot of damage. We need to try to recover quickly. Alright. Got a lot of mo mm, a lot of money. But that being said, it's because our armies have been severely beat down. But we'll recover. We've also got Azazel on his way back. Is he at war with he's not at war with them? Come in peace. Shit. So we can see here that Azazel looks like he wants to land here and go to Castle Von Rukun, so we need even more forces to be recruited in order to deal with this. Um, 
Because it'll take him a couple of turns to get here. Right. If he's standing, if he's standing there in Force March. Hmm. Commander of the soldiery. Mine by right. Do not, Azazel lurks. I await for you to manifest a scintilla of intrigue. In All right. Well, we'll see how that goes. I think we'll be okay. Even if we lose a little bit of ground here and there, we'll be fine. Because, yeah, the AI, they're just, they're not looking to get decisive victories against their army. They're looking to hit weakened positions because they're cowards. And that's all they know how to do. Yeah, we want more global recruit slots where possible. That'd be good. Increase our income. Get ourselves some iron. How many defeats so far? Uh, probably about four. Not, no major def. Oh, there was one kind of major defeat, I guess. To war. Uh, I yes. I mean, it was pretty much hopeless, but yeah, I think four defeats. Campaign's pretty healthy though. I'm trying to vassalize other factions as the vampire counts. Can this only be done by by them liking me, or can I just reduce them to their last settlement? Yeah, that's yeah. You can reduce them down to their last settlement and then just force them into a vassal situation. Yeah, you can do that. Are Atomans good lords? I never recruited one. Okay, so Atomans are boyars that haven't been recruited yet. So as soon as okay, he's running away. <laughs> so I may not actually need this. I can bring him over that way. Um, Atomans are, yeah, boyars that just haven't been recruited yet. So as soon as you recruit an Ataman, he becomes a boyar, and he can't become an Ataman again. So you can use being an Ataman as an opportunity to gain certain traits that will make them better in battle, but in all honesty, I don't think it's worth doing that. Especially considering most of the traits that you get will be of economic benefit. The longer that you have an Ataman working, the better that they're going to get, because they just keep getting more traits. I'm surprised you find her boring compared to Katarin's mechanic. There's a lot of creativity with the buffs and debuffs plus global TPS for Army to Forest. Yeah, I just don't like the curses and blessing systems. This is not me. I just don't want to do it. You know, not every single mechanic is going to be my favorite. And that one is probably one of my least favorite in the entire game. Probably because, well, one of the reasons because, I feel like I've seen it before. Because it is... Very similar to Grom the Paunch's mechanic. It's pr practically identical. Oh, yeah, boy! <laughs> Whoever wins, we win. The only downside to that is uh, him getting Throg straight. I'm pretty sure my army would have handled that no problem anyway. Are you keeping Katarin's army as in until Ice Guard can be recruited? Yeah, well, I can recruit Ice Guard, but they take two... I can't just move her away from viable territory when we can win just fine to go and recruit Ice Guard, which isn't going to make our situation any better right now. Now, if I can globally recruit Ice Guard in one turn, which we're getting there, but yeah, once we can globally recruit them in one turn, I'll totally get them. But until then, I'm, I'm not going to go all the way back to Kislev, recruit those units, or it's just not worth doing that. It's a huge waste of resources. Servant of the faith. None shall question me. Okay. Well, that was good. Oh, yeah, look how badly damaged his army is. He's going to really struggle to attack Yetich now. Alright. Man, did you see the lack of balls on that fucking dude over there? Yes. He's like, oh, no, here comes the player. I must run away. Like, even, like, the order resolve says we're going to lose there. 
Hear my command. Move out! Face my ire. That damage is pretty acceptable, I think. I just don't want to fight a siege. We are Kislev. My lands expand further. Champion of the Motherland. For Mother Kislev. Kislev's chosen. So four units. Leader of Kislev's warriors. They turn this into chosen four. Ruzina, the noble choice. Ruzina, so five. Run. And we'll turn that into four. Ruzina, transfer that over. Good. Okay. See you later. Nice. Bit of damage, but we got ourselves carrying flag at tier four, which is nice. If I move to this position right here, I should be able to block the path, stop him from being able to get to Yetich. If he attacks me while I'm in Force March, I should be fine. On your feet, Kislevites. Yep. Yep, we blocked him. He can't get to Yetich now. He may attack us, but if he does, he doesn't stand a chance. This war against Astrogoth is going really well. Invocation. Oh, yeah. I usually go with Daz. Daz is my favorite. Alright, then we've got this over here to deal with. If we attack this one here, it won't be a minor settlement siege. Also, I didn't level up Katarin. But we should do that after we've made the attack. Because if you do it before, sometimes it deprives you of movement. Not always. I'm not sure what causes it. And any points we put in here isn't going to make any difference. Whoa! <laughs> now nah, we'll be fine. This is a joke from The Sopranos, but have you ever eaten grilled cheese off the radiator? No, I haven't. Uh, why do you think CA is so stingy on separate standing out mechanics for factions? They clearly hit a gold mine with it in Warhammer 2 compared to Warhammer 1, where every faction is the same, but are now back with reskinning, repurposing stuff, i.e., Curses, Blessings, Scouts of Labor ETC. Okay, I think it's a good question. And I think it has a lot to do with Warhammer 3 as a program, right? I don't know this stuff for sure, but you can make a number of assumptions and maybe something of it is correct, maybe not. But I have a suspicion that Warhammer 3 is just not easy to work with compared to Warhammer 2. Like Warhammer 2 I think was a lot easier. I've heard from modders to developers that Warhammer 3's programming is a fucking mess, right? And so if the programming is a mess, the, the spaghetti code, it's harder to create new things and it's much easier to just repurpose old things. And that may have something to do with it. So it might just take them longer and take more resources in order to make an actually new mechanic compared to just repurpose, repurposing old stuff. And that's unfortunate if that's the case, but what, what can you do? So, yeah, I mean, you really need someone from Creative Assembly to come in and go, hey, Legend, that's not actually correct. The reason why is because this, 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 and this. But you just, you just don't know. For the people. Another thing to keep in mind is that... Um, Whenever, okay, think of it like this. The executives go, hey, we want to make a DLC and charge this much for it, like $25. And they go to the developers and they go, okay, you've got this much time and this much budget and this much workforce to make that. And the workforce goes, okay, in order to do this, we have to cut some corners, right? We cannot just create new models because obviously new models, as in new skeletons and stuff like that, 
take a lot longer to produce than just reskinning something. And they go, okay, we can't come up with great new ideas in this amount of time. And so with the resources that they've got and the time that they've got with the workforce that they've got, they go, okay, we just have to repurpose a whole bunch of stuff in order to fill the quota. Otherwise, we're just not going to, oops, we're just not going to make it. Um, another thing to keep in mind is that when Warhammer 3 Immortal Empires was first launched, they took a lot of the experienced staff members from Immortal Empires that were working on it, and they shifted them off to somewhere else. Now, the thing is, experienced workforce is worth so much, especially when a lot of that workforce, I know of one particular guy, had been working on um, Warhammer DLC ever since Warhammer 1. So you've got six or seven years of experience gone, right? And so if you are gone for, if you've gone from Warhammer 2, where you've got people working on it that have six or seven years of experience, to then getting a bunch of, te- uh, getting a team of like eight people that have just come straight out of university and they're getting paid minimum wage, you're just not going to be able to produce the same amount in the same amount of time. It's just not going to be possible to do it. So what you're doing is you're training up these people constantly. And unfortunately, that's going to, that's going to um, re- reflect poorly on the actual product. Because unfortunately, like, you can look at numbers and be like, oh, Creative Assembly hired 400 people to work on, on Warhammer 3. Wow, that's amazing, 400 people. But you don't know each individual 400 people, right? They could have hired 400 people that got below average marks on their university degrees. So what's more valuable? Hiring 400 people that are not good at their job or hiring 100 people that are good at their job? And I'm not saying that people who are working at Creative Assembly are not good at their job. I'm saying that the numbers can be a little bit, um, uh, a little bit, a little bit more nuanced than, than just saying, oh, they have this many people working on it, therefore it must be of this quality. It's, it's just not how it works. Very well. Spreading the queen marches. Mm. Actually, get get the get her to sort that out. So I'm trying to get them into a nice big friggin' blob there for this. And we can see here, yeah, we're racking up some damage. Probably should have moved it a little bit more forward, but we are getting shit loads of damage there. But yeah, it's always important to keep in mind that I don't know what goes on at Creative Assembly. I can only suspect something, and I'm more than happy to change my opinions in light of new information. It's just that, you know, I, I do I do talk to some people, and that seems to be what makes sense to me. I remember being at that last meeting with Creative Assembly before Immortal Empires launched, and, and like, speaking to that, um, that developer and say, well, I'm moving on to a different project now. And I thought to myself, what? Warhammer 3 isn't finished. And what that told me was that Creative Assembly was basically done with Warhammer. You know, they had made their millions of dollars by selling it. Now they just wanted to um, just cheap on out for from it. So when they say things like, we want to support Warhammer 3 for years, Don't believe them. They don't want to support Warhammer 3 for years. They want Warhammer 3 to support them for years. And so they put in the bare minimum effort. That chariot seems broken. Oh, no, it works. <laughs> it works a bit. It's very good. Yeah. So you can see here the Golden Knight kind of struggling against a level 1 Lord. <laughs> Oh, she's winning. She's winning. She's not doing amazingly well. Considering she's bonus versus infantry as well. 
the legend is it was. For the people. Okay, is Ulrika? No, she's on foot. I'll oh, bring her in. We might as well shoot. The people's ruler. The cross are mine. Marina Catherine. Oh, do you know what would also be really good for Catherine? Yes. Mirror of the Ice Queen. Give her a Mortis Engine effect. That'd be great. Come on, you can do it. There we go, you did it. Good job. Go over here and have a break. Seitang way better than it? Yeah, I've heard that Seitang is pretty good. At Legend of War, have you played with Zangu war drums at all? If so, are they trash or good? Um, I've played with them a little bit. I didn't think that they were fantastic. They seem pretty mid to me, but I don't know, maybe I was missing something. So I've done a lot of damage, but I haven't really killed that much of this army. That's what I really need to be doing. It's good that the grudge throwers have dropped their artillery. Yeah. <laughs> no artillery for them is good for me. I think the single entities are the bigger problem, so let's keep focusing on them. Careful with the flamethrowers. Yeah, good good thinking. Let's try to get rid of them. We should be able to kill them pretty quickly. Since they have low health. Yeah, yeah, we can kill them quick. How many do they have? Ulrika's getting a couple of kills. So advancing. Ooh, uh, let's go over more over this way. Buy ourselves a little bit more time. It is my path. They die. The frost are mine. Retribution. Is the sled as good as it looks, or just mid? Um, I would say it's like the best mount in the game, bar none. <laughs> it is so good. It is invincible against infantry. This thing is going to get nerfed. This is so overpowered. Pretty mid, only 500 kills. Pretty shit. With no damage. What's her mass? 2200, so it doesn't even seem like it's that high. Them. All right, 
right, here we go. Alright, well that should have really thinned them out. The Iron Drakes are still on the way. Hundred thousand damage done on Katarin so far. Yes. They die. Put that down there, they have to walk right through it. Good, that's still going to do decent damage. Oof. Oh yeah, there's only a couple of them left. They're going down. Slate is banned in every multiplayer Discord I know of. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, that would make sense. Yeah, I spoke to Human Boy Yes Yes today, and he said that Kislev is absolutely dominating multiplayer at the moment. Good stuff. Alright, need to get them together, get them healed. Now, it's not quite over because this wasn't a siege battle. But I think those results are pretty good. We lost like one troop. One. <laughs> one casualty. Yeah, definitely not good at running down um, single entities. Best just use this. Um, Akadrin subscribed with Prime. Thanks, do appreciate that. We're at 855 subscribers now, which is absolutely insane. Really appreciate all the support that's come through on Twitch, guys. Very generous of you. Can you shoot Katarin? How would you deal with her when she is the AI? Uh, I think if, if she was on the sled, I would try to auto-resolve it. Which, interesting enough, we're going to have to deal with Katarin when we play our Empire campaign. Because uh, she's going to be on her sled. That's going to have to be dealt with. Are you going to update the Zinch and Cathay tier list? I'll probably do Cathay next month. With the Manscaped uh, promo. Um, as for Zinch, no. No, I'm not doing Zinch again. I, I did Zinch when Shadows of Change first came out, and it didn't do very well, and I'm just like, fuck Zinch. It's not a very popular race. The Cathay one did well last night, by the way. Pretty happy with that. Sorry, did I say Cathay? I meant Kislev. 
Just use horses and uh, like yeah, you're absolutely right. Yeah, just use um. Actually, our if we use uh, the uh, warrior priest doom stacks, you shouldn't have any problems. Purple fiction subscribe with Prime and Gongo Bonch subscribe with Prime. Thanks, dudes. Appreciate it. It's gonna be easy. Just bring stack of all wagons and the black line to deal with her. Fight sleds and sleds. Yeah, you're probably right. Just don't bring infantry. Have you or are you going to do a Doomstack tier list? I'm definitely not going to do a Doomstack tier list. Definitely not. Get a little bit of replenishment, a little bit of gold. Yeah, I'll go with replenishment. They will serve the mother. So I took no casualties on that. We should be able to auto resolve this now. And that'll just be the end of Zafbar. A very profitable war. That's exactly the kind of war you want, where you just roll in, you smash the shit out of them, and it's over in two turns. That's exactly what you want. And you get some really good resources out of it. My frozen kingdom expands. Generic hero tier list. I've done that before. I don't know if I'll do another one. Like, a lot of the tier list stuff, have just, they've already been done before. And it's a lot of work. And I don't know. I'm kind of look, trying to find a, um, a format for, like, edited videos to replace tier lists. Because it's getting a bit stale. Alright, that was awesome. Really good stuff there. I don't think we need any of that. Yeah, that's fine. Drujina. Sigmarite Arch Lector. Oh, you know, this guy helped. Alright, so the next stop for them is Karakirin. Because they've got iron, and I like iron, and fuck these guys. <laughs> Alright, so what I want to do is send Valmir Essing and Katarin over to here. Not this one. This one should t hit, um this settlement. Yeah, they like us. They're not super happy. Oh, yeah, they don't like what we did to Zafbar. But if we have a look at them here, they don't care because they never saw Zafbar, so that's good. Now, these guys usually get confederated by Clan Angren, so we need to move very quick. So let's get to it. And, well, yeah, it's freaking corruption there. Need to get over here before the uh, before they get confederated. Because, yeah, iron is so bloody good. Reduced upkeep cost. Yeah, but it's only 2%. Why not item tier list? Too situational. Well, there are hundreds of items in the game. And they are very much situational. And it's just... I just don't want to do that. <laughs> I just don't want to do it. Too much work. Not going to be worth it. I, that's... That, that, okay, so... One thing I really want to try to avoid is divisive tier lists. People where they'll just like question everything I say. I'm not interested in having like a massive argument and getting like a thousand dislikes. I just that's just one of those topics that I'm just never going to get right. It's not worth it because I don't really rely that heavily on items in this game. Some people they live for the items. All they do is fucking fuse items to try to get good items. I just I just don't do that. So, I'm the wrong person to do with that kind of tier list. Alright, let's get... One point to Lightning Strike and Renowned and Feared. Because that saves us money. Then... Best of the Court, yeah. With this, I guard Kislev. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it'll make it a bit stronger. She's a bit disappointing. I don't think she's very good. What do you guys think of um, the Golden Knight? Do you think she's good or bad? I think she's kind of kind of lame. Lore video? I don't cover lore. That's just not my forte. I can't compete with lore. 
Like, here's the thing. Um, there's an old saying, stay in your lane. That's usually what I do. Focus what, what I'm good at, what I know. Um, and don't, don't deviate too much from that. So, that's what I'm gonna do. Tier list of your tier list. I've actually done that before. Didn't perform very well. <laughs> What's the best item in the game, in your opinion? Uh, that would be the Trickster's Shard. So good. 100% miscast chance, enemy lord. You can use it from anywhere in the map. Wow! Last five seconds. Amazing item. You have to you have to completely predict when they're going to cast something in order for it to work. <laughs> CA is taking the piss with that item. I don't think I've I don't think I've ever used the Trickster Shard and actually managed to have it have any effect. Nor do I think that the Trickster Shard has ever been used on me to any effect. It is the most useless item in the game. In fact, you could delete it from the game and it would have no impact on the game whatsoever ever. It's just so shit. All right, we got another one of these. Oh, I don't get any of the money ones. Well, I guess growth in Zafbar wouldn't be too bad. Alright, I think I've made all my movements. This guy's mostly recovered. Champion of the Motherland. Laura Frusta Sastrago. Noble of the Oblast. For the glory of Kislev. Alright. Make camp. And bring me a drink. Leader of Kislev's warriors. Let our warriors rest. Are they loyal to the motherland? Oh, no Let me just um free up some cash, because that, that stuff is actually important. Drusina stand ready. Champion of the motherland. Doesn't matter that much if we're not globally recruiting. The battle against Have you been watching the Halo TV series? I've never really been interested in Halo, so no. All right, money's looking really good. Ready? Yep, we'll stay friends with them. Do they care about Zothbar? Nope. I guess they never had a chance to meet them. Noise. Five. An ad. Hear me. I will. One shard sucks, but two means new blue item. Yeah, so they're only useful for fusing, that's it. But imagine being in Warhammer 2. And not being able to sell them. I used to I used to to get rid of them from my items list. I would if I was playing the Skaven, I would put it on a character that I was gonna basically send off to die. <laughs> so I'd get rid of it. Cause it was so useless. Hey, are you at war with Astrogoth? Welcome to my throng. What if I gave you... Waldenhof. For Eschen. How does that sound? So... Eschen is actually a higher value settlement because it has a tradable resources, uh, resource, where Waldenhof doesn't. They're willing to join war. But that also means they're going to get this territory, which isn't green territory, but it still has resources. And I could get a lot of money out of them for it. I could probably get them to join other wars as well. Yeah. I wonder if I could get Grom Peak. No. Honestly, I feel like that's a really good trade. Let me just make sure I'm not building anything in Waldenhof at the moment. Yeah, I am. So a tier 2 settlement versus a tier 2 settlement. Okay. Okay, what does it matter? It's... Yes. Welcome to my throng. That's a good trade. I'll take it. Okay, uh, and yeah, and do, do, hang on. Do this as well. Oath bound. Cool, 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 cool. Because, yeah, wine will provide a small global bonus to markets and give us wine to sell. 
which we don't have, which is nice. Why didn't you pick up the 20% physical resistance in the Golden Knight skill? Because uh, I usually don't keep Why them close I together. Yeah, I, I, look, it's not that I haven't done it or not going to get it. I just haven't got it yet. I don't keep them close together. So it's got a 35 meter radius. It's just not that big of a deal. You know, unless you're going to keep them close by, it which... My duty. Did you, do you think that when I come out of the battle with full health, with uh, Katarin, that I really needed extra physical resistance? That's that's the big question here. It, it low impact isn't going to make any difference. Oh, this guy was leveled up badly. A symbol of my unparalleled authority. Alright, that's me done for the turn. Oh, hang on, I got more money. Uh, which means we can actually spend more on construction. Let's have a look. Yeah, good. Good. Good, definitely want more gold. And there we go, spent it all. Moving on. Oh, hang on, there's a commandment, which we should do here. Uh, what did I consolidate? Zuff bar, maybe? Yeah. Alright, moving on. But you can increase 35 to more with Golden Knight. It gives 80% range. What? You can increase 35 to more with Golden Knight skill. It gives 80% range. I'm not sure what you mean, sorry. Karakun has three settlements. They occupied Forest of Gloom. Yeah, I know. I know. I'll basically just go in, grab those two settlements, and then peace out. Or I'll just go over there and kill them. Whichever. Oh, but then they'll jump over the underway, won't they? Maybe I should leave them alone. Or maybe I should get the Golden Order to declare war on them. Because I should be allied with them now. And that will get them to finish it, because their turn will go first. Hmm. Yeah, we'll see. I think they mean the Soothsaying skill, but that just works in the Commander or not the Physical Resistor. Yeah, a lot of, that's a, that is a not particularly common misconception that the, the 35 meter aura cannot be changed. So when you're looking at something that says increase the aura, that is only for leadership, not for the other skills. That's why it's not very, oh yeah, I forgot to recruit that other stuff as well. So I imagine he's going for Joyshank. So these ones will have to swing back around this way. First time following you on Twitch. Used to watch you over on YouTube. Hope you're having an amazing day. At least you all. Thanks, dude. I'm doing alright. Alright. Can you make it over to here? Come, we march! Leader of Kislev's oh, warrior. Crap, I'm not Defender gonna make it there. of Kislev. Yeah, he's just outside of the range there. Do not frustrate. If I send this one in Don't by itself, well that's not gonna work. Unless, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. I might, I might just be able to make this work. Oh, god damn. I might just be able to make this work. Follow me into the wild. In Kislev, snow is a welcome ally. Drusina, stand ready. Let us advance, if it honors Ursu. Ruzina, ready! Do not touch the damned prince. 
Okay, they're both reinforcing Joy Shank. So unless he's got lightning strike, no. Not he's not taking that settlement. He might go and hit Erengrad though. Which would be good for us. It would be good to take it off him. Okay, here's will be an interesting test for this one. Assuming... Yes, I can make it to Shtrakan. Oh, well, this guy's going to hit Lair of the Troll King. Oh, who cares? We've already lost a battle in this campaign. It doesn't matter. Okay, um, let's hit... Is he ready for peace here? No. Yeah, I saw the Chorf army near um, Lair of the Troll King just then. But I think this is more important. This is like core territory. This is not important. We'll deal with that later. So what we want to do here... I'm pretty sure this will be a defeat in terms of order resolve at least. Close defeat. Okay, so what we're dealing with here is a lot of troops. We have to make sure that our missile attacks, because we don't have a lot of ammunition. We have to take out the Great Taurus. We have to kill Astrogoth Iron Hand. That shouldn't be too difficult. Do not shoot Orc Laborers, because they are easy to go into melee with. Um, shoot the Chaos Wolf Blunderbusses, but not essential. And we have to shoot the Bull Centaur Renders. If we can manage that, we should be fine. Okay, so r speed on these ones, not good. I can withdraw them from the battlefield, though, if I absolutely have to. So let's do this. Sell it to Castelton. I'm not sure if I'll be able to, but that's a good idea. Um, MNT Parrot, subscribe with Prime. Thanks, dude. Appreciate the support. Having issues stealing Norskin here as Skin Wolf Wake in level 22. He doesn't show up in my roster after getting them killed in battle. Hmm. What faction are you playing as? But need a bit more information. Are you using mods? I am. Yeah, I just don't know what causes that. Alright. This map here is not horrendous, but it's also not amazing for us. First thing we need to do is really kill off those fast units. Alright, don't fire at will. Okay, he's wanting to waste his magic doing that. I'm pretty sure he's low on it. Because it looks like this area had pretty low winds of magic. So, if I win this battle here with like zero casualties, that'll really prove just how much of an S tier army this really is. But we'll see. This The terrain is a little bit rough. Okay, here we go. Like I said, they're not great in really rough terrain, and it's not small map, it's not big either. Okay, I think I'm going to have to get these ones off the battlefield, because they're just vulnerable. But Legend, you'll get army lost! Nah, I'll be fine. Anyway, withdrawing them, from the, withdrawing them from the battlefield will only lose us morale for a short time, so it'll be fine. Alright, taking out this great Taurus nice and early without it having done any damage to us is good. Okay, if it shattered, let it go. Watch as they shoot again. Told them not to shoot, and... Oh, they didn't. Okay, good for them. Alright, we gotta take out the Bull Centaur Renders. Do they have ward save? Yeah. But they are slower than us. Use them as bait. They're too slow, they're on foot. This is a fresh army. Fresh recruited. Alright, I can see the other Bull Centaur Renders. Once the two Bull Centaur Render units are gone, the only unit I need to get rid of with our bullets which we should have enough ammunition for, is Astrogoth.
But overall, I think our army is really well suited for this enemy. It's just a matter of, um, do we have enough ammunition? Which I think we do. Daniel's paint mechanic should be added to bears. Paint your bears. Oh, okay, if you say so. Alright, we are... I was going to maybe split up, but no, I don't think I need to do that. Alright, so we're not going to fire at will into a bunch of orc laborers because we've got limited amount of ammunition and those guys will be able to charge into very easily. But shooting Chaos Dwarf Warriors with great weapons, that's fine, but I have to specifically target them. Hang on, this one over here is coming back. Shoot it. Quick. Okay, they're shattered. Chaos to blunderbusters, yet yeah, we should shoot them. We've done pretty well. Now, nice, scratch that. This is going fantastically well. Realistically, how can heavy sleds be improved without increasing their speed? Uh, increase the range or damage of their missile attack. Or increase the amount of ammunition that they've got. Like, not by like one or two shots. I mean like 50% more or something like that. Otherwise, there's just no advantage to having them. You know, extra armor on these guys. It just doesn't matter. Alright, we need to start shooting at Astrogoth, but he is... Uh, it's not that difficult to get at. Right on the edge of our range, though. Oh, shit. Shit, 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 didn't see them there. Luckily, these are the anti infantry variant. Come on, move, 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 move. Okay, how far? Yeah, we can run a fair bit back. Get back. Alright, start firing at will now. Yeah, gotta get rid of that. That's their other one. They've only got two of them, so, well, one now. Get rid of this unit. I like how it's still playing Chaos Dwarf music, despite all the damage we've done to them. They don't realize how screwed they are. The Chaos Dwarfs, that is. Should start playing Kiss Levite music pretty soon. Actually, maybe not. Because they're still pretty badly outnumbered. Like I said, next thing we gotta do, take out Astrogoth or any sort of like Chaos Dwarf Blunderbuss unit. High tier stuff's gotta go. But don't shoot at Orc Laborers. Friggin' waste of ammunition. Their lives are worth less than our bullets. Okay, 
Good, yeah, Astrogoth's going down real fast. Despite all of his resistances, this is just doing heaps. And that attack doesn't do anything. Watch out, watch out, watch out, watch out, watch out, watch out. Super chat coming in to distract me, I see. <laughs> so good. Um, hello, sorry, uh, Rua Dear McKenzie. Did a five pound super chat. Hello from Scotland, thanks again for the hours of entertainment. No worries, dude, it's been my pleasure. Thank you for the super chat. No, don't worry, Will. Unless you're shooting an Astrogoth, I don't want you shooting. Is he anti large? Yeah, he is, okay. But we should be able to escape him. He is wasting a lot of magic. If he only had like 30 wins of magic, which he must have had more than that, because he would have used it all up by now. See, this is another thing that makes this army good. The AI underestimates it, which means they don't bitch out, because Astrogoth didn't run away from this army. Well, actually, no, he kind of did, didn't he? Because we were in Force March, and he ran off. Still, I told you to shoot at. Come on, Astrogoth, I need you to die so that I can charge into the Orc Laborers, cause a rout, which will just cause everything to fall apart. There we go, there's the music. Just needed to say, hey, you got this. Alright, we're still pretty good for ammo. How many of these attacks does he have? Shit, that actually did a fair bit of damage. Oh, maybe the, uh... One of these infantry also has it. Because they're technically two generals here. Come on, a couple more shots. A little bit more. Come on, a couple more bullets. There we go. Oh shit. Fucking blunderbusses. None of them destroyed. Just be careful, because I'm sure some of them are pretty close to destroyed there. Okay. Alright, we can just fire at Will or whatever now, because once we've used up our ammo, we'll just charge on in and absolutely destroy them, because it's all infantry, except for, like, one cavalry unit, which doesn't count for anything. Uh, Throbo, subscribe to Prime. Thanks, dude. Appreciate that. Um, how much did you enjoy WWE Elimination Chamber in Perth, as we know you're a huge WWE fan? I don't know. Imagine I'm in the middle of a battle, and I glance over at chat, and that's the fucking thing that I read. <laughs> You've just... Uh, how does it feel to have deprived somebody of a legitimate question when you've just asked a dog shit one. How does that feel? That feel good? <laughs> I get a limited amount of time to look over my shoulder in these battles and I fucking read that. Yeah. 
Move these guys back so they don't get in the way. Not you. I just noticed that slows have a shit ton of ammo. And you know what the funny thing is? Is that we haven't even started giving them ammo boost. This is their base amount of ammo. So you can, I believe, give them 70% extra ammo throughout all the Lord skills and tech tree. So what's, I don't know, what's, 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 um, 120 plus 70% of that? Fuck, let's see if I can do that in my head. Probably not. <laughs> well, hang on, let me see. It's 12. Hang on, 10% of it is 12. I'll just do that seven times, which is 80. Start playing their music, probably because our ammunition's kind of balance of power. So that means that we can get uh, 210 ammo. 204, 84, 84. Eight, 204 ammo. Yeah, I, I trust you guys. All right, let's just go in now. Except for you. Because we're charging downhill here. And it's like, wow, that charge was great. Here, have some more Kislev music. So yeah, 204 shots is what you can get with these guys. Which is which is a lot. Plus you can also get extra armor piercing damage. Missile damage. Plus extra armor. Plus reduced upkeep cost all over the place. Friggin' amazing unit. Really, really good. Zero upkeep cost. Absolute killing machine. There are a few units in the game that destroy them pretty easily, though. So do you guys see how these are an S tier unit? I don't think anyone was really questioning it. Yeah, not a single casualty. <laughs> Close victory, guys. Close victory. Heavy ones would have done well in this particular battle. Well, actually... Heavy ones would have had no difference, except when we got caught by their, um, by these guys, it would have been harder to get away. So it actually would have taken more damage. They have no additional damage output. They got higher melee attack. They just got a little bit more armor. And they cost more. Heavy sleds are not worth it. No, I may have left if it was close victory. Yeah, I know. The enemy army was garbage, though. Right, fair enough. I've beaten elite armies with this as well. Ooh. 
Ooh, nice item. And we'll occupy that. Best unit in the game? Uh, I don't know. There is a no best unit in the game. Spell resistance, yeah. That's, that's alright. So she gained a few levels up from that, which will put all f three of them into skilled craftsmen. So that'll give 20% extra ammo. So that gives them 22 extra shots. That's pretty good. Sorry, 24 extra shots. Can't count. Then we should... We still don't have the war horse. Um, maybe go war... Rip Marcher? Yep. None of these techs really matter. That skills I mean. They're just along for the be cheap. That's about it. Would you consider making a heavy sled stack just to compare? What for? They're functionally the same unit with different stats. That they're lower in the bits that count. What? what? What's in the point in doing that? Snow is a welcome ally. Onward. To what is my favorite unit? Rattling guns. Alright, let's see here. For the wisdom but I wouldn't say they were the best unit in the game. Praise be to Sigma! I know, I always find questions like, what's the best lord in the game, what's the best unit in the game, that kind of stuff. I don't think that they're good questions, and so I don't like answering questions that are bad, because bad questions lead to bad answers. That's that's why I've got a problem with them. This is why oftentimes you'll see people ask a question, and I'm like, going, ah, ah, like doing all this kind of shit, because I can't, it's, that's not a, it's not a good question. <laughs> yeah. And I get that that can be frustrating because, you know, you, you probably don't think it isn't a bad question. And I, I, I don't get mad at anyone for asking these kind of questions, but... You gotta, you gotta keep in mind that it's a strategy game where everything changes based on the situation. And so, asking something like, what's the best unit? There is no best unit in the game. Or like, what's the best lord in the game? In what situation? You know? Oh, yeah, Tyrion's the best unit in the game. Um, but there's loads of situations that he can't handle, so it just depends. Drugina. There is no best, there is no worst. No, actually, that's not true. There is a worst unit in the game, and it's called a Grail Relic. Totally useless. People just can't accept that heavy is not better. Light on a unit is all that matters about mobility. Well, this is part of the problem. Some people go, look, stat, stat boost goes up, therefore must mean better. But they're not thinking tactically. They're not thinking utility. They're looking at stats. They're looking at numbers going up. The thing is, you're not playing Pokemon. You're not, you're not going into battle and taking turns at fighting each other. What you're doing is you're going into a battle and you're looking at what the enemy is thinking and then you are fucking them. That's what you are doing, okay? And your stats, just they're just like how things kind of move around on the battlefield. That's all that really matters. And how you use the stats means everything, not the stats themselves. You go into a battle, and your, your objective is to just, you know, just fuck their plan. Destroy their plan. And so being like, but Legend, this unit has extra 5 armor, and that one has extra 10 melee attack. It doesn't fucking mean anything. One left. Uh, uh. for war. I guess what I could do is send Kataran around over here first. Because, yeah, otherwise this will jump over the underway. I guess this one here has got artillery. I could go and attack it with both of these. I just don't want to do a siege. Land for the taking. Going forth. 
Honestly, there's some units in this game that have absolutely awful stats, but they're really good because they've got good utility. Like, like Light Sleds, for example. Their, stead, their stats don't look particularly impressive at all. How would you buff the Heavy War Sleds? I wouldn't. I wouldn't. They're useless. There's no need for two units to do the exact same thing. What's the point? They are, they are functionally the exact same unit. What is the point of having another unit that does the exact same thing that's higher tier? Why? I wouldn't buff them. I'd remove them from the game. They're superfluous. They're like a third nipple. You don't need it. But legend, some animals need a third nipple. <laughs> they're like third. They're like a third nipple on a human male. You know, a superfluous thing that they didn't need in the first place. There doesn't need to be five different types of of sleds. If you want to have a different sled type of sled unit, it has to have different utility. Like maybe, like what they do well with Outriders, right? So you've got Pistoliers, Outriders, and then Outriders with grenade launchers, and all of them function differently, okay? It's not like they're the same unit with different stats. So Pistoliers, you don't have armor piercing, and you've got 360 degree range, right? But they're, sorry, you don't have armor piercing, and they're so they're particularly good at harassing fast units that don't have much armor. And then you've got regular Outriders. Outriders can't shoot in a 360 degree range, but they've got armor piercing and longer range. So they're good at harassing armored units that are not particularly quick. Because if they're getting chased, then they can't shoot. And then you've got grenade launchers, right? Which, shorter range, way higher armor, de dealing, uh, armor piercing damage. Not particularly good against single entities. Great at smashing infantry. So you've got three different units that have three different specialities. So with sleds, you've got two units that do the exact same fucking thing. There's no need for them. Right, if we have a look at it. Right. Functionally, there is no difference between a heavy war sled and a light war sled. It's just stat manipulation, which doesn't matter. It has no impact. You know, if if the heavy sleds were instead, let's just say that they um, they had lower speed, their range was a hundred, but they had fucking bazookas, right? Okay, all right, all right. That's a reason to get them. If they were like using troll hammer torpedoes, okay, that is that is what I would do. You know, maybe instead of one hundred and twenty shots, they've got thirty shots, but they're using troll hammer torpedoes. That provides a different functionality. The thing is, Light War Sled and Heavy War Sled are good against the exact same units. It's just that Heavy War Sleds are not quite as good at it. And they cost more. So there's no reason for them. They're a tac tactically useless unit. It's like when you've got all these different types of melee infantry. All the melee infantry in the game function basically the same. You, like, you don't need four different variants of anti-infantry, lightly armoured, tier 1 units. Well, what for? You just don't need it. Righty, subscribe with Prime. Thanks, dude. Appreciate that. It, it all just depends on the mentality that you have with the game. You know, so, uh, some people just look at this in terms of stats, and all they do is stat modify, and that, that can work, but I just don't think that's a good way of playing the game. It's definitely not what I do. A lot of the time. I mean, sometimes I do stat, stat stack. Um, it just depends. Sometimes I'll stack stat on things like hero stacks. Um, but then a unit like the uh, the sleds, I'm not interested in stat stacking so much. I'm interested in utility. Just depends on what you want to do. What do you think of Seitang? Did you try him? I haven't played as Seitang yet. Um, might have to do a Cathay campaign soon. Drusina stand ready. We'll see. This gift is mine. Just put a little gram on top of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. Put like um with the heavy war sleds. They've got little groms. Yeah, that'd be good. <laughs> that I tell you what, if if there was a mobile little grom unit, I'd be getting those. They probably wouldn't have much ammo. They'd have like ten shots. All right. Well, we'll see how we go with that. I'm going to put this guy here on Follow Ambush Stance. 
because I got a suspicion that they'll have a look at this and be like, oh, I can't win that, and instead attack Erengrad, occupy that, but then I'll be able to attack it. They don't have walls there if it's occupied by Warriors of Chaos. Actually, stand in front of the um, Yeah. El Matsai, subscribe, sorry, uh, became a member. Appreciate that, dude. Uh, sorry, uh, you say that about heavy war slayers, but I remember you stacking greatsword shades back in Warhammer 2. Okay, yes, I did that, but that was largely because of peer pressure. People would be like, uh, why don't you get the greatsword variant? So I got sick of people asking me that. So I just, like, that was a case of me just um, submitting to peer pressure. Ultimately, there's no real difference between a, a what's it called, a um, regular shade, a dual weapon, and great swords. I mean, there is a little bit of a difference, but most of the time you're just going to use them to um, shoot, as opposed to get into melee. So it doesn't functionally matter which one you get, not really. But that was, that was the case. Look, sometimes you guys will beat me into submission. You know, you'll ask me a question so many times that I'll just be like, fine, I'll just do it. Just because if it makes you happy, then that's fine. It's little effort on my part, and it's a marginal increase in upkeep cost. And they're recruited from the same building, and they do have slightly higher stats. And it's functionally, it's, you know, the same unit. Frost Maiden. So probably going to lose the Troll King there. Okay, well, I didn't need to do that in the in hindsight. I didn't know that Castalton was going to win there. That's fine. Oh, they didn't end up taking it. Well, good. Good. They definitely could have if they were in range. You ever did a video on how your perfect Total War game would look like? Uh, no, I haven't. Um, I feel like that would be a divisive video. There's no such thing as a perfect Total War game. GW Shades take two turns to recruit. Uh, in in Warhammer 2 they did. I don't think they do in Warhammer 3 anymore. I tell you what, we may have gotten unlucky at the start, but we're pretty lucky with what's going on with oh. Allies of Kislev. Oh man, if only our baseline evaluation was at 150, he'd confederate right now. Urson loves all allies Shit, man, of Kislev. Yeah, we're, we're so close to getting Boris. But we just don't have that relation with him just yet. I think Clan Ferric is still around. Roll out. Set camp at once. Emissary of the Ice Corps. Yeah, this army is not going to be good at dealing with Cracker Drac, so we've got to swing back around over here. I might be able to attack it this turn. On your feet, Kislevites. There we go. Now, that'll probably borrow movement from next turn. We'll probably end up taking a little bit of damage to order resolve this. Yeah, now. but they should recover pretty quick. An extension of the ice court. Is he about to croak? Yeah, he's about to... He's about to die. It looks like it. Yes, indeed. Yeah, he's losing ground big time. What news, comrade? Mm. I could threaten him and confederate straight away. 
Sun loves all allies of Kislev. Hmm. Archeon's there. Yeah. Yeah. That's okay. Archeon's actually really easy to... Oh, look, it's one of the new heroes. Exalted Hero of Zinch. Um... This army here would destroy him. He usually does. In my experience. Alright, we don't need him anymore. See you later. Thank you for your assist. Money's going pretty well now. Your word is my command. Alright, so I said I've said that this one here. We'll go and attack Forest of Gloom. And we'll strike them over here with these two. Because, yeah, I'm, I've only got a couple of turns left with this before I have to give it back. I serve Sigma, mm. Guardian of the Land. I can't honestly say that I'm looking forward to that battle. Winter so she's just turned. scouting ahead. Cool. Champion of Kislev. Rock Rocks. Okay, that's... Okay, uh, build that one, because that's really useful, but... Hang on. Don't want to waste a lot of money on super expensive buildings when there's cheaper buildings that'll provide a quicker return on investment. So let me just go back and cancel that, just because... You can build... Oh, where was it? Crap, where did I build it? Yeah, there. That can wait until next turn. It's not urgent. See so if we can get a whole bunch more buildings in replacement of that one. Okay, that's fine. Alright, all good. Good, we should be in position to strike in about two turns. For the wisdom, I might be able to sell... Oh, I might be able to sell Forest of Gloom for Akendorf if I hurry. Because there's no military building here and there's a military building here. It, also, it all depends on whether or not that gets kept when we occupy it. Because Akendorf would be way more useful than that piece of crap. What do you think CA can do to fix Zinch? Well, I don't agree with the premise that Zinch is broken. I think that Zinch is boring. Um, so, I think the question needs to be, what what should um, CA do to make Zinch more interesting? And the answer to that is, I don't know. Because I honestly thought Zinch was going to be heaps of fun for me. But I just didn't enjoy Zinch at all. I find their units to be boring to use. Okay. Actually, I do, I do have some answers for it. I think part of the problem with Zinch is that it is not interesting characters you know you've got kairos fate weaver interesting skill tree you've got the changeling interesting kill skill tree but their generic characters in terms of generic lords and generic heroes are uber boring they're really boring characters with basic skill lines so i think they need to get some more skills in there um because i just think that they're really really dull because I just don't have any interest in my Zinch armies outside of, like, Kairos. And Kairos, Kairos is a one-man doomsday. He just does everything on his own anyway. So, I don't know. I just feel like the Zinch characters are very much one-dimensional. Let us discuss stately affairs. No.
So it looks like he's just going around sacking things. Which is only going to make him weaker. Not even the shape lift shift a lot. Like I said, the changeling. The legendary lords are interesting, but then outside of that, the generic lords are very boring. I find that they're all a bit samey. Like, you take the, the new lords, the melee lords, they turn into a demon prince. That ends up being a spellcaster. Boring. You know, and the, the skill line of the demon prince is pretty similar to the skill line of the Lord of Change. Like, I think there should be some real differences between... Meh. I think there should be some real differences between the skill line of a... Demon Prince and a uh, Lord of Change, yeah, in my opinion. So, Zinch, like I said, Zinch just doesn't doesn't tickle my dick. Champion of the Faith. Follow me into the wild. By Sigma. I live to serve the Emperor. All right, we're not in position just yet, but if we declare war right now, then there's a good chance that oh, they'll just confederate into them. Uh, Damien Bazin did a two euro super chat. Give Boris a settlement you just took. I don't think I can give him any settlements, dude. But thanks for super chat. Uh, Brother Humaya did an SAR 100 super chat. Love this campaign. Have a question for you. Should Kislev and other factions have penalties for taking settlements out of their thematic areas while main campaign goal is not completed? The opposite should apply also. Uh, no, that doesn't sound like anything I'd, I'd consider to be essential. No um, cool if that's what you want, but I, I can't honestly say I'd advocate for that. Thanks for the chat though, I appreciate it. My decision is law. Right, how strong is Clan Ferric? Basically nothing. Ursun loves all allies of Kislev. If he lost his army, he would definitely confederate right now. Oh, look at that. To send an army to defend one of Boris' settlements? No, no, he'll confed. I can always threaten him. Ice Queen of Kisley. Hmm. Okay, do we strike at this now? Yeah, I mean, where are they going to attack? I'll see what they're doing anyway. Talk at me in your crude language if you must. All right, before Come we declare war on you, here. could you break your, your trees with... So I be done with them. No, that won't do it. Step forth, true friend of the Angrund clan. This still won't work. No. Okay. Talk at me and you. The more you are me, the only for butchery. Alright, done deal there. Cool, they don't even have to fight that manually. Nice. Because, yeah, I didn't want to dilly dally because hopefully we got the military building here. Yes! Okay. Now, I should be able to swap Akendorf. Friendship is more valuable than gold, or so they tell me. Uh, what's it called? The. It's called the. What's it called? The Forest of Gloom for Akendorf and. Oh. Oh. Why you know want Forest of Gloom? They do want it. What if I swapped it for Abraham? How's that sound? Nope. What about Grenstad? Oh. Krugenheim. Well, I do have some of this province. That that's not a bad deal. 
Need ring. Honestly, we'll probably get more replenishment when it's in their hands. So let's do this now before um, they change their mind about it. I trust our so, Forest of Gloom for... Was it Krugen home? And we get a little bit of cash out Very of it. Well. Cool, done deal. I'm happy with that. Yeah, okay, well, that's why they asked for it, because it's friggin' damaged. Friends of the Empire. Pretty sure the change thing is still hanging around. Yeah, we're getting more replenishment that way. Because it's allied territory. Doesn't take doesn't take the climate into consideration when it's in allied territory. Alright, so we'll swing Katarin around over to Midgal Vorongbrak, and we'll try to bring these guys no, out and, um, my clan. don't have much time if I want to get them. Sister then this us. one here, I know they've still got one more army out this way. Are they still at war with them? He got out of war with, um, Azazel. The settlement here doesn't really matter. We should be making our way towards Uzkalak, his capital. That's the one that does matter. Uh, also, there's an army that'll probably be on its way down to Karak Vlag, so I should put in some defenses here. We've got plenty of money, so no need to cheap out. Drusina. Loyalty, bravery, and cold steel. Good stuff. I accept this tribute. Has he got the thing on him? Yep, veteran warrior. Awesome. Cool. Make sure he's ready for escaping when they show up. All right, then these ones over here, just mosey on in. Lead, you follow. Okay, more forces out here than I thought. Which of the ice? Why don't we, um... Winter will claim you. I could go there via the sea. And that'll allow me to Mistress swing around and grab this. That's okay, not great. It's just okay. Take the water. Oh, no, that's not good. That's bad. That's a lot of attrition. Full speed, I say. Uh, I'll have to land over here next turn. I await the fort first. Attrition's not good for this army. Respect my position. That's okay. Rosina, ready. Are they loyal to the motherland? Commander of the soldiery. Do you think boyars are now obsolete lords? Even Lord Magistrates have buffed to the army? Yes. Boyars are completely outdated. There's no reason to get them. Uh, Spiri, subscribe with Prime. Thanks, dude. Appreciate that. Uh, playing as Festus with Skaven Artillery has been really fun. What are your some of your favorite army comp mashups? I usually don't mash up my armies. Yeah, I, I don't use the allied recruitment much at all. I, I think it's good that it exists, but I don't use it. Okay, we don't need that there anymore. Move on. Any diplomacy we can do? I am now. Oh, oh, kiss you. Yes. I. And get out of the war with Karak here now. They're actually pretty desperate for it. If we just go back and have a look, how much will they give me? Give me quite a bit of money, but I want that iron. Can you sabotage building in a settlement to try to get the settlement for cheaper off another faction? I'm not sure if that works. 
Uh, Jube80 subscribed with Prime. Thanks, dude. Appreciate that. If Archeon comes over here and blows this up, he'll likely want to confederate straight away. The problem with uh, this army here and taking attrition is that you take one turn of a tiny little bit of attrition and you drop down from four entities to three. Charlie, subscribe Prime. Thanks, dude. Appreciate that. Appreciate the support. Have you confederated the rival Kislev faction already? No. I think we're not too far away from getting to that point. But no, I haven't done that yet. Could you bring the defeat counter back? What's the point? It's not a no defeat count um, campaign. Can you only beat changelings with heroes and spending a bunch of gold exterminating cults? It seems like that's the way, yeah. Wanna invade Norska territory? Well, there's other areas that we're fighting. Like, we'll do that eventually. Yeah! <laughs> we just confederated Boris. Boris. How about that? Get him the fuck out of there. Is this any good? It's not terrible. Only the truest Get the fuck out of there, Boris. Get out of there. Okay. Now, you're probably looking at this being like, but Ledger, you're going to lose this territory. Okay, so here's what we do. I will put out your eyes. I will rip out your tongue. Okay. I will drink your soul. Yep. Okay, now Archeon. Where are you? Simpering fools. You dare come before me? Now, if I asked you to... Lord of the end times? Okay. Just hang on, hang on, hang on. I'm going to do some shenanigans here. Shenanigans. Okay, first thing, I want you to cancel your trade agreements. Dominance. Okay, cool. Have you got non agreement? Yep. Okay, I want you to cancel that, that, and that. Yep. All right, what? done deal. If you go to war with Clan Ferric. Okay. If you go to war with the Wintertooth. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. What about Disciples of Hushut? Okay. Okay. Curious, just curious. All right. Dwarves confederated. Oh yeah, because they were massively under threat. Oh well. Oh well. Yeah, I told you that might happen. So what I probably should have done then was waited another turn, or waited two turns before, because they, they probably wouldn't have confederated if I wasn't attacking them. Thing is, I could just cancel my treaty with, well, actually, that would take 18 turns before I can do that. But hey, at least I got out of that, um, Krugenheim. And we're not under any threat over here, so anything that we gained is bonus. But yeah, for the most part, we didn't get what we really wanted, which was Karakirin, because I jumped the gun on that a little bit. Okay, hang on, hang on, hang on. Okay, we've also got other heroes out here. We've got this one, Weapon Master. I can always just recruit a better one. Just bye-bye. Anyway, what are you? Intelligent? Now nah, you're fired. Get out of there. And what are you? Strategist, you are fired. Okay, here's what we do. Here's what we do. We declare war, which is the stronger of the two. You're not very strong. Let me check Warriors of Chaos. Actually, Warriors of Chaos is pretty weak. But typically speaking, getting the Warriors of Chaos to join war against someone else than the other way around is usually a lot easier. Alright, so we go to Demons of Chaos, Legion of Chaos, and go, hey, declare war. 
who oppose me. Declare war. Bitch! Alright, whatever. It happens. Then you go to Archeon. And then you go, hey Archeon, I'll give you. Oh, piss. Okay, hang on, hang on, hang on. You give him 15,000 gold, and that'll keep him really busy for a little while. Or we could cancel out... Not a... Uh, cancel out, um... These treaties. <laughs> these are all of our millets. Oh, hang on, hang on. No, they're not. Hang on. No. What's the other one? Karazza Karak. Don't ch cancel that. Okay. We can cancel our uh, military access pack because it'll just be reestablished instantly. They might be a little bit pissed at us for it, but for <laughs> and the settlement is of no value to him. And then, and then, and then, and then we go. Hey, do you want this other settlement? Trade agreement with Archeon. <laughs> and and I want him to go to war with Wintertooth. No, he won't do that under any circumstance. Oh, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. No, he won't do that. But I can get a whole bunch of money out of him for it. What about Clan Ferric? No, he won't go to war with them. I guess he, he feels like he's got his hands full at the moment. Bloop. You dare. The legend of giving a boy ground. We're not ready to go invade that way. The bluest of blood. That's a pretty strong army. And we're a bit damaged. I probably could beat it, but I also can't be bothered right now. I'm pretty damn tired. I'm ready to take a break. So... Anyway, so... I'm going to call that a day. Because I need to take a break. This campaign is in pretty good shape now. Obviously, it wasn't a no-defeat campaign. Oh, here's how we save. This probably won't be an instant win. Yeah, I wasn't expecting it would be. But, um, doesn't matter. I worry about that another time. Anyway, guys, that's the end of today's stream. I'm going to go chuck a host over to someone on YouTube and on Twitch. Just bear with me a sec here. I'm going to see who's live streaming. But yeah, appreciate all the support today, guys. Uh, the next live stream will be back to the Empire campaign, though. I think we're, we're done with this one. Alright, no one on the Discord that wants to get hosted. Just bear with me a sec here. But yeah, it's definitely a fun campaign. But it's just going to be a steamroll from here. All the difficulty is now gone. It's just it's not a case of... Um, if we'll win, but when we'll win. God damn it. I hate it when this happens. Campaign. But it's just going to be a steam stop stop, 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 stop. <sighs> Warhammer 3 isn't popping up in the friggin' thing anymore. I'm just trying to find somebody who's actually live streaming. Okay, I think most of the mad might be alive. Yeah, okay, most of the mad is currently playing Hillebron. We'll chuck the raid over to him. He loves his Dark Elves. Alright, and I'm going to go take a break, and I will see you guys soon. I don't know when the next live stream is going to be. Maybe tomorrow, maybe the day after, we will see. But yeah, I appreciate you guys, and I'll see you later. Don't forget to go over to most of the mad and show him some love. Alright, see you next time, guys. Bye. Okay, that is the YouTube stream sorted. Okay, now for Twitch. 